Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> That's feeder and come back around. It's a new leaf, Steve. I've- I'm what? gonna do, do, do properly now. I'm not gonna be slovenly. I'm sitting up straight, you see. Yep. And it's gonna be a proper DJing, cos I think- Coming up soon, some great tracks, including a new one from Abs and an old one from Snow. <laughs> Informer! <laughs> you know me, Dan, it's me a boom a licky boom boom down. I'm joking, of course. We've got some fantastic tracks, Good some stuff, great yeah. chat, and we've got Carl That's with me, great Steve. Chat. Steve. I'm Ricky Gervais on XFM 104.9. There he is indeed, with him, Steve Merchant. And, uh, Carl Pilkinson, of course. Say hello, Carl. Alright. Yeah, nice. And, uh, you- you say you read- The beginning of a radio show is very much your wares, your shop window, laying out your stall. I don't think you could choose a better track than The Only Ones, Another Girl on the Planet. I'd love to hear it. One of my favourite intros, that. Amazing. Oh, that was dangerous, cos I once heard on Capital Radio, um, this has got to be the greatest rock intro of all time. And they played Money for Nothing by Dire Straits. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I can just imagine them putting their head down. I remember a friend of mine at, uh, when I was at school, he, he just bought a car and he took me outside to show off the stereo system, Money for Nothing. Just to, just <laughs> really? to, he just played that, I've never heard the song before. Just played that for its entire four or five minute duration. It is a to good show song the, for- uh, the sound system. Yeah, it's a good song for showing off intros <laughs> and sound <laughs> yeah, systems. exactly. Yeah. yeah. You said you were driving along earlier, you saw someone, uh- Are you- are you- uh, yeah, pla- yeah, it was a- one of those zooped up sort of, um, uh, sporty saloons. Nice. You know, the big, like a Mondale or something, one of those big- and, uh, it was blaring out. And the bloke in it was sort of like, I could tell he was twenty four, but already going bald. <laughs> Yeah. For, from, like, obviously his estate agency jobs, not to <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he's made a bit of money and he's got- and the stereo was ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, so loud and it was going through Covent Garden. He was playing Snow in Former. <laughs> oh! I just, do people remember Informer by Snow? It was a big tune in my I don't, I don't know. It's, it's great. Yeah, yeah, I, I always enjoy can it. Can I bring that in next week? Can we play no. Snow next week? Well, you can play a tiny little bit tiny of Tiny little bit of Snow. Yeah. Do you remember the Snow, Carl? Yeah, yeah, you loved it. Yeah, big tune. Yeah. Loved it. Oh, yeah. did you? Big tune from yeah. the 90s. Happy song, isn't it? You were yeah. saying that you've turned over a new leaf. Yeah. 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 Is that in all aspects of your life or is that just in your broadcasting career? Because uh, the reason I bring that up is because do you want to describe what you were eating just now when we came in? Because you're a 40 year old man. You've got a little bit of weight. So presumably you're watching what you eat. Well, no, but it was sounded exotic. I went can into I, a cafe and, and I didn't- I, they didn't have a cheese sandwich. Right. And I- Can I describe what it looked like to me? <laughs> right? It looked to me like a big slab of cheese. You've just got them to just <laughs> cut off a big block of cheese, <laughs> like the size of a CD case. <laughs> Yeah. One of those double albums, <laughs> right, of cheese, right? And just lightly <laughs> melt that for me so yeah. it drips over my hand and it yeah. gets really greasy in the bag. But yeah. just lay some strips of bacon on the top. Yeah, but listen, you've embarrassed yourself. Is that yourself. what it was? No, it's a croque monsieur, so it's French. It's a what? A croque monsieur. A croque monsieur. Yeah, and so I got- I, I thought, Ooh. I've never heard of a croque you're monsieur. You're having a- see, you've embarrassed yourself. Is that how it's pronounced? Or yeah. is it croque monsieur? Oh! Eh? <laughs> <laughs> hey? Eh? Hey? You not... didn't expect me to be bringing out the French. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> Tu aimes la musique pop? Oui, je t'aime la musique pop. <laughs> le plume de ma tante. Où est le syndicat d'initiative? That means my aunt's pen. So what was it then? A croc- it was a croc- Yeah, and it, and it was just too greasy. It yeah. was just too- and it was all wobbly. I- 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 well I like toast, I like it to be crisp. Sure. It's the thing with like- what- w- this is rubbish. Play Coldplay. Yeah. Coldplay. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah, it's not bad, yeah. yeah. Not bad. Nice, not, nice little track. Yeah. Well, Steve, um, we've been away now for what, 12, 13, 14 weeks? Is that really? Yeah. Why? Wow. I've been looking forward to coming back. It's great, it's great to be back. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, uh, yeah, we've had uh, some 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 laughs, some tears in the, in the interim. I imagine. <laughs> yeah, uh, we've had a few ups and downs. Obviously, been working on uh, the TV show, The Office, BAFTA winning, <laughs> uh, coming soon, BBC <laughs> Two. But uh, uh, Rick, 30, I just, mean, I just need to mention something quickly to you. Um, Go on. When did I last see you? I saw you yesterday, didn't I? Yeah. Because um, we went up to Edinburgh yesterday. We were we were very nicely uh, invited to go and talk at the uh, Edinburgh International Television Festival. It was quite yeah. a big deal. We went up there and we were interviewed. And uh, Ricky chose to go on the train because it takes like four hours, four and a half hours or something on the train. Yeah. But it's quite leisurely. It's quite sort yeah. of gentle thing to do. Yeah. I opted to go for the plane option yeah. and fly up there. More modern. Exactly. And uh, and they, they bankrolled that. They paid for it all. And yeah. so that was all not very nice. And, and as I recall, when I last saw you, uh, we got a cab, didn't we? And, and you asked if you could get the cab to drop you off at the train station. Yeah. And then it took me on to the airport. Yeah. Um, did I- now that was- that was before- I, the last time I saw you was before I got to the airport and missed my flight, wasn't it? Because I, because I had to drop you off That's in the centre of town. Yeah, no, that, that was- so that was just before I had to pay £165 to upgrade to another How ticket. How did you not tell me that in the last hour? £165, Ricky. 
I had to pay because we dropped you off at the train station. So, I mean, do you want to go halves on that or what do you want to, how do you want to deal with that? How do you want to sort that whole, that whole mess out? Why were you late? Why, why was I late? Because yeah. we dropped you off in the centre of Edinburgh and yeah, do you know how hard it is to get out of Edinburgh in rush hour traffic? But it was only, it was only three minutes away, so you'd no, have missed it anyway. No, because if we'd gone the other direction, it would have been twenty minutes. It took me like an hour to get to the tr to the airport. And I got there and the plane had already left <laughs> and the cabbie was just laughing. He was saying, we're never gonna make it. He goes, you were a religious man, you better start praying. I thought he was being facetious. He was absolutely right. A hundred and sixty-five pounds. But hold on, why didn't he tell you that when he, when, when he picks up a well, quarter past four? It makes you wonder. So obviously, li I'm a little bit annoyed. Cause you know I'm not a man who likes to sort of spend unnecessarily. But wait, but wait, this is not my fault. Cause you were there when we made that decision. I didn't impose this on you. We both decided that might be- it's both our fault. I mean it's no- no one's fault. It's both our fault. Is that fair? That's all I wanted to hear. It's both our fault. Therefore it's both our financial obligation. No! 165 pounds? Just split that in half. <laughs> write a check, Rick. Write a check. It's fine. <laughs> I'll, I'll accept, I trust you. <laughs> you know. Um, phone in. Uh, I think everyone. This. This You're is. You're clearly obvious. responsible. No, of course I'm not. If you if you share a cab and then one person's lucky enough to not be late and one person is unlucky enough and that's what it is. Bad luck. I don't think you share the obligation. But phone, it's, just, a mor it's a moral dilemma. This isn't it. But it's more than that, though, isn't Go it? On, because what? let's be honest. What? Um, even if you had known that it, I was gonna get there late. You'd have wanted me to hang around just so you weren't left around waiting for a train on no, the No, cause I got Cause there. you get bored sitting no, there. cause I got so there. you'd have wanted me to at least got in that car I got there you. way too early. I right. actually got there about, I was there about thirty minutes. Oh, so early. you made it fine then. That was well, that exactly. Was so I mean, I did. I I, I sacrificed <laughs> me hanging around for half an hour so you could get it at quarter past four. And the other thing is this: you were gonna get it at quarter past four anyway. Yeah, but, but I would- if I'd gone the other direction and not dropped you off in the centre, I would have been there in well, time. Wow, would we? Would we? Well, Is yes. that true? Wow. Only God knows. Well, and the cabbie. <laughs> 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 what I mentioned it to. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll tell you what will cheer you up. I'll tell you what's better than 80 quid. I'll tell you what's better than- shall I? <laughs> Go on. Uh, music. What, are you paying the whole 165? <laughs> Listen, look, I've brought in a little track here, um, right. Bruce Springsteen off the Tunnel Love album, and uh, I know you're a Springsteen fan. I'm a Springsteen we're, we're, fan. We should just qualify this, because a lot of people who listen to XFM are obviously a bit edgy about Springsteen. They yeah. just think he's this old, kind of ludicrous 80s rocker, the bandana, you know, the, the fly in the flag, which he no, never that, really was. No, that was Bon Jovi. Exactly. Don't, don't confuse Bon Jovi. Them. But seriously, no, do you know what I mean? He did write some great music in the 70s. Yeah. And he just got a little bit kind of pompous in the 80s, but he still turned out uh, some amazing tunes. One of which I imagine is this one, Rick. This one's called Brilliant Disguise. A bit of Springsteen there. Brilliant Disguise on XFM 104.9. I think that's, that soothes you a little bit. That's, uh, that's not really. Taking the blood off. I, I just remembered something. 80 quid, well. Rick. 80 quid. You know what? Uh, um, we finished the talk at about sort of three, and we had a couple of hours to kill before we got the. Uh, about that half two, wasn't it? We had a couple of hours before we got the. The taxi, and uh, and we were eating in this cafe, and uh, and Steve said, "How long's your train journey?" I said, oh, four and a half hours." He went, "So you, what time you get?" I said, "I'm oh, getting about 10. He went, "Half six, me," uh, and he's quite smug. And I went, "Yeah," I said, "It is it quite a long time." I just started to sort of relax and over. He went, "Yeah," I said, "But he said, I think I'm come off better here because usually you've organised all this stuff." He said, "But I think you've chosen wrong." I think oh, I said, "I think you're right." <laughs> Yeah. You? Don't you, you think those words were <laughs> coming back to haunt me as I was <laughs> handing over 165 <laughs> notes? I was, and, all I was thinking was, and Ricky's I was on the train be loving in it. first class, drinking uh, John Smiths yeah. and listening to Mercedes Walkman. Yeah, but I handed over my initial card. <laughs> she said 165 quid, and I went fine. I handed over the card. Uh, yeah. It was a switch card. She said, "We don't take switch." Don't they? I was thinking, how? What am I going to do then? I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know where I'm going to get the money from. What did you do in the end? Then? Well, look, I had another card. Oh right. And um, and she managed to accept that one. But I, I don't know what I'd have done. I don't genuinely. You didn't don't know tell what me you had another card. <laughs> yeah, I got two cards. Have you? Oh yeah. yeah oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, oh, that um, is depressing. I was so depressed because I just kept thinking about what I'd said to you. <laughs> <laughs> I've won this time because normally I'm always like legging it for tubes or I'm just do you know where I get stuck in the rain or and something. I've I just organised a driver or something. something. Because when you get me, I said, "Why? It's up to you. It's up to you." You know what I mean? Every man for themselves. But this time it was four and a half hours, and I was just in that forty minutes on the tr on the plane. There'd have been no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm so livid. Do you know, I got off the- cause I was not very well either, I'm a bit ill at the moment. I got off the, the plane and I thought, well, I could get a cab from the airport all the way back home, but you know, I've already been stung for 165 quid. Got the tube. Took me forever. Really? I'm not gonna lie to you, it took me forever. Oh, so I got- I got in probably later than you did. Around <laughs> <laughs> the eleven o'clock mark. You didn't really? No, I wasn't quite as bad oh. as that. But I was so dep- I'm really depressed, Rick, so I was saying fifty quid is well, me money, right I mean, Steve does not like to waste money, and um, I mean, by that I mean- I mean- I don't like to spend money. 
No. Um, we had to, he had to go out and get our shirt for a photo shoot. Not a quite an important photo shoot for, I think, the, the Times. Right? Went out, he was buying a shirt, buying a shirt, went out, planned it, weren't sure. Came back, four nine, fourteen ninety nine from Henny's. Henny's, fourteen ninety nine. He knew where he was aiming. He aimed straight for Henny's. He knew, he knew where he can get a bargain. Uh, this is a man. But I, it seems to me that at that kind of price, you can throw them away, Av. You don't even need to wash them, really. You can throw them away using, like, Kleenex. Have you ever thrown one away? No. Just scrape off the stains and keep on wearing it. Rick. Remember that time when he, we went to the casino for my birthday, and I was, like, hundred quid down, and some people were hundred quid up, and hundred quid down, uh, he, after the three hours we were there, was down twenty pounds, genuinely depressed. I was almost crying. Yeah. Because I don't- well, it's because it's a- it's a mugs game gambling. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. <laughs> was that where we- because I went there, it was, uh, when it was one time we went there, it was, uh, our agent's Oh, birthday. that was another time we went yeah. there, right? And he was up. And he'd, he'd got a, uh, got a win, he was thirty quid up. And so I said, it's your round then. <laughs> and the round was more than thirty quid. And he couldn't believe it. And he sat down and he went, I can't believe it. He said, and I bought him a present, so I was already down. Yeah. <laughs> I was. I turned out I was already down because I bought our agent a gift. <laughs> he didn't, I didn't see him buy one. And you know that thing where you're buying a round of drinks for people you don't even know? So it's like, what's the story there? Why am I suddenly bankrolling new drinks? It's like, I don't know you people. I'm not gonna get any kind of, I'm not gonna see you again to sort of reap the benefits at a later point. Cause he point. came in I'm with not, his three Most of you are married or engaged, so I'm not even gonna pull from it. It was a waste of time. It was, it was like, just it pure generosity. It was something like from Swingers, because he came into the cocktail bar holding three chips up worth ten pounds each yeah. and went, hello, <laughs> like that. Yeah, I was yeah. thirty pounds up. That's a lot of money, Rick. Uh, you know, Carl, you, yeah. you know that. Thirty quid. You don't want to sniff at that. Oh, what, what, what songs should we play? This, we've got lots of songs in. It's hard. Bit of, uh, bit of Incubus. Oh. Oh. Just a bit more depressed. Oh. Do you know what I, I thought it was a bit slow. I know, but I'm a fan I of it. I like slow songs, but I really do I've always been, I've been, always been a fan of it, even from, you know, early days. Yeah. I, I, I thought his first song was really great and much maligned. People didn't like it, because they were expecting, like, you know. The verve. Yeah. Yeah. Urban hymns and all that. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's great. On XFM 104.9. Who are you? Ricky Gervais, who are you? Steve Merchant. Who's that little round headed oh, fellow? Yes, Carl Pilkington. Carl, we haven't had a lot of Carl today. He's a bit tired, aren't you? Just a little bit. What happened? Bit you you came back from Edinburgh today as well, didn't you, on the plane? This morning. Yeah. Got an early, an early flight. Yeah. Um, and it's just annoying me because there's, there was like people on the plane fighting over, um, where they wanted to sit. Uh, Surely they've got designated seats. Well, they have, but that wasn't good enough for them. They wanted like, they wanted to sit next to the friends and that. And it's like, well, you can't because you didn't check in together. So that's, that's the way it is. Yeah, done. But the thing is, it's from Edinburgh, 40 minutes. Yeah. And I just don't understand this sort of... You can stand for that long, can't you? Well, wh why do you have to sit next to the person anyway, to be honest? I mean, fair enough, if you're going on a long flight, someone to talk to, but for 40 minutes, it really doesn't matter. I never want anyone to talk to. I, d I don't want anyone sitting next to me to talk to me. Why? Well, what are they there for? What? I, I don't mean people I go with. I mean, if I'm travelling alone and I sit next to someone, I don't want them to talk to me. Yeah, but... I don't really know. If I was travelling with you, I'd really not want you to talk to me. <laughs> not <laughs> if you're gonna talk like this. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, this is this. Oh, you sound like you're suicidal, mate. It was just a couple of people arguing. It's over, man. Yeah. The plane journey's finished. He's, Why he's, is it still stewing? He paid 160 quid and he's not winning. He doesn't care. He's 165 quid. Let's get it right. <laughs> if we're gonna bring it up, <laughs> we're gonna mention it. <laughs> and it's like Warford looks back to him. He's, he just. <laughs> he goes, mate. He said, he said to me, Rick, it's only money, is, and money is just something you have in case you don't die tomorrow. He's got a great attitude towards money, Steve. It's like, easy come, easy go. So just take a leaf out of Steve the I'm not spending that much merchant, and you'll have a happier life. Sorry, I just need to defend myself for a minute. There what? are certain instances in life where, you see, you know you're giving me an attitude like that I'm tight. It's not tight. No, it's no, the, no, 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 shut no, up. No, Let no, me defend no, myself. No, it's not, not that I'm tight with money, it's that I want to get value for money at all times. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I, you probably got a lot of cash given to you, maybe it's pocket money when you were a kid. I Every didn't. penny I've ever had is be money I've earned. Yeah. So frankly, yeah. I'm gonna spend it wisely. Like for instance, you might be, say you're in a party or so you're at a party, maybe out in a bar with some, someone's birthday, you get talking to a girl, right? Maybe you buy her some drinks, right? You're chatting to her, mm. and then you're chatting away for two hours, and then at the end of the evening she says, oh, da 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 da, -da I've got to go and meet my boyfriend now. Right? She's wasted my money and my time there. Yeah. That's two hours wasted and money wasted, right? Now she should have told me straight away that she had a boyfriend, and I wouldn't have bothered with right. her. I'd have moved on, I'd have what, looked on to her. What it's if like she that thought sort she was just having a chat with another human being? Though, Rick, where you, I'm being deliberately deceived <laughs> so people can extract money from me or interesting conversation. Yeah. She knew what I was after. It was yeah. obvious. Yeah. The drooling yeah. mouth, you yeah. know, the, the beady eyes. And, 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 and yet she was leading me on. And she was a prostitute. 
And think how he felt about that. I mean, what no, a slap in the face. let's not try and cheapen it with that kind of cheap sexual innuendo, right? She, she had occasionally slept with him for, <laughs> for money. <laughs> it wasn't for money, it was for meals. Yeah. yeah. No, but the <laughs> point was, no, do you know what I mean? It's just that sort of attitude generally in my life. He's like, don't waste my time, you know? Don't waste my time or my money. You're like, life is, sh the clock is ticking as far as yeah. I'm concerned. And, you know, and so just, if, if, if you've got a boyfriend and I come up and I'm chatting you up, just let me know and I'll or move on. I won't bother you. Or yes, please. This, I'm glad you mentioned that because I feel we should, they should definitely introduce some kind of you see, the problem is that women without boyfriends will be wearing those badges now and you won't be able to, you know what I mean, you won't be able to say, have you really got a boyfriend? <laughs> no, I just think there should be some kind of sort of, this sort of, there should be an etiquette, there should be an understanding. Yeah. You know, cuz they know, yeah. I, they can see what I'm after, it's obvious. <laughs> is it obvious, yes, is it? Yes, I make you're it not, very clear. You're not a subtle man. No, I just come over and pant. Do you still, do you still try and attract their attention by throwing small rocks at them? Yeah. As they walk down the, yeah, does that, has that yeah. ever worked? Occasionally. Is it really? You know, the desperate ones or homeless ones. Oh, the homeless but ones. He once, right, he said to me, he came in to, uh, uh work and he said, uh, I gave a homeless girl uh, a pound, right, because I fancied her. He said, is that wrong? Is that really bad of I me? I don't think it is, you see. <laughs> I don't think it is, because it seems to me if she, she was an attractive homeless girl and she deserves some of my money. <laughs> I just imagine mind. him slowing down. I imagine him, like, going past loads of tramps going, get out of it, get a job. And she goes, he goes, ah, <laughs> hello. But I have to say, I did for a moment just pause and think to myself whether I could kind of scoop her up <laughs> in my arms, take her back to my place, and kind of turn her life around like my fair lady. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of teach her to speak properly and dress her up in smart clothes and take her out into sort of society. Yeah. I think that's where your first mistake was. You said, listen, love, I'm up for it if I can hose you down. <laughs> that was where you went wrong. <laughs> Smiths, Cemetery Gates. Great, wasn't it? Always cracking. Off the Queen is Dead, voted best album of all time, I think, in an enemy poll. I don't think it is their Stream best album. Streamers, here we come. I agree. By I, far I, the best. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Cracking. Anyway, Carl, yeah, so people are arguing on the flight. How, how did you enjoy it in the bro, by the way, anyway? Because I saw you up there briefly with you and, um, Nick Frost, your new mates, Nick Frost and Simon Pegg. You know, uh, he prefers them to us now. I know, apparently, I could tell that from just talking to him, really. It, it was just, it was, the way he was sort of looking at them, he like, was just smiling at Nick Frost, he's, it's his new best chum, you love right. Nick Frost, don't Would you? you have preferred it, right, <laughs> if I went to Edinburgh and, and had to sit with some people that I really didn't like? Would no. you have, would you have been happier for me? No, uh, do you know, but right. I, I, so I, I had a great time with yeah. Simon and Nick and the, and the nice people. But, what, but he kept going, he kept going, he kept going to, uh, oi, oi, Nick, tell Ricky that story. And he th and Nick and Simon, well, wow, all it was, right, and they're ghost stories, that's, he loves them because they believe in ghosts. Oh. It's not, not just that. Great oh, like, a great sense nothing. of humour, just because they believe in ghosts. You go and tell them that, he goes, how'd you explain that? I was going, well, I wasn't there. What was that one you told me and it was completely wrong? About the... It was, uh... Oh, yeah, right, it's... Years ago... Oh, yeah. Uh, some... some In olden doc days. Oh, sure. When ghosts like, roamed the earth. Once upon a time, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some doctor or something who was into, like, the way bodies work, um, they got their head cut off. Uh, who and did? The doctor? Yeah, he was doing a bit of an experiment. And he cut his own head off? He, yeah. Okay. And it was about, um, he said, when my head's in the basket, I'm gonna blink my eyes. Right. Okay, sorry, hang on, let, let him finish. <laughs> and, um... So the doctor has chopped his own head off and, and he's told everyone, I'm gonna blink my eyes to no, prove he's, he's in the basket and he goes like, right, I'm gonna blink my eyes about, f you know, as many times as I can. So quick, count them. And, and they count and he got to like 15 before he, he, he Right. Died. Now, this is how Carl told me that. Till, till Nick Frost explained that, <laughs> Carl told me, like, he said, right, well, a bloke, right, he had his head cut off, and as it, and it, when his head was in the basket, he went, count how many times I can blink. <laughs> and I went, well, that's rubbish. He went, no. And Nick went, well, no, he, he actually said, when my head's in the basket. I, he went, and Carl went, oh, I said, I said, Carl, do you know the subtle difference? Do you see the subtle difference? I have to say, though, guys, I still don't really understand what went on there. I really, you've well, both well, lost me. Uh, the story is that a bloke who'd been found doing, um, uh, doing You a, mean uh, that Carl just explained it and that was a clear version? Because <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know what you're talking about, Carl. Well, this bloke had his head cut off for, uh, experiments against God. He was a doctor in the, you know, uh, in olden times. Yeah. And when they cut his head off, um, Why did they cut his head off? Um, because uh, it was, uh, he it was, was crimes against, exactly, he was executed, yeah. And, uh, uh, he said to his assistant, when my head's in the basket, I'm gonna blink, count how many times I blink and write it down as an experiment, right? Carl told it to me, like, his head was cut off and he went in the basket, and when his head was in the basket, he looked up and said, count how many times I blink. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love the difference in that story. Yeah. yeah. Both rubbish, yeah. but, um, you know, one's, one's Why possible you, you and one isn't. Anything, you believe anything that you're told except when we tell you the truth. Right, yeah. here's one. Christ. Ghosts and that we got we got talking about. Sure. And Nick uh, Nick said right. He said you'll like this one. 
He said, uh, my, uh, my auntie, um, was having loads of problems Why are you whispering? It's not illegal like, to talk oh, about ghosts on the radio. No, but, but it's hearing and, this. Um, so, um, <laughs> the auntie's in the house and that, and, um, furniture's moving about all the time. Oh, God. And they were like, no, oh, this is- Oh, Steve, you told me this one. This is such rubbish, mate. No, come I'm on, let's listen. Let's I'm gonna leave it to you. I'm gonna sit back and l- enjoy it. I'm just gonna watch your face, Steve. Right, sorry. So, so I missed said, the beginning uh, there, Carl. There's an auntie right, Basically, age. Nick's auntie. Right. Um, in the house, things moving around all the time. Oh, it was right. just annoying every time she tidied up. It was like- oh, <laughs> It was just annoying. Making a mess. <laughs> it was one part annoying to two parts <laughs> scary. Yeah, yeah. So-, <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> oh, so stuff dear. was stuff was moving around all the time, and yeah. they said, right, rather than right, we need an housekeeper. Yeah. Rather than having the house a mess, uh, <laughs> until we sort <laughs> <Stop> this out. Stop <laughs> it! I've got the vicar coming round. Stop moving I stuff love around. This. Oh yeah, go on. They said that should be in the pants drawer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put all the furniture in one room, right? right. So uh, just have one room that's a mess, and have all the others <laughs> empty. <laughs> Because I love the poltergeist can't really, o- it can move f- wardrobes around, but it can't open the door to put it in another room. Yeah. Poltergeist going, oh, I'm just making this room messy. I wish someone opened the door so I could, f- go on. Yeah, but, so, so all this stuff's in this room. So right? they moved all their furniture everything into one room. Everything, they put like the drawers in there and everything, and <laughs> it was really uncomfortable, because they were all like on top but of each they other. They sat in the room with all the stuff. Yeah, they had to, because that's where their three piece suite was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Right. Oh, right. oh, God. So they sat there, right, all crumpled up on that, but nothing can move because it's so tight. Things, yeah. I think things were trying to move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything was so tight. It's they just foxed like... that poltergeist. So, um, so anyway, one night they sat there, like, sort of a bit awkward watching the telly and that. And, um, they hear some banging. Yeah. In the next room. <laughs> so, uh, she goes, oh, God, what's that? Oh, he hadn't moved in, had he, the ghost? So, uh... Um, <laughs> some of the empty rooms. So does this bang- <laughs> moved some friends and family in. There's this banging about going on, no, so this, this, she, this, this she gets up, right? Yeah. And what it is, they had the baby in the next room, because there wasn't much room for the cot. Right, so they left the baby with, with the ghost. <laughs> <laughs> so, they go into the room where the baby is, <gasps> and the banging... Yeah. ...is like, do you know those plastic balls you get that you can chuck round the room and, like, they go mental? Right. The ones that you chuck once and yeah, they keep bouncing yeah, yeah, for ages. Yeah, yeah. That was bouncing around the room. Why? What, the baby all, had thrown it? It in all the walls. And the baby was there, stood in the cot, sort of laughing. Right. And looking at the ball and wherever it looked, the ball went. Yeah. And then th- she said, uh, she said, stop doing that. Yeah. And the ball just stopped. Did it? And it, and it rolled a bit and stopped. Right. So the baby had thrown the ball and it was watching it as it bounced around the room. It wasn't throwing it, it was in control of it. No, the point is, Steve, the baby has been doing it. It would have been the baby all along. The baby had been messing with the furniture. It was so a baby a that super had the power. Baby. <laughs> yeah, it's a baby that had the power. Special, ba- special baby. It's a baby that powers. had the power. It's what, what a baby power? that had the power. What, the power, the power of telekinesis. Right. They were then trying to convince me that uh, telekinesis was not like all the other stuff that I didn't believe in, but that was a science. Right. Telekinesis was possible. Yes. Yeah. It's not. It's not like. It's not like ghosts and demons and uh, all that sort of. Telekinesis is different. Yeah. That, that's yeah. A science. Um, but. Ne- but- Nick's auntie saw it, and I love the fact that you're telling me that someone else's auntie <laughs> saw it. <laughs> so I should be, I should be satisfied with that. Yeah, I, I, I should be satisfied with that. I mean, no. so does she still live in one room with all her possessions? No, I think the uh, baby the grew out of it. Apparently, it, it grew. <laughs> the up. baby grew out of it. it. So it doesn't use its telekinesis powers no. anymore. Well, no, it's no. like in Carrie, in it. She she was upset for a bit, and then she got over it. Okay, I'm yeah. just gonna say one thing, Carl. Um, that was a film. Do you want to play a record or <laughs> oh, get free? All right, on XFM one hundred four. Can I, can I just tell you a story that Carl told me a couple of weeks ago? Is this another um, ghost story? Another yeah, it is, story? yeah. Um, uh, I called him out, I was, what are you doing? He said, oh, I said, I've just been reading ghost stories again. He went, th- he said, right, he said, you don't believe in them, but how do you explain this? Right, I went, go on. He said, uh, well, I'll tell you as he told me it. He went, um, blog, right, just sitting at home, just sitting at home, doing, you know, watching telly with his, with his cat. And, uh, the phone rings, and it's a bloke going, uh, oh, uh, is that fire, uh, in your oven okay now? Um, cause your wife called. And he went, Carl went, well, one, there was no fire in the oven. Two, he wasn't married. <laughs> I went, right. Go on, he went, well. Then, right, there was a knock at the door and there was two sort of people in sort of w- white coats and they, and they kind of said, oh, we've come about that fire. Your wife called us. He went, one, there isn't a fire in my oven and two, I'm not even married. 
right? And he said, and they saw the cat, and they sort of, they looked at the cat, it looked a bit weird at the cat, the cat came out, and they went, nothing. Uh, uh, and, uh, he said, and then he went back, and sat down, phone rings, and they said, oh, uh, did they sort out the fire in the oven that your wife told us about? <laughs> oh. He went, one, there is no fire in my oven, two, I haven't got a wife. And Carl went, what do you think of that? I went, that's not it. <laughs> he went, yeah, I went, <laughs> That's the end of the I story. Went, what? 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 He went, well, how'd you explain that? I went, explain what? I thought he was gonna say, <laughs> a year later we got married but she died in an oven fire. <laughs> right? I thought it was gonna be that. And I went, That's what? people winding him up. Yeah. Or, 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 um, someone did report a fire oven, and their name was Johnson, and they looked up Johnson, they got the wrong thing, it was the gas board, or, <laughs> and they sent around to the wrong person, right? Do you know what? He, he, went, he went, yeah. I said, I explained it to him, he went, yeah. Why did they look at the cat funny? <laughs> Oh, man alive, Carl. <laughs> this is really weird, right? I was, um, <coughs> I was, uh, in my house once, right, and the doorbell rang. Yeah. Right, I opened the door, there was no one there. Yeah. Right? And then I looked across the street, there was right, some kids and there were some kids running away. Yeah. Now, how do you explain that? Yeah. There was another time, right, where, like, I, I opened the door and there was a bird goes, you've ordered pizza. I went, I haven't ordered pizza. And I heard my mate upstairs giggling and putting the phone down. Yeah. How do you explain that? Carl, seriously, what did you, why did you tell me that story? What did you think, what did you think it was weird about that? The fact that it was three different people. Is this all the information? Is that the entire story? Have you, did it was you, three different people. Did you fall asleep and not read the end? A fire that didn't happen. About a wife that didn't exist. <laughs> and a cat that didn't look happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have a heart attack, Carl. What? I mean, why? Why did they look at the cat funny? Because what? cats don't don't like um, spirits, do they? <laughs> And the other blokes were ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's it. So right? these, are, these are kind of beetle about type ghosts. <laughs> these are ghosts who walk the st walk the earth <laughs> as the ah! undead, just winding oh, people up slightly. That's lovely. That is but lovely. Seriously, and a cat that did not look happy. But seriously, why would ghosts <laughs> wander around just like winding people up? <laughs> oh. Maybe something did happen there years ago. Mm. Some fire. Some woman might have died in the house of a fire or something. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, it sort of all happened again. Bit yeah. Of a yeah, it's certainly a mystery. It's, I mean, certainly you know, it's a mystery. Yeah. I mean, I can't. I What's can't, this I... book you were reading? You were reading a book, which is interesting enough. There was, um, it was the Fatian, Fatian Times. Oh. Carl. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know what to say. Well, I'll tell you this, Carl, there is a track that will, uh, that will spook you right out. <laughs> this is Warren Zevon from, uh, what was it, like about 1979, early oh, 80s? Oh, great track. Werewolves of London. Play this, Carl. But don't be s From 1978, Carl, Werewolves of London by Warren Zevon. Are you a fan of that? It's all right, that's Great track, isn't it? Fans right. of Warren Zevon, maybe if you should know he's got a new album out. Oh. As we speak. Although, if you're a fan, you probably know that already. Yeah. If you aren't a People fan. People who hate him would yeah. be interested in knowing <laughs> yeah. that he's got a new album out. Yeah. Do you believe in, uh, I think Werewolves. Lycanthropy, is it, is it not called? What's that, sorry? Lycanthropy. What's Lycanthropy? Isn't that wa werewolfism? Really? Isn't it? Isn't it? Do you believe in that, Carl? They've, they've, they've found stuff, haven't they? They've found kids walking about who are all airy. Cause, right. uh, <coughs> cause they've, they've sort of grew up with, uh, wolves and that. Yeah. So. No, you see, <laughs> two things there. Um, right, uh, you cannot take on acquired uh, characteristics genetically. So, if you grew up with wolves, it wouldn't suddenly make you hairy. Uh, there's two. been pictures, there's been pictures, there's been stories on it, and I reckon most people have, or a lot of people have seen the stories, it's a popular you thing. Mean, you mean the kids that are born hairy? No, no, there's kids who've been born hairy, right? Yeah, that's it. No, but listen, and they walk around on all fours, <laughs> and they drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> oh, oh, I've Steve, this is no, too No, remember, easy. listen, remember that time with the maggot and the head? Yeah. Um, getting out with bacon and you were like laughing and then people called up and said, yeah, I've, I've seen that, I've read about that. Yeah, this but is the same you, thing have as you this. seen an XFM listener up close? Have you ever looked? They studied? drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've got to be kept on leads, people who listen to this show. There's, there's no point in me telling you about stuff. There is, it's comedy you see, gold. When you, when you were out of school, did you keep arguing with the teacher saying you're talking rubbish to Teachers there? didn't teach us about werewolf boys and ghosts. Mm. They taught us maths. God, right, tell the story about the man I'll cover. Right, in the same magazine as, uh, as the one with the, 
with the cat and the fire and that. Don't tell me that story again, it gives me the shit. Yeah, a cat that's <laughs> got a weird expression on its face yeah. is well, against it, God. Anyway, this isn't a scary story, this was just, uh, like physics. Explained. Physics. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it right. was going on about the, uh, nuclear bomb and uh, how powerful it is. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> they put, they put a manhole cover on top of one. <laughs> okay. Blew it up. Yeah. <laughs> Never saw the manhole cover again. <laughs> <laughs> Man alive, Carl. <laughs> Unexplained. What's that. going on there? Something weird is happening there. <laughs> oh. oh. If anyone has ever seen that metal cover, <laughs> yeah, uh, please yeah. get in touch. We'd love to know where it is. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> what sort of experiment is that? I imagine all these scientists on multi billion pound research budgets, they're going, we test everything. What would you do to man or cover? Don't know. That's like letting a couple of students. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have yeah. Of a do you reckon you can send a traffic cone, cone yeah. into orbit? Go on then, put it on there. <laughs> I love that. I imagine that. What? Uh, what, of what value is that? <laughs> and what, so what we could do, we could let the, put the manhole cover on it and aim it and then blow the bomb up and it would, <laughs> it would, the manhole cover would have someone's eye out! <laughs> fire it! See if you can fire manhole covers <laughs> off the nuclear bomb, whatever. <laughs> Toy bangers to a bomb, see if it's louder. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Okay, listen, Carl, play another track and then afterwards, can we probe your views on the, the week's news? If you want. We'll do a bit of a white van Carl session. Hopkins. Today. Today. Today is the greatest, because yeah. we're back. That's true enough. All right. I hope people, uh, Rick, were listening to that loud, uh, in this lovely summer's day. Or, or I mean, I'll call, no, not too loud. Well, don't, 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 don't annoy ears. people that, yeah. yeah um, yeah. White Rick Van, Van Carl. Yeah, White Van Carl, I mean, uh, for those that don't know, we do this, uh, We ask week. Carl the questions that the Sun asks someone else. That's right, the Sun every day asks, um, some, you know, average Joe, his views on the week's big stories. Mm. Carl, let me ask you now, um, what do you make of Prince Harry smoking openly at a polo club? Uh, Are you aware of this story? No. Was it? Go on. Prince Harry, you know that he's one of the royals. Yeah. And he was seen smoking openly, openly, a fag, a cigarette. Uh, third, third, third in line to the throne. Something like that, yeah. Imagine that. Someone hey. smoking a cigarette was third in line to the throne. A cigarette, Carl. Is it a non-smoking polo club? Do you know, I don't know, but, uh, but if it were... Would that make things even worse for you? Well, no, yes. seriously, what, what do you make of it? This is, this is, you know, the whole, you know, the, the furore is, he's a role model, you know, he's a royal, should he be seen puffing away in a public place? I don't think it matters, does it? Not a concern for you? How old is he? Is he old enough to smoke? I think he probably is, yeah. Right, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think the trouble with, um, this role model thing, with anything that's legal, it should either be illegal or not. Yes. I just don't think you can impose things like that, right, yeah. uh, because you could say that it is bad for you and it is bad to start smoking and it really is bad for you, you know, it causes cancer and everything. But everyone knows so that, don't they? We? Well, yeah, but you should either make it illegal or shut up about it. So this is Carl you're asking, isn't I it? I am indeed. So, sorry, so yeah. we can throw these questions your way as well <laughs> yeah, if you fancy. Sorry, it. yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't so, matter. But Carl, what are your views generally? I mean, it's obviously cigarettes are, uh, perfectly legal and so on, but what about stronger narcotics? Because I know you're very scared of drugs and stuff, aren't you? You're yeah, I I'm not a fan. I don't no, know. What's your concern? What's your worry? Just yeah. that you might get into them. Sure. It's like you might have them and go, oh, this is all right. Yeah. Exactly, Carl. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Although I was talking to you about it earlier and you weren't that, <laughs> you weren't very sympathetic about a lot of young people who, who have perhaps gone to crack or smack. You, you, didn't you describe it as their own fault? Sometimes it is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I could have turned to it where I grew up, but I said, well, don't want to do that, it's not good for you. Sure. I avoided it. You turned to ghosts. So you've so got no sympathy for anyone who's, who's a drug addict? It's their own fault, is your- It depends, your doesn't it? Sure. Do you know what I mean? You can be an addict if, I don't know, something, I'm trying to think of a nice way that well, you Well, most might people start on stuff like that because something really traumatic has happened to them. Very few people go out for a laugh yeah. one night and, and, and go, let's all try it. Sure. So, uh, you know, but- yeah. Just say know. no, I suppose is the, uh, the, the attitude Just say no, the listen to the, uh, cast of Grange Hill. Now, this will scare you. Now, this, Carl, you will be a little bit unnerved about this. Have you seen the film Jurassic Park? Yeah. You know what happened there? Well, according yeah. to the sign here, it says scientists are planning to clone mammoths for a theme park. Look at his face, look at that, he looks like a dog caught in the, the headlights of a car, he's terrified. I love Carl. He's sprung to attention Carl. there. I lo that's, is that, is that the best news you could have? Man moths. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, man Carl, moths. I man love moths. the fact that that's why he was so excited that they bred a man moth. What is what is this? Yeah, it's it's a human being that that hides in your wardrobe and eats the entire jacket in a day. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean, man moths? Mammoths. Mammoth. The big hairy cow from the ice age. I mean, right. elephant. 
You're not so excited yeah. about that, then? <laughs> you can take or leave bringing back mammoths to life, but a man moth... A man moth is a different matter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if we'd- if we'd have never brought that up, he'd have gone and told someone now, yeah. you know, I've bred an half man, half moth. This and is that's what how, we this mean. how things start. This you is what we mean when you, you hear these ghost stories. Are you slightly deaf? Is that it? When you hear these stories, you're slightly deaf. And his head- and his head was in the basket, and he went, count how many times I blink. Is it- I- is- Carl, Carl, is English your first language? <laughs> Are you actually foreign? Is that yeah. the thing? Yeah. Do, should we well, speak slower? When we say foreign, we, we mean not of this planet. Yeah. Should we speak slower? Would that be a help to you? No. Go, go on. Next what do you one. make of that? Do you think that's good? Do you think that's good to bring back, back prehistoric <laughs> animals? These giant elephants. They're, they're slow, aren't they? It's not as if they're gonna, like, get out and run fast and they can't capture them. They'll probably be like a fence, to be honest, Carl. They'll probably be a fence. No, but, I'm like, but, they're, but you're asking it as if, like, oh, it could all go wrong, but it couldn't, could it? Well, really? but, but, but the point was about uh, Jurassic Park is they thought it wouldn't go wrong. They thought they had it all under yeah, control. Have you learned nothing from uh, Jurassic Park, Carl? Dinosaurs would say, oh, f think about it before you do it. But <laughs> with a, with a airy elephant, it's, it's not gonna... It's not a concern for you. Would I'll you go along to see him? Would you be interested in it? If it was in the area. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's great, isn't he? I'd love, I'd love a cue, Nothing right? impresses No, him. but what I'd like to do is Carl sitting like Yoda in a little cave, and I'd just like to see people like Tony Blair and, you know, Stephen Hawking's in a queue, and they go and say, Carl, got a bit of a problem. Um, yeah, and thinking it, of cloning a man and a moth. Yeah. Problem? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not an issue. No, if I'm in the area, I might cruise around <laughs> and have a look at it. Otherwise, just don't send it near my, uh, my um, clothes. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so it's just for a second. What, what, as, the, as the words man, moth, came into your head. W how excited were you? I mean, were you both terrified and excited? For- just for the moment when you thought that they'd cloned a man and a moth? I pictured, um... What kind of face I'll, did he have? Was, did he have the moth's head or was it a man's head? Just a little head. Little man head. Right, what- what was his face? <laughs> what did it look like? Just- he just was like a bit like- A, a bit, bit shocked. perplexed, yeah. <laughs> um... Yeah, it, like, so it was like he'd been- he'd been- he'd been grafted onto the body of a moth yeah. without his- his consent. And when he was asleep. Was yeah, he'd woken up. He just- he just went in for to have a goiter removed yeah. and they said, we've he replaced your with goiter wings. with the body of a giant moth. Yeah. Just Is that alright, Mr. Jenkins? Mm, so sorry. he had the head of a, a little- was it a little boy or a man? Little man. Right, okay. And he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> if you- Carl, if you- if you uh, went into hospital, a and they'd done something. Uh, what, what's the worst thing they could do, right? What would you rather have done, do you, right? You wake up and you've got, um, lobster claws for hands. Right. You wake up and you've got duck's feet. Uh, or you wake up and you've got one horn coming out of your head. The worst thing. Yeah. Probably the, uh, <laughs> the horn coming out of my head. <laughs> Why? Get in the way. <laughs> That'd be useful, wouldn't it, in fights and stuff. And, uh, for, like, parties, people would play well, the lobster claws would also be quite handy, though. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Black <laughs> Rebel, Mark's Hogwarts Club, spread your love. You enjoying it so far? Um, yeah, I suppose so. First show back? Yeah, it's not bad. It's great to be I'm back. I'm just thinking about that money, to be honest. It's I know, still playing on my mind. I know, yeah. Could we maybe get, like, a sort of telethon type thing going, or a little charity? Thing, just sort of help me pay You me. can't really ask people to send you money, really? it's technically begging. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Unless you're a are, you, are, are you a registered charity? <laughs> um, I suppose not, not really. We could probably get you status. Yeah. But could I promise, I mean, could I pretend to give them something in return? I mean, am I allowed to sell things on the radio? Yeah, you are. Yeah. yeah so although you probably, you probably get in trouble with uh, the authority if you're, you're using it to sort of like, to your own, okay, not like everyone else doesn't. No, exactly. Yeah. Free lunches and yeah. sponsorship and yeah, God knows yeah, what, yeah. you know what I mean? The, yeah. Put the people that work here, small fry, the yeah. scum. Exactly, the nobodies, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, 165 quid is pretty, it's quite a lot of money, so I mean, if you want to contribute anything, Rick, as I said before, you're more than welcome to. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I would if, it, if I felt any responsibility. Right. Or, yeah, or, or cared. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, I got there too early, which is annoying. <laughs> um, what we should have done, really, was, uh, get you your plane and come back, cos I'd have had time. Do you know, I, I was gonna mention <laughs> it at the time, but I didn't want to, cos I knew the answer would be no. So <laughs> <not>. <laughs> um, oh, Carl. Oh, I, 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 really, I've had a great time. I've forgotten, I've forgotten how good it was just to have a normal con- I say normal, just to have a conversation with you. 
Who are you looking forward to this? You're, he's really down today, isn't he? He's down, man, isn't he? Just a bit tired. But it's interesting, because I said to him, I said to him, did you enjoy Edinburgh? He spent this, the week up in Edinburgh, yeah. obviously. And, uh, he said, yeah, well, he loved it up there. He's been mm. partying every night. And he actually enjoyed it. And I've never, I've never met him when he's actually enjoyed anything before. He's never enjoyed anything, as far as I know. And I was depressed that we weren't involved. His, pa his, his paper round. He loved the paper round, and this Best is the first time he's yeah, he was talking about that the other day as well, but I said to him, I've, he really thinks that, that paper round he had when he was 14 was the best job. He never had. Yeah, he still yeah. thinks the best job because he was own. He said he was his own boss. But no, you weren't. <laughs> yeah. He went. Well, I can get on my bike and think. And he said, "I bet if I phoned those people who I delivered the papers to, they'd say it was the best delivery they've ever." Had. He said, "In fact, I bet a lot of them have chucked in the delivery because it went downhill." This is all. Yeah, sort, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. thinking this. Yeah. He went along. Yeah. Didn't you? Yeah. Imagine phoning someone up and saying, "You don't remember me, but I used to deliver your paper ten years ago. Was it the best delivery service <laughs> you've ever had?" No, but if <laughs> I said I delivered it ten years ago. Um, you used to, if you got up at like six in the morning, it was there for you. Yeah. There's no other paper boy who could guarantee that they'd have that paper when they got Carl, out if of you bed. could earn enough money, would you do a paper round again? If you, if that was your job, but we, you were being paid enough to make a living from it, would, would that, is that something you think about? Uh, do you think you'd enjoy it as much nowadays? Yeah, I reckon I would, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, listen to some music. Sure. Uh, a thousand pound a week, would you do the best yeah, at- Yeah, Would you really? Yeah. Is would, there anyone- out there, who is willing to test that? So anyone who's willing to pay Carl, right, a, grand. a sum of a grand, yeah. to take a week off work and deliver papers, just for that week. All day though, it's all day. No, 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 no. I'll what? get up and the the customers will have their paper. Yeah, but can I tell you what street it is? No, because uh, no, no, it's the M25. <laughs> See, you are being paid a thousand pounds. Yes, that makes sense. You've got to deliver to the M25. I'll tell you what. Let's 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 take the mood down a little bit and play one of the most beautiful songs I've been looking forward to getting. Otherwise, just to play this. To be honest, it's Jimmy Webb's uh, version of Galveston. Galveston, there by the brilliant Jimmy Webb. Uh huh. Who wrote it? Who wrote it? He wrote it. Yes. I mean, yeah. 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 Brilliant Jimmy Webb. Who wrote it? Yeah. It was all one sentence. Yes. Did I confuse you? Again, yeah. With my speech patterns. It's just just using the English language is always helpful. Really. But compared to Carl, I'm I'm Oscar Wilde. Aren't <laughs> I, I suppose so. <laughs> Electric Soft Parade on XFM 104.9. Not long to go on our uh, on our a triumphant return. I think. Uh, oh, I think the paper to be saying, Steve. Yes. Yes. Um, Carl. Um, I, I met Carl a couple of times in our. Our, our sabbatical, and uh, he uh, said to me once, he said, um, oysters. I said, have you ever tried oysters? I, said, oh, I, I don't like them. And I went, uh, he said, oh, it's just, just a thing about swallowing them whole, you know. He went, well, the reason you have to do that is just they're, they're fatally poisonous. <laughs> and if you bite into them, they kill you. And I went, well, of course they don't. He went, yeah. I went, well, of, co of course they wouldn't. <laughs> what have you chewed on? I said, he said, no. I said, well, so you swallow them whole and they're not poisonous. He went, yeah, ah, see. He said, so, he said, when you swallow heroin in a, in a Johnny, he says, that doesn't kill you, does it? <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Oh. And then, uh, <laughs> about a week later, he went, I was wrong about them. <laughs> you were Yeah, I went, well, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what did you say? It's if you eat them and then you have some whiskey. <laughs> They, they turn deadly when, when whiskey comes into contact with them. Yeah. When, when, uh, when they've had a drink. <laughs> when they've had a drink, they get a bit rowdy in your stomach. They right. start fighting, they can yeah, cause hilarious. So, 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 what, so what are you saying now? Are you saying you don't believe that? Am I saying what? Are you saying you don't believe that? Look, he that? thinks he's got us here. He thinks he's got us here. Yeah, I don't believe that if you eat an oyster, then drink some whiskey, you die. You might not die straight away, but... You won't Eventually, feel. 50 years time. If you've got, you've got to keep on drinking whiskey. Uh, yeah, 50, a bottle a day. 50 or 60 years later, he was dead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oyster and a bottle of whiskey a day. <laughs> oh. Then, out of nowhere, 40 years well, later. Where's this information come from, Carl? If, if some doctor called up now. Yeah. And put you right, would you believe him? If it wasn't Dr. Fox. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about the airy, airy lads growing up with the werewolves and that? They didn't grow up they with didn't werewolves. werewolves. Grow up with werewolves. You're confused they're about three just different Just a genetic stories, mutation where, the, you know, they were born with a uh, very, very hirsute. There were a couple of kids, yes, we know. They didn't grow up with wolves and you can't kill them with a silver bullet. I mean, you're confusing two things. There were you? some kids who were very, very hairy, yes. Yeah. They're in folklore. There were some kids who grew up with wolves, yes. I don't think the two are connected. Yeah. Yeah. There's no such thing as werewolves, Carl. You, you believe me. I saw a documentary on it on the History Channel. You'd have loved it. You, you, you grew the up with a magpie. Werewolves. You know, you don't flap around, do you, and steal people's jewellery? Um. What was the thing you told me about snails? Uh, have you ever had any um, 
any post that that looks like it's been opened? Occasionally, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, what it is, it's not your postman having a a sneaky look. A sneaky look. <laughs> Problem is, right? Uh, slugs. <laughs> <laughs> the problem's slugs. Slugs at <laughs> night. They like nipping about and that, and it gets a bit cold. And in London, like in the country, they go into the grass, don't they? Right. But in London, it's like, oh, what can we do? <laughs> and um, they go in letter boxes. <laughs> right. Slugs go in letter boxes. Get in letter, letter bo boxes. It's nice and warm in there, uh, dry and what have you. And um, <laughs> these are homeless slugs, aren't they? The ones that lost their shell. When they're in there, they only found out that they love glue. <laughs> they and love they've, glue. They've been eating, uh, eating the glue off the stamps. Right. And um. <laughs> People have been getting charged for posts because it hasn't had stamps on it. It's like, well, I put a stamp on it. Yeah. It's like it's, slugs have been eating it. Sure. And they also eat the glue that's on the actual envelope shutter. And it's a real popular problem, this, that, uh, <laughs> letters are being lost and opened and all that stuff. Yeah. Slugs. I like, are slugs like stealing postal orders and things and cashing them in and stuff? Yeah, again, you know, if there's a doctor, if there's a postman. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, well, with us two expert witnesses, a doctor <laughs> and a postman. So, uh, so postage is a real problem. Um, so uh, it's, when we see, when we see uh, a slug's trail, or a snail's trail- It's glue. That's the glue they've stolen, is it? That's, they've just, that's a little- I'm we, not, I'm not gonna we say yes to that, that I'm not follow, sure. But we could follow that trail and, and find the, them, and they'd have a big sort of- <laughs> Big bar uh, uh, Yeah, our stamps and- Yeah, <laughs> there they are. Like, birthday cards for our Yeah, but a two pound notes. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow. Slugs. Wow. So, oysters and whiskey kill ya, and slugs. Be very careful. Your if you're gonna go out this evening, you're thinking of having a whiskey, maybe some oysters, be very, very careful. Yeah, and if you, are gonna, if you are gonna post a letter, please, please do please, not use please. tasty glue. <laughs> Back to form there. Oasis. And little by little. This is XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Who are you? Uh, my name's Steve Merchant. Good to see you. Thanks. Uh, with us, uh, the producer in the studio is a Carl Pilton, and he'll be doing the buttons. <laughs> yeah. You made a good effort there, but, uh, <laughs> once again, <laughs> got bored. <laughs> Words to your enemy, <laughs> and they defeated you once again. <laughs> Yes, run out of steam oh, with the sentences. Every week I think, well, I'm really gonna make an yeah. effort now. I'm gonna, I've, I've chosen some records. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's as far as yeah. it goes, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Maybe you should write out what you're gonna say at the top of the show. <laughs> <laughs> write that out. Get a nice no, big that crayon. Be, I like to keep a little bit of, you know. A little bit of something, a little bit of spark, yeah. a little bit of liveliness to it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. How yeah. are you? Good to, good to good. see you. Yeah, it's great. It's great to, uh, <laughs> it's uh, great to be out, bit. <laughs> out of the house yeah. again. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, just, um, I was gonna say, because we've been doing this, uh, for a long time now with a little break, um, but XFM are bringing new listeners all the time. I've heard four or five a week. Really? Yeah. New wow, listeners tune in alive. to XFM 104.9. Radio 4. 1, beware. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, we might take it for granted the people that know who we are, know who you are, know who Carl is. Sure. Um, Oh, now, listen, if, if, if you, you know, if you're a regular, then you know exactly who we are. But, um, for those of you who don't, uh, I say, I'm, I'm Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais, a BAFTA award-winning actor and, yeah, uh, yeah. and writer. Steve Merchant, um, all, all those. A friend of yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, this is the important thing, Carl Pilkington. Absolutely. Our, um, producer, I say producer, he was the bloke who was lumbered with a job. When I said, listen, I said, I used to run the desk in the old days, when I was like, I used to press the buttons and run the desk and everything, and now I said, listen, I've been on the telly. I do not press my own buttons. And Carl said, well, I don't really work weekends. And they went, well, you do if you want to keep your job. Absolutely. And we were lumbered with him. And then we discovered that he's not just a, a little, like a little dork, a little manky sort of idiot. Sure, he's sure. got, he's got nice shirt. He's got, you know what I mean? He's got something else. Absolutely. He's got a certain, another dimension, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, he, he started having a little chat and we discovered that he had him. quite a lot to say. Mm. Well, I, I think you're absolutely right, and I think, um, I was wondering, maybe we, we should maybe play another tune, but after that, I just think we should re-familiarise our radio audience with yeah. Carl, and any new listeners, just get, let, you know, somehow kind of let them get to know the real Carl again. Well, if you are new, you'll, you'll find that we like some uh, old songs, some new songs, some mm -hmm. chit-chat, uh, we get serious sometimes, there's oh, some yeah. tears and some laughter. Yeah. We kicked off with Oasis new one, little by little, we're gonna go <laughs> back in time now to Iggy Pop and his stooges <laughs> with I'm Bored. Eggy Pop on board on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Steve Merchant here as well. Yeah, me? little Carl Pilkington. Mm. Well, w to reintroduce or introduce people for the first time to Carl, um, I think we should have a. Yeah, a maybe sort of a kind of a quick QA, Carl, and we don't need sort of lengthy answers from you. We don't need lots of detail. Um, right. You know, can we uh, just a couple of sentences? Just to get to a answer each question. Who you are. Yeah, so right. firstly, uh, name obviously Carl Pilkington. Age, Carl? Uh, I'll be, uh, I'll be 30 next month. 
Really? This month. No, next. What, where are we? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, think we need to ask I any more questions. I think we've done it. That's I it. I think we've Welcome done it. Welcome to the world of Carl Pilkington. <laughs> yeah, I think that, oh, I thought it would take three or four I questions thought it was gonna be at least, to really yeah. explain that was, that what was Carl the first was question. about. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, Absolutely God. Incredible. But, well, um, but you oh. know, like, we can't really leave it there because, um, no. because we, uh, we haven't uh, got enough else to do to fill yeah. up the two hours. So, um, no. let's, let's pursue this line of inquiry. Yeah. Uh, so, um, age, what was the age, Carl, in a couple well, of months? When were you born? I'll be, uh, 72. Right, what month, what day? I'm on the cusp. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the cusp of a day? <laughs> well. Um, 23rd of September. Okay. 72. <laughs> so anyway, okay, right, good. And uh, you were talking there about, um, obviously a star sign where you're on the cusp. You believe in that, do you? No. Nope. You don't believe in star signs? No, not really. But you do believe in ghosts, I understand. No, because it's the star signs. Yeah, but the star Ten. sign thing, you've got how many, how many different star signs are they? Twelve, innit? Right, and then you've got like loads of people. Yeah. So you, you do the math. So they're saying <laughs> that, you know, there's only twelve different sorts of people in the world. Exactly. That's yes. exactly right. It's, it's made up, it's made up nonsense, it's non-science. It's pseudoscience. It's, yes. It's, so it's, it's 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 hairy man and um dyed hair woman science. Yes. Mm. Isn't it? All right. Yeah. Anyway, back to uh, you Carl. Where were you born? In uh in Manchester. Okay. What uh GCSE results did you get? <coughs> I got uh was it an E? I got an E. You in got history. an E in history. And how, how did, did you, you find out that, that information? You found out cuz you thought you you didn't you couldn't remember what you got. You didn't turn up and you thought you'd done about 3. One of which uh, wasn't history, and I actually- knew I did art. Yeah, you didn't. I'm telling you, you didn't, because we checked. Yeah. You did one. You turned up for history, you did history, you got an no, E in I history. I definitely did art. I what? made a little clay man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to register for O-levels. You don't just do it and then phone up and say, how was that? Yeah. And I go, I'm sending you a clay man. <laughs> <what you think. laughs> yeah, Send me yeah. a grade. Yeah. There's all things, there's forms to fill out and yeah. things like that, Carl. Anyway, yeah. go anyway. on. Um, who was your closest childhood friend? Closest? At what age? Well, when you were young, when you were Oh, a I remember this. It's a fella. Um, so there's, is there's, it someone making, isn't there's, it? There's, well, he wasn't really a close mate. Darren Buckley was me. Darren Buckley? Yeah. He, he was my Tell us briefly mate. about Darren. I've forgotten about Darren. He's the one who, um, all the, all the girls liked him. He Did had, they? Uh, he had permed hair. He used to <laughs> have his hair like a footballer. <laughs> sure. Um. Yeah. Were you jealous of him? His were dad was a copper. Did you hang around with Darren, like, in the hope of getting maybe his kind of cast-offs? Nah. I, I, it's, it's weird with me, and I, I, I wasn't that bothered about having loads of mates and that. I sort of, sure. I had lots of mates, but I could do without them. You had a magpie, yeah. didn't you? I was, happy, didn't I was you? happy playing with my magpie. Yeah, what on, happened to him? It uh, flew away. Yeah. But yeah. I wasn't bothered because it was giving me grief towards the end, wasn't it? It was, <laughs> it was popping me, me grifter tires and that. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> flying down, pecking me head. Sure. Now you went to school with a number of different interesting people. Uh, some of whom two were of which, freaks. I understand, uh, had big heads and webbed toes. Is that right? Yet they were not related to each other and they weren't friends with each other. Why weren't they friends with each other? <laughs> because that'd be obvious. <laughs> <laughs> did they, did they wear shoes or did they walk around in their, <laughs> in their webbed, uh, Were they good at feet? swimming? Were they good at swimming? Uh, I don't know. I don't think they ever, ever went swimming. Did they ever talk, did they, did they ever look over at each other and think, yeah, we but. should hang out more. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, uh, yeah. something in the week as well, there was another cool. lad at school, had a pigeon chest. <laughs> he had a what? Can we come back to this? He had a pigeon I chest. I think we should play a record, Carl, because we- I think we've hooked to them now. Yeah. I think- I think- There's no one switching off now, Rick. No, play a record. Blair, Coffee and TV, Carl, uh, I said it's not the best Blair song when, when it was playing. You know, I'm not- I don't want to diss it, but, you know, it's not the best one. I mean, that's- Absolutely that's not. fact. Sure. You know. Yeah. Carl went- like the video, though. A little milk carton. Yeah. Bit sad. It's tragic, isn't it? <laughs> he went, in the, this is all to himself. I'm not even joining in. And then he went, yeah, but it's all right at the end. He goes to heaven. He finds a little girl milk carton. Just lives out a little thing and is, is that like you on your paper round that little milk carton walking around like that? I imagine you. Oh, people don't know about it. If you just tuned in, Carl had a paper round. It's his favourite job ever. And he maintains it's the best job he's ever had. Isn't it, Carl? Go on. I don't know what's so weird about that. It's a paper round. Yeah, but. Look, look, forget it's all that. Fulfilling look jobs. at look at the way it works, right? You you get it out of the way at the start of the day, so you got the rest of the day to yourself. Cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> just that's the same as signing on. Your own your own boss. You know. Same as signing on. Well, you're not your own boss. The guy, yeah. the news agent's your <laughs> boss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you, 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 that's great. You, you, you've proven me wrong there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, not really. Would that stand up in court? Well, you were found with the dagger. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Was I? <laughs> Could, wh when are we, uh, when are we playing the new game? Oh, Carl's got a new game. Carl's oh, very excited. Oh, just, just we were just, talking about something before. Yeah, the, right, the freaks used to go. You, you had uh, people with big heads, two red feet, didn't hang around each other. That would be too obvious. Um, you had a fellow with a pigeon chest. Mm. Yeah, what's the story with the pigeon chest? Don't know how it happened. <laughs> it was like it, it looked like somebody sort of hit him on the back with a big hammer, <laughs> and it had come out at the front. Yeah, and I've never seen it since. Could that have been the answer? What? Why is why yeah, he had it? Why had it? Possibly, I suppose, in your neck of the woods. Yeah. Don't know, never asked him. It's just come back to haunt you, has it, the pigeon chest? No, it's just that, uh, you know, when you- when you mention about kids at school, I forgot all about him. Mm. He's talking about the kids with the web feet and the big heads. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I forgot about the little old, uh, the pigeon, chest, pigeon boy. Yeah, pigeon boy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, I- I- are you- I I'm a big fan of that TV show, it's on digital TV, a lot of people won't have it, but, uh, Inside the Actors Studio with James yeah. Lipton. Yeah. And he's- he interviews lots of big Hollywood stars and he always asks them these same questions at the end. Can I just run a few of them past you? Go on. Okay. So, um, if you could do any other profession other than the one you do now, what profession would you do? Uh, uh, can you just change that to apart from a paper round? Apart from a paper round. Oh. You could do any other right. profession, Carl. Um, and it doesn't matter about like. It doesn't matter if you've got the skills or anything. I in an ideal world, if you had the ability. Well, I, I think I'm about to buy somewhere, so I reckon something you know using using tools and like doing a bit of plumbing and that. So a plumber. Well, sort of an all rounder. Right. Right. A, a handy man. A handyman. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. you know, you don't get paid that much, but it's useful, isn't it? So- But you'd useful. get your own show, couldn't you, with Carol Smiley eventually? Well, well, all that, but the money that you don't make, you save by not having to pay someone else to do the chores, do right, you know I, I, I don't know what that sentence meant. <laughs> right, right. No. A plumber, how much- how much is the average plumber on? The money you don't make, <laughs> you save, on not getting someone else to do it. <laughs> no, just think of that. No, look, break that sentence down. Are there any- Sorry, uh, Rick, sorry, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. people who live in glass cattle. houses. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, let's just go back to Lipton quickly. We've got a couple of to get through here. Sorry, so, right, um, I'm your- plumber. your- your- your favourite noise or sound? Uh Favourite sound or noise? Ooh. Is it me? No. It's not uh, me? Hang on a minute. It's not me! <laughs> Are you sure it's not me, Carl? I like, I like Elvis. Noise. Elvis. Uh, Elvis. In the, in the ghetto. The sound of Elvis. Uh, Elvis in the ghetto. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. And your least favourite noise or sound? I, d I don't think it should really be records and music. Noises. Things that you hear uh, at home or whatever. Maybe like a sound of a- The least favourite noise. Least favourite. The sound of- Probably like uh, Sound of ghosts. Fire engines and that. <laughs> right. That's- that's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Except if your house was on fire, presumably. <laughs> I think it's a bit unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> you think uh, they're just doing it to wind people up? I live on like a busy street and it's happening all the time and it's- yeah. it is like, just sort of have a blast of it and people will hear it. You sure. don't have to keep it going. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, yeah. Sure. So that- that is, yeah, okay. pretty annoying. And um, uh, if heaven exists, Carl, when you get to the pearly gates, what would you like God to say to you as he welcomes you into heaven? What would you like God to say to you? Uh. Who asks these? What, what shows this? It's a programme where um, celebrities are interviewed by a guy, uh, an American interviewer, and he always asks these questions at the very end. What would I say to God? What would no, you say what, to God what, what, when, if, if you believed in heaven and if heaven exists, when you eventually go up to heaven and you're welcomed in through uh, the gates in by your God? Parker, what, in your stussy t shirt and yeah. your. What do you want God to say to you as he welcomes you in? Say, uh, you alright? Uh, <laughs> don't know, just be, just be friendly. <laughs> Section. Beautiful. Yeah, nice stuff. Um, it's a kind of Scottish supergroup. Lots of different artists from uh, Scottish Sebastian, bands. Ben Sebastian. Be Is it a singer from them? Uh, it may well be, yeah, on that particular track. There's different people. Mole Historical Society, Idlewild, Teenage Fan Club, different people from all those bands. Get together with a guy called uh, Gary Lightbody from Snow Patrol and he uh, writes And all that on XFM 104.9, Steve. Absolutely. Uh, let me just name that track. That track was Grand Parade from their current album, uh, Son of Evil Reindeer. Feeder. Come back around on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Uh, but who are you? <laughs> oh, thanks for asking, Rick. Steve Merchant. Uh, with us, Carl Pilberton. Well, Carl, um, now I know I shouldn't, uh, but I met Carl in the week again. I, I told you you shouldn't do I this. Know. You know, you should but then when the he weekend. starts, he starts saying things like, oh, is this loud with the people? I go, no, save it, save it. And we just sit there and I'm scared to talk in case he comes up. But, um, you did tell me a couple of little things, didn't you? True stories that, you know, that, that I mean, I enjoy. Could you tell, um, Steve about the doctor? Right. Oh God. 
Um. What's, what, what, is this something that happened to a friend of yours or is this, uh. No, no, I read about it. You read about it, okay. Um. There's this little lad, <laughs> right? Okay. First of all, it's, it's years ago, right? When right, they didn't have, times. they didn't have decent doctors in like every town and that. Yeah. And, uh, this little kid is dead ill, right? Yeah. And the local doctor. <laughs> Well, there's a phone call involved, so I don't yeah, really well, give the impression it. that it's like medieval, medieval times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but I, I didn't say that, I just said it's years ago. Go on so on. this kid's ill, right? Yeah. And he's, uh, he's lying in the bed and, uh, he's, mm. he's all like, all going funny colour and that. Yeah. And, uh, and his mum says, I'm gonna get the local doctor around. The local doctor comes round and, uh, he says, oh, so I don't know, don't know what's up with him. He said, um, to leave it with me. Leave it with me. He said, well, the doctor uh, said that. I'll have a, yeah, he said I'll, um, I'll, I'll phone up, uh, a top doctor. Okay. Who was in America or somewhere like that. Yeah. And, uh, so he goes to the phone in his office and he calls America and because it's years ago the phone line isn't that good, it's all crackly and that, right? Yeah. So he's talking to the doctor and he's saying, I've got this kid, he's a funny colour and, uh, you know, he's it, really weak and that. I don't yeah. know what's He's not him. giving him much to go on. <laughs> right? Sure. So, uh, so the American doctor, right? Yeah. He goes, yeah, what you wanna do? And it's all breaking up, right? Yeah. He goes, what you gotta do? You gotta, uh, it's all breaking up. You gotta give him some, uh, parrot's blood, right? Some parrot's blood? Well, that's what he thought he said, but the line was really bad. Yeah. He meant parents' blood, but he, he heard that he said parrots' blood. He oh said, right, I'll, I'll, I'll do that, leave I, it with I me. I can see where this is going. He goes, goes to, uh, you know, a pet shop. Okay. <laughs> he says, give us like half a dozen parrots. Sure. Text them round to the kid's house, text the blood from the parrots, puts it into the kid, kid's fine. <laughs> the kid's fine? <laughs> I've it, never- It worked. <laughs> such a load of shite. In my life, I've never such twaddle, such uh, just made up, enhanced, exaggerated. Bollocks. In my a load life. of old rubbish. I Carl. mean, when he told me this, he said, The doctor said, What do I do? And the doctor on the other end said, Give him some blood. And the doctor went, Where do I get blood from? <laughs> So hang on, wait, you, I just need to, I just need to clarify. From, from his, give him some parents' blood. Give him some parents' blood. Give him some parents, some, some parents' blood. Yeah. I, um, uh, <laughs> but hang on, I just need to know where you Sorry, read this. Sorry, Carl. Where was this, where did I you read this? I stitched you up. You know when he said, he said, so do you believe it? I went, tell it to Steve. He went, do you believe it? I went, tell it to Steve. Carl. But where did you read it? it? That, that was on the internet. What, where is illnesses. it on the internet? Where, I'm what, always what looking at stuff. I was looking at stuff this morning because of, um, because <laughs> of Yora Geller last night. <laughs> <laughs> eating, uh, eating all that funny food and that. And also, uh, they all got a bit scared last night, didn't they, with a, with a snake. Mm. I didn't see that. Is this, um, I'm a celebrity getting me out of yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. He got all worried about a snake getting on the, uh, sort of wandering about in between the sleeping bags and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, they were all scared and it is so Leave easy. it with me. Sorry, the doctor says, leave it with me. <laughs> leave um, it with me. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, leave it with me. Well, they were all scared because there's a snake and it's so easy to find stuff out. Before they, before they, where are they? Where is this jungle? <laughs> Australia, right. I think. Before they went, give it half an hour on the internet. <laughs> I found out with snakes, you don't need to worry, okay. right? Um, they're deaf, they haven't got any ears. Right. So as long as you, you're really quiet, Creep it'll, around, it'll yeah. probably leave you alone. Yep. And also they don't have eyelids. Uh huh. Um, so they were suggesting if one's coming towards you just, like, kick sand in its eyes. Because <laughs> yeah. it can't blink and it leaves it a bit, like, annoyed yeah. and it wanders off. But they didn't do any research before they went. Yeah. And that's- so, you're, you're, I think your knowledge would hold you in good stead. I don't think you need to know any more than you know. Um, well we're gonna come back to that because he also explained to me where, um, uh, a saying comes from that I want to, you to be part of. But, um, Oh, and also you should <laughs> mention as well, Carl, you've come up with a, a competition, is this right? Brilliant competition. You, have you, have he you thinks this, this up? He thinks oh. this can go to television. Is this an idea you've come up with? Yeah. Carl, I'm so looking forward to so, it. So, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, continuing, uh, our exposure of myths. And, and Legends of Rockful Tale, we expose that myth that some maybe older rockers have, have had it and they've got no- they, they were never any good and the yeah. kids today- Oh, I don't want to hear wanna, that. People like Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart's a great artist. This, uh- He's a slightly laughable man, but a great artist. Let's go back to when it was- when it was rocking. When he cut the mustard. Yeah. Rod Stewart, you wear it well. 
Great tunes. On XFM 104.9. Yeah. This doctor, I mean, we <laughs> should find out who he is, really, and if he's still practicing, because it, it worries me a little bit that he, you know, mm. he did that. Also, I mean, he thinks he's got away with it, but how could he be sure those parrots wouldn't talk? True. True. Do you know yeah, what I mean? There yeah, were six yeah. of them, they probably got together and they pro they probably put it on the internet. I mean, it, I, I feel that that story, Carl, <laughs> it, it asks more questions than it answers. <laughs> yeah! Really. Like most of your stories. Yeah, that's the problem. I always, feel them, I always feel like I need a little bit more information. Like, yeah. did the parrot boy continue to live? <laughs> yeah. You know, to a ripe old age, or did he yeah. die weeks later <laughs> after this charlatan doctor who was yeah. going around, you know, spurious and Did he break eye. his nose trying to crack a big nut? Mm. No, I, th I think he's, uh, he was all right. He, he lived to a. See, a I'd have shouted, if I was that doctor, I'd have shouted, Back down the phone. Are you sure you said parrot's blood? Yeah. You parrots, sure it was parrot's no, blood? Listen, I, I mean, I, you know, I'm not the best doctor in the world, but do you, did you say parrot's blood? <laughs> yeah, but what you're forgetting is you're going back to the time where, like, they used leeches to do, like, No, 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 we're going back to the late 70s <laughs> if there's a phone call to America direct. <laughs> Come on, Carl, they weren't calling America, like, in the medieval times or, or in the Victorian age. Come on, think about it, Carl. Yeah. You know, it's, this has got to be like the, the like, you know, 30s or 40s, <laughs> the earliest. <laughs> you know? <All> right. <laughs> I'm intrigued to know where this is. I think there's someone on the on the web who's just putting information on there to lead you astray. Yeah. Because you're the only person who finds this stuff. Other people are using this to write what thesis. What were you looking at that then? What were you, what were you looking always, I always look at weird stuff. What were you yeah. looking for? But what do you type in the search engine to find what parrot you, what, blood stories? What were you looking for? There was this woman with a weird head. <laughs> Why were you looking for that? What were you Just doing? Just because I'd heard about it. I'd heard, like, someone talking about it on another station. Right. right. About this woman with a, with a funny head. Right. <laughs> I love the fact- I love the fact you're intrigued with these things. You go in the basement of Waterstones or Dylan's or somewhere and there's these- there's these medical books that you're loving, mate. Yeah, but this is free on the internet, isn't it? <laughs> it's all there. Yeah. So what do you typed in? Weird head woman or- <laughs> <laughs> Lady with head. <laughs> yeah. Weird, weird, weird people or something I put in. Sure. Yeah. Did, you, did you come up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 7,000 uh, hits, Carl Pilkington. But it's all there, innit? It's interesting. The one that I was telling you before about, um, the what's the name? The, the lost letter. The lost letter? What's the lost, this? uh, lost postcard that's, uh, just turned up. Some yeah. woman uh, sent a postcard years and years ago to to a niece or something, right? Yeah. And, and her niece was like three years old sure. back then. And just now, like, I think like yesterday or the day before, it turned up, the postcard turned up 74 years late. 74 years late? It took 74 years. And that three-year-old girl's been living in the same house that whole time? <laughs> well, that, yeah. Sure. <laughs> There's no way about that. You see what I mean? But there's always a question you can ask <laughs> to just scratch the credibility of these stories. Yeah. There's always- it's like the apocryphal tale. Was this the is slugs? It, was this those slugs from last week? Yeah, well they're they holding back because they're slow because the postman slug is useless. His round takes him 74 years. Then he's got to go back to the beginning he's got 74 years and they can't carry the bag. But that's where they go- <laughs> that's why they turn to glue. That's why they turn to glue. Oh. It's pitiful. It is pitiful. So, so you don't believe that someone sent a postcard years ago <laughs> and somehow it's been stuck in the bottom of a post bag or something and it's only just- Stuck in the bottom of a post bag? Yeah. That means that there's like an, a 95 year old postman who's still yeah. wandering around. Did, 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 did you- did you have to pay like the- the difference and the charges? Uh. Cause presumably the, it, it was- It a, wouldn't have had Queen Elizabeth's uh, It was, it was a penny on, black, it? presumably, was it? Yeah. <laughs> what would be on the stamp? <laughs> it would have been invalid, surely. <laughs> I don't know. That's See, these are the what. questions no, you no, should no, ask no, no, yourself. Because no, no. if it's the postman's fault, the post the postman office can't turn. Who was out. He's at the time himself, wasn't he? He was dead. No, he is dead. Yeah, he'll yeah. be well and truly dead now. Yeah. But the fact is that the post office made an error. <laughs> right? They lost this letter. Sure. Mm. It's only just turned up. They can't turn around and say, "Sorry about this. I hope it isn't urgent." <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it's turned up 74 years late, and by the way, you owe us 25 pence. Yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't yeah. do that, would no, they? No, that's so, true, that's true. So that's true. You you're asking questions, though, you see? That's, that's true, you see? So, t um, you, you're interested in, like, where sayings come from as well, aren't you? Because yeah. you, you told me one of the week, what, that, I don't know if Steve's aware of that. Do you want to tell Steve this one? What's this a saying? Can we do this quiz? D Let's do, do this we'll first. We'll do the quiz later. I know you're excited about the quiz. Let's do that later, but what's this saying? Right. Uh, what is the saying? Chucking a baby out with the bathwater? Yeah. 
Have you, know you heard that? that? Have you heard that phrase? Uh, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, wh wh how would you use that? Well, um, how would I use that? Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I suppose if you've, maybe you've been discussing something, you've come up with some plans, but you're slightly worried and, um, you know, you might abandon the whole plan, whereas there might be some ideas in there which are still worth retaining. Exactly. So you don't want to ba throw the baby out with the, the bathwater. Bath there might right. be something you can just change yeah. and you don't want to, yeah. yeah. A similar, you know, there might be a few ideas you can salvage from an, an otherwise worthless one. Well, the saying, right, comes from, like, years ago again. Mm -hmm. And, um... Pre or post phone. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Ages and ages ago when, like, you know, the bloke worked in the house, you know, he was, like, the coal man, and then you had, like... <laughs> no way, it's important. Then, then, like, the mum is, like, uh, you know, she stays at home making the dinner, looking after the kids. Yep. Mm. And, uh, and you've got, like, the little kid who's just growing up, just messing about and stuff. So, what happens is, back then they didn't have, like, fresh flowing warm water every day. Mm. So all they could do, they could only afford to have, like, um... One one full big bath of fresh water, so they'd fill up the bath, right? And then the dad would come home and he'd say, "Oh, I've had a right, you know, I had a tough day at work and that down the pit." And uh, his wife would say, "It's all right, I'm putting the dinner on. You go and have a nice warm bath." So because yeah. he because he gets to bath first because he, he gets to bath first because he's the grafter and he's right? covered in coal. He's covered yeah. in coal, so the water's like minging by the time he's finished. Yeah, right. And then the wife says, "Oh, after all my uh, cleaning the house and doing the cooking, I'm a bit sweating out." She's covered in dust and yeah. grime. She has I'll, the next I'll, one. I'll have a bath, right? Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the line, there's a little baby. Yeah, yeah. It's been playing out all day. Also got like little uh, little grubby knees and stuff. Needs <coughs> to have a bath. Yeah, it goes in the bath. Right, but because the water is so dirty, sure, they go and empty the water out of the window. Can't <laughs> see the baby in it. <laughs> Chucking the baby out with the bath water. That's how. It, that's where it comes from. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say, Steve. Because <laughs> I heard this. I just. I'm just. I'm just. Uh, what do you think, Steve? Steve. So. <laughs> so, firstly, that 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 sort of. I mean. Oh. That doesn't explain where do you why- you start? Well, You're that... struggling, aren't you? You're struggling where to start. Well, first, I can't see how we've now applied this to, I've you know, been the thinking example this, I've, I've been thinking this for days, Steve, waiting for you to I hear mean, this one. these coal mining parents yeah. did be negligent. Yeah. I, I They've left their baby in the bath, unattended. It, that's the way round to do it. The one covered in coal- Yeah. Has you go bath. first. Sure. You go first. Don't wash the baby and then get in that. Yeah. You, you, one covered in coal goes first, yeah. that's the best idea. Yeah. Second most dirty one goes second, yeah. and then the clean little baby, yeah. I think, I think we should do him last, cause yeah. he's, he's done nothing well, towards no, this family. But, but more than that, Rick, leave him to his own devices. Yeah. Jack, I'm just gonna throw the water out. Yeah. In the bath. Don't check have you, first. Have you checked that the baby's done that? No, I'm not Don't even gonna bother. waste my time You'd checking. See it. You'd see it. I'd be able to see You'd a baby. You'd see a baby if in a there. If a baby was in here, yeah. I'd be able to see it. I'm yeah. just gonna throw it out. Yeah, I'm not even gonna look, to be honest, Jack. Not We've all had our bath. Look. Yeah. If the baby's in there, yeah. then it should be, be making careful, itself. Be Jack. We have lost three children this way. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Where did you read that? <laughs> New single from Supergrass. Grace on XFM 104.9. Coming up in the next hour, Carl Pilkington's new game show. He's very excited about I'm this. I'm excited. I'm excited. We don't I know anything wait. about it, but, but it's going to be He's told me it's going to be a winner. He's, you know, he said it's going to go to television. Sure. Uh, I'd need some adverts, though. Oh, I'd love to hear some adverts. Can we have just two or three minutes of adverts, please? <laughs> please. Vines there, Steve. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl's getting very excited, as we all are, about his new... Should we... Should we let him do a little taster for us. Well, I'm very excited about it. I mean, so, I, well, so the gist of it, what is it? What is it exactly? Right. Is it a game show or is it a competition? It's just, um, just thought it's something that, you know, you can play and also people at home, uh, can take part in it. Now, would they phone in about this or they can just play at home while they're listening? They can just play at home. Okay. Um. You mean we haven't got any prizes? No, there isn't. No, I, I think we, we could, we could get him to phone in, maybe. Well, I don't know. Let's hear the game idea yeah. first. Yeah. Right, it's, it's music related. Okay, good. And, um, what I do is, I sort of, uh, tell a little story. Okay. And that story makes up a song title. Alright. Well, it right. sounds ambitious. So, um... Is it a cryptic clue? Uh, could be. <laughs> uh, say, say like this, right? <laughs> oh, dearie me. <laughs> oh, dearie me. <laughs> say like this. Right. This, this woman, right, she's pregnant. You know the answer to this one, so don't be saying anything. This okay. is just aimed at Steve. Okay. Right. This woman has a baby. Yeah. She's pregnant, has a baby. And the doctor's there in the, uh, in the hospital going, oh yeah, you've got a, got a lovely little baby oh, here. Oh, you told me that this is... 
Oh, this guy. Got a lovely little baby. Oh, um, it's just coming out now. You'll be able to see it in a minute. <laughs> and, uh, it's like covered in gunk and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, he's going, yeah, it's nearly here. It's coming out. I see, see it's a little head and that. And, um, he gets hold of it and it's full of all this gunk. Right? The baby's full of gunk. Yeah, like the Covered hour. in gunk or full of gunk? Covered in it. Right. And he goes, uh, here you go. Get hold of your baby. And he drops it. Right. What's, what song's that? There's so much irrelevance there, Steve. I can't tell you. It's not a cryptic clue. It's not a cryptic clue. Cause only, uh, I mean, the gist of it is that, relevant. That isn't the best one. That's just- Right. I mean, there is just, there's, there's things there that you were pro pro dwelling on and thinking of puns. Don't. Just go for gut instinct. What was it? What was that? Right, let me just, I just need to try and get the basics of this. There's a woman, she's pregnant, she has a baby. Yeah. The baby's covered in gunk. Yeah. Right. And because of the gunk, the doctor drops the baby. Yeah. yeah. And that's all I need to know. Yeah, that is all you need to know. Yeah, the um, pregnancy is largely irrelevant. <laughs> okay, what it's, are the what are the, the key birth, elements? It's the birth and the doctor dropping it that the irrelevant. The, the, the irrelevant birth thing. and the dropping of the baby. Yeah. Uh, I've n I've absolutely no idea. I can't okay, even begin think, to guess. Think about what's happened there. Oh, Carl, She's had a baby. The doctor's. Try to deliver it. He's saying it's a nice little baby you've got here. This is all irrelevant. <laughs> this is all irrelevant. Right, let me tell you this. So, so, so just to be fair to Steve, so he gets, he can get into your mind, right? This is not a traditional cryptic clue, <laughs> okay. logical problem or whatever. This is, this is Carl, what song am I thinking of, right? <laughs> that is Underworld, Born Slippy. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, actually, that makes textbook sense. Yeah. No, that does yeah. actually- No, do you I'm like sorry. The, do you like all the story about the- 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 <laughs> goes, oh, you can see it in them and they're always just covered in gunk. Yeah. No, I agree there is some extraneous detail, yeah, but okay. I have to say- Yeah. That- Born was good, cause it was- th that's what- that's the look of it, was yeah. Born was good, yeah. And okay. Born Slippy- I- uh, no, I'm actually, I was quite impressed by that, Carl. I have to say, no, to be fair to you, I'm not just patronising you. Oh, well, I've got, oh, um, wow. I actually think that was really good, and I, I, I disrespect Ricky Gervais for slamming okay, that off, because okay. I actually think that that was quite well, good. Well, let's go ahead with it, then. I, I, <laughs> on your I idea. feel we could, we could maybe open this up to, uh, to email correspondence, or, Okay, uh, or let's go for it, then. Okay, this is Carl Pilkington's <laughs> new game show idea. It's what, it's, it's, uh, It's just wants the song. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, <laughs> Carl Pilkington presents What's the Song? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what's right, the song? Well, let's, I'll tell you what, let's play a record. Let's, let's come well, back after Give that. out the number ready for him. Well, uh, you should make a note of this. Uh, you can email us. The email's up and running. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Uh, what's the phone number, Carl? Have you got it's 08700 800 1234. Okay. 08700 800 one, two, three, four. Make a note of that and we'll, uh, we'll have a game of, uh, what song is Carl thinking of after this next track? What do you want to play? What have um, you got lined up there? Oh, oh, continuing, uh, again, I've got, uh, old fogies who were good once and I Absolutely. won't hear a thing said against the new kids <laughs> yeah. out there. It's not all new metal, is it? True enough. This is, uh, Cat Stevens, uh, a, a little known album, Mona Bone Jack On, and this one's called Trouble. It's a lovely mm. song. Cat Stevens, Trouble, from Mona Bone Jack On. Uh, on XFM 104.9, playing some new songs, playing some old songs. True enough, true enough. Playing some old games, some chit chat, some tears, some laughter, and true. Carl Pilkington with his brand new show, What's <laughs> the Song? What song am I thinking now, of? Now, I, I'm, I, I mean, you're nervous about this, aren't you, Rick? I am. You're worried. Well, because I've heard some of these clues before. I and they're, they're ramblings, they're sometimes they're close to ramblings <laughs> of a fool. <laughs> <laughs> right? And it really is like those, what am I thinking? Yeah. Um. I don't know though, I actually was genuinely impressed by Born Slippy. I, I, I have to give him the benefit That's of one of the better ones. Cause I, I, cause that know. was short, sweet, and it worked. <laughs> Some of these that you say they're not gonna be quite as pissy. Some of them are like Emily Bronte novels. <laughs> um, now listen. We're just gonna go for it then. You do it and we'll just get people to call up. Cause I, I want, I wanna see the general public's confusion Absolutely. trying to work out a well, why don't we, uh, why don't we, why don't you give us your, your next clue oh. and then we'll play a track and then we'll, we'll hopefully have people on the line after the track right. to try and answer it and you can recap briefly. So give us your clue now for, uh, what song am I thinking of? Right. This one, um, it's about a woman and, um, she's just normal, nothing wrong with her. <laughs> or, or so she thinks, right? <laughs> <laughs> but there's the twist. <laughs> Is this like the tales of the unexpected? And she's got like, you know, she's got a mates and she's having a normal life, having a good time and that. And then this thing happens, right? And uh, <laughs> she starts to stink <laughs> and she can't have a bath, right? <laughs> and she really wants to have a bath. She's dead sweaty and stuff. She's trying to, she's going about her daily stuff. She can do everything else normal. She can eat, she can talk, everything. But for some reason, 
<laughs> she can't have a bath. Is there a coal mining husband in the bath? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is this born stinky? <laughs> She can't have a bath. So a woman can't have a bath. Yeah. Is or that the rest it? Of her or life? a shower. She can't. <laughs> okay, and leave it there, Rick. Don't try and guess. It's not okay. for us to guess. Um, the general public can phone up and ask questions. So I just just I'm go not for sure it. I think they can. Can they? I don't. Think I think so. Otherwise, we don't want just people just um, phoning well, up let's and getting well, it. What about this? Why don't they can ask one question? Yeah. They can ask one question of Carl. Then they have to make a guess. Okay. Oh eight seven hundred. 800 one, two, Have we got three, someone four. on the line now? Well, we'll just go, no, let's do it. Let's, let's go, go for one. Let's go for one. This is edge, edgy radio. This is letting Carl stuff. Right. live. Hello. Go on. Hello, XFM. Hello. I'm ringing about, um, what's the song? Absolutely. What do you think? Well, I'm going for Dirty Diana. Dirty Diana. See, that works. That's a great guess. It does, yeah, but it doesn't work because why can't she have a bath? <laughs> okay, so well, the answer is in there. That's what I was going to ask you. Well, well that's your that, one question. That'd be the answer. That would be the answer, I'm afraid. What was your name? Shelley. Shelley, thanks very much. Shelley, I should, I should tell you that, you know, that you should never take this personally because no one can really get into the mind of Carl, <laughs> so don't, don't, you know, beat yourself up about this. I don't expect anyone to get these clues. No. So, um, so well done. That a is guess. a fine guess. A Thank, you. Guess. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Anyone else there? That's, that's, uh, hello, XFM. Who's that on the line? Um, it's Chris. Hello, Chris. Uh, a question for Carl? Um, Before you I give don't us have, a guess? Like, uh, I haven't thought of a really good question or anything yet. You just want to go for the guess? Well, no, what I thought was, um, I'm sure Simon Mayo used to do this when he did the breakfast show <laughs> on Radio 1 years ago. No, he didn't. <laughs> so you've just you pinched this idea, idea Carl. If you're going to gonna rip school. someone off, Carl, do not rip off Simon Mayo. I haven't ripped this off. I thought this was a new idea. I was going to do it with sound effects instead, but that's Yeah, a, that's he used to do that and he used to get his team to play other characters. And you the idiot. Well, no, hang on. Not you, not you, Chris. I'm, yeah. I'm saying you idiot to Carl. Yeah, but nothing's new anyway, is it? So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting annoyed about it. <laughs> what do you think the answer is? <laughs> um, is it Cornflake Girl by Tori Amos? Good answer. She couldn't have a bath because she'd go all she floppy, floppy and, and then go down the plate. <laughs> Good answer. She'd so, go all soggy. Yeah. So it's not, is it Cornflake Girl? No, it's not, but that's, that's a uh, great answer. It could have been. <laughs> 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 okay. You're already seeing the error of this, aren't you? I think this like, is great radio. I'm I know. really hooked on this. I'm but genuinely this, excited. This now. is really like that. Um, uh, those uh, so-called lateral thinkers. A man got into a field and dies. Why? <laughs> yeah. Um, he ran out of air. No, <laughs> yeah. not the one I'm thinking he was of. Shot. Well, no. Uh, yeah. That was God. a good answer. Well, but like Simon Mayo, like sue you or something for doing it. Will you time? stop? Don't mention that. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Listen, I think if you're going to steal ideas from someone, it should be a brain box like Mayo. <laughs> I mean, he's the man yeah, The only for. example of one I can ever remember here on his show, because I was quite young then, was, um, some people were pretending to, like, tap someone's phone or something, and then they got caught, and the answer was just bugging by whistle, because they were... Genius. Uh, yeah. That was absolute genius. That's yeah. absolute genius. See, so Carl, that's Carl's the sort of standard you've got to come up against. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much, Chris. No the phone problem. lines are hot. Oh, hello, XFM. <laughs> Hi, is it Candy Perfume Girl? Is it what? Candy Perfume Girl. Candy Perfume Girl? Yeah. Ca candy Perfume Girl. Is it- well, who's that by? Madonna. No, it's- That sounds like an obscure album track. No, it's not it's just one of their- one of her songs. Just oh, think about it? it. She- she stinks and everything. She's a normal life. She's- I didn't say she was a sweet or anything. Um, <laughs> but she, for some reason she can't have a bath or is a shower. Is this a big song, just to give him a clue? Is it's this a- it's a bigger song than, uh, Candy Sweet Girl. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed for your guess. It clearly is <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Sorry. Okay, one, one more, then we go yeah. to a record. Come right. on. Okay. Go on. Hello, XFM. <laughs> Carl. Yeah. Is it high and dry by Radiohead? High and dry. High and dry. Now that's great. She smells, which is another word for high. She's dry because she doesn't have a shower. Carl, if it isn't that, <laughs> yours will never be as good as that. He's the winner. <laughs> Whatever you're thinking of, that clue is brilliant. What's your name, mate? It's Richie. Richard. Richard, uh, uh, I mean, you can't beat that. That's a bit too lateral. Don't be stupid. <laughs> it's perfect. He's made yours into a clever clue. He's made high. She smells dry. She never gets in the bath or shower. It's mm. not that, is it, Carl? No, it's you not. don't even get that, do you? Not have really. You ever, <laughs> have you ever heard of the word high being used to mean sort of smelly? No, no, no. Oh, what? Well, that was where you went wrong, there, mate. <laughs> Richard, um, well, I'm declaring you the winner, even though that isn't the answer. I don't think Thank we you. should give up this. Can we just uh, can, let's play a song and, let's play and a song. Give, it, give it one more chance? Because yeah. if people think about it, it is really easy. So, I'm not going to find out the answer though, because I've got to go out. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll do it very quickly. Stay in for ten minutes. We're just going to play a new uh, okay. Coldplay track. Aren't okay, we? let's play Coldplay and then Cheers. we'll come back with this. Coldplay, one I love. That's for um, Nick, Neil, Olivia. 
in uh, Tower Bridge. Absolutely. And also Nikki from Bromley who emailed in. She's enjoying the show and she, uh, she wanted a bit of Coldplay. That's the B-side of the current single. This is a great show, isn't it? We've got great music. We've got music. laughs, tears. We've got requests. We've got Simon Mayo games. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. a bit, it's just, it's just like Radio 1 for <laughs> exactly. less people. <laughs> exactly. Radio 1 for less people. Yeah. <laughs> this is great, isn't it? Um, so, so, go on, so listen, Kai, you were so excited about this game, weren't you, earlier? You, ca you came in with a but hop, skip, and a leap in your, in your step. Although, I must say, the phones are going mental. We're gonna have to take this some more calls. No, people I mean, call. high and dry is great. I mean, it works. <laughs> That's it. Can we have a very quick, Just uh, a recap in case someone's yeah. just yeah. quick. Can recap. you make it, can you make it so high and dry doesn't work now? <laughs> Give us a bit of information that makes it different to high and dry, or can't So for those that just that? tuned in, Carl describes, in a roundabout way, a story which somehow is representative of a song. Is a that song right? title? A song title. Yeah. Okay. So um, this woman, she's 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 all right. You know, she has a normal life. <laughs> Pretty much. Kind of. Yep. Um, there's probably a few things actually that she can't do thinking about it. <laughs> 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 but the main problem would be having a, <laughs> having a wash or having a bath or having a shower. Yeah. Maybe going for a swim thinking about it. <laughs> Right. Oh, that's I think water is the clue, isn't it? That's the clue. <laughs> <laughs> right, so uh, who's that on the line? Hi there, it's Mark. Hello, Mark. Hi, Mark. Right, what do you think? It smells like Teen Spirit, Nirvana. No, it's not. That's a great guess. Smells like Teen Spirit again. It's also no. brilliant. Thank you, Mark. Well no, done. No, it's not that. All right. Hello, XFM. Oh, that's that's oh. that's a dodgy mobile. Oh, that's a bit of a clue. A dodgy Hello, mobile. XFM. Oh, they've just given up. They, they've all been going for Smells Like Teen Spirit. Yeah. They just hung up. Hello, XFM. Uh, hi. Is it um, She's Electric? Excellent. She's electric, it makes sense. That's uh, fantastic. Oh, Carl. she's electric. Why does she smell? Because she doesn't have a bath on that. Because she can't have a bath or a shower. What's what's your name? Neil. Neil so got does it. that so oh, Neil got God. it. So did you get it straight away? Uh no, only uh during the song. A process of elimination from all the other wrong answers. Yeah, basically. So she's electric. Rick, I have to say, you, you're holding your head in hand, in oh. your hands, and it looks like you want to shoot off. But I have to say, I thought that was quite good. I genuinely thought that was quite good. But it's not a cryptic clue, is it? Because it's not. She smells. There's a few things you can't do. She's electric. Yeah, but do you understand what what I'm getting at? <laughs> She's electric. <laughs> I always understand what you're getting at, Carl. That's never been a problem in the you know the years I've known you. Neil got it. Yeah. She's I electric. have to say, Rick, I think you're down on this idea. I could definitely see that. ITV1, replacing Get I'm um, a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Carl Pilkington hosting. It's Simon Mayo yeah. on the phone. <laughs> exactly. To the lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, Neil, there's no prizes or anything, but well done. Okay. Well done, that was well worth it. Right. Well, you go away with the award in the knowledge that you've beaten Carl. Yeah. You can uh, secure the knowledge that you thought <laughs> how Carl does. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well done, Neil. Okay. I have to say, I, I think you're being harsh on him. I think that's, okay. a, that's a great game. Alright, let's do it again next week then. I thought that was a great game. Yeah. Brilliant. Well play, done, record. Record. Well play record. Play record. Uh, what do you want to play? Oh, you know, I tell you, uh, we've been playing some oldies, Rick, and I've enjoyed them all, but I think I've been in love with this song for many, many years, and when I saw it, reminded of it, in Con Air, the film Con Air, remember they stick it on in Con Air, and it's just dynamite. It's Leonard Skinner. I, I love this. Sweet Home Alabama oh, player. Oh, turn this up. Uh, What's this one? Turn it up. Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs> Leonard Skinner. Yeah. Strange and beautiful. Aqualung. Or as Carl says, Aqualung. On XFM 104.9. Well, it seems that Carl's clue, um, you know, did go down quite well. Some other people got it. Uh, the game show as a whole has been well received. Well, I have to say, the, uh, the email, you know, we've had, we've had loads of emails, Rick. Yeah. You know, I mean, we've had, uh, let me just count two. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and, uh, one of them was aimed at, uh, Simon Mayo. <laughs> yeah, came to us by mistake. Uh, they yeah, thought they were listening to Mayo. Yeah. And the yeah. other is, uh, saying Carl, they love the game show. Radio One with less people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. And, uh, so despite the fact it was a stolen idea, I think we yeah. can do it again next week. Just and like next week, let's, let's rustle up some prizes as well. You're just like your little magpie, aren't you? Thieving shiny <laughs> ideas. <laughs> from Mayo's nest. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, uh, so anyway. We played Lyndon Skinner just before the ads, and I was just looking at the compilation it comes from. It's a great compilation. We took this from, uh, Driving Rock. Yeah. Uh, which I imagine- This is not available in the shops. <laughs> exactly. Um, I imagine it's come straight from the personal collection of, uh, maybe Tarrant or, uh, Foxy. Or Canfield. But there's some great names on here that I'd like to see. Maybe we could play them. He's a little Vance, isn't he? He's a tiny Vance. <laughs> exactly. so, you know, you're a little Mayo. Canfield's a little Vance. 
I mean, these are some names. She just Go don't- on. I haven't heard them for a long time. Go I'd on. love to hear them again. Go Alana on. Miles. Mm. Black Velvet. No, rubbish. Rhea. You don't hear Rhea enough. Chris, Chris Rhea. Rhea. Yeah. Well, what one? Spin Doctors. Oh, God. Lest we forget the Spin Doctors. God. Crash Test Dummies. Mm. What happened mm. to them? Don't know. Uh, who else we got on here? Richard Marks. Yeah. Mr. Big. I didn't- he's guilty in that song when he goes, I swear I did, and all that, and the police came around, well there's no smoke without fire, I reckon he did it. To be honest. <laughs> I yeah. reckon he- I reckon he murdered her. You're absolutely right. Go on. Legs, ZZ Top. <laughs> She knows how to use them. <laughs> she does she indeed. knows how to- it's what it is, it's electrical impulse from the brain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, what, how is she using them? What's she's she just, she's just, um, it's, you know- The brothers do beer on her as well. Oh, isn't that- nothing wrong with them? No, absolutely not. Starship. Yeah. And, uh, Toto as well. Oh, what I forgot. Really it's not actually. What is it? Can you name another Toto track? Hold the line. It's Hold the Line. Let's Sorry. rock! Put that <laughs> on! <laughs> it's a good, it's a good stuff. down! Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Is it it's good stuff? When session musicians get together. <laughs> oh, we Can got we hear a quick little blast? Oh, it should be. On. Is that is that? This oh, still play in a little bit. Hold the line. It's that great. Should be, uh, that should be track. Uh, oh, let me see. No. That's probably track ten. I hope this doesn't annoy too many people. <laughs> like we're worried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. We like to give our radio slick. <laughs> is this um, it? This is like it. Yeah. Wake up a minute. We yeah. playing, uh, that was dynamite. That was great. We'll have some. I think we should have like a classic rock anthem every week. I'd, oh, do you not know think? I'd, I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to. Bit of rainbow maybe next week. Oh, Who knows? Man alive! Phone in if you want to hear some classic rock. <laughs> classic rock, indeed. Oh, we ripped off Mayo. Let's do dance. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's just uh, steal ideas from other better DJs. Okay. Um. Oh, what? What? Can we we have? There's some great ideas out there. I'm sure. I, I mean, if you if you want to like any fix, it's done. <laughs> if you may want to eat a yeah. packed lunch on a roller coaster. On a roller coaster, yeah, with some or, Boy Scouts uh, or or. or Dance with Banana Rama. Yeah. Then, then yeah. we're, we're, yeah. we're yeah. Or Five Star. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love the fact Five Star <laughs> reform. There's three of them. <laughs> Have you heard about this? <laughs> no. Oh. White Stripes on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, Hello. and Carl Pilkington. Well, I had a good time. I've enjoyed it, yeah, it's been nice. It's some, been fun. Some good tracks, some, some laughs, a new, uh, competition by yep. Simon Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> That was, uh, <laughs> Absolutely. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. Carl, Carl, have you heard, um, the big news? That, uh, Ricky Gervais is, uh, looking to take up, um, well, you explain it, Gervais, because oh, I'm not- Oh, it's not big not, news. No, I, What are you talking- what do you mean? You, 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 you want- you're taking up boxing, is this right? N no. What is uh, the story? You want to- right. you're fighting for money? No! What, <laughs> just- oh, yeah, bare knuckle fighting. No, come on, what is it? No, all, all it is, I've been watching this, um, show, on cable called Born to Fight, and it's sort of, sort of right. late. It's a late one. <laughs> we flick around, and, and I think it's uh, on the After Roadies, which is like. Roadies? A, yeah, it's a bloke, one bloke with a camera to goes on tour with different people. Like He went on with Motorhead, he went on with, uh, with a meatloaf um, uh, uh, tribute act, he went on with Coldplay, was in one of them. It's just that, and it's the is sort this of this when, like, all the other channels have been switched off. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah exactly, yeah. And there's one uh, called Born to Fight, and uh, they just uh, take a different story. It might be like, an amateur fight, or it might be um, an unlicensed fight, not illegal, yeah. um, or it might be white collar, which I'm thinking of doing. What's what's white collar? White collar is just people who want to fight, and uh, it's organised. Is it like a club? Yes, yeah, but it's charity. It, it's safe. It's, it's it's a charity do you know, having like, big events, and it's just two people that you know aren't boxers, aren't amateur boxers, and they get in the ring and they do three three um, two minute rounds, and they just lay into each other. They've got head guards on. And uh, Rick, I don't mean to alarm you, but um, you know we work together obviously, and, and we make the office and stuff. Your face is my fortune. <laughs> I can't that, have that it. That must being, be a bit of a worry for you. It is. I'm not going to say. Well, your heart as well is also a concern. Yeah. You know, and you're eating and stuff. But so when I said well, I was, no, was, was going to get fit, you were going, no, Gervais, you're only funny because you're fat. No, I agree. This is true. But I'm saying there's a there's a difference between being fit. Yeah. And um, and I would say, Getting for instance, don't eat. In. Well, don't eat. Um, don't eat. Kind of, you know, uh, cheese and bacon. You know, <laughs> on their own <laughs> all day, all day, all right. for breakfast. So what I'm saying is, there's yeah. a difference between you know exercising and then having your face beaten in. And what I'm saying is that you, it, I just don't think it's a good idea. But I might win. No, the pro- well, I don't- you, that's- that's- that's irrelevant. You're still gonna get- take a couple of blows to the face. And the point is this, Rick, you're not gonna win. Why? Because- no, because you are delusional. You think that you are probably the world's greatest boxer. <laughs> you are, I know- ever since I've known you, you seem to think that this is the case, because you've watched all the Rocky films. <laughs> And you think that's fair enough? That seems straightforward enough. <laughs> but look at your physique. You know, yeah, you've got some upper body strength, but yeah. you know, you've also got some upper, some <laughs> lower belly strength as well. I noticed. 
And, um, <laughs> and my concern is you're going to go in there and okay. you're not only going to be a broken man when you realise that you're just not as handy in the ring as you thought you were, yeah. but also you're going to you're going to incur some interest. This you is fighting masks? talk. This is fighting talk. The first man in the fight like, club is don't this, talk about fight club. This reminds me I want to do it more now, just because of you. It was the same when Adrian didn't agree that Rocky could beat right. Clubber yeah. Lang. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she, she made that mistake, then she made the same mistake at with, what with age, Drago. Rick? At what age? She turns up at the end to take a bit of the credit, didn't she? When you were this kind of thin, nimble youth in yeah. your makeup and your eyeliner and all the rest of yeah. it, you, I bet you had no idea, you had no thoughts about boxing. It never came into your mind, did it? So at what age did you suddenly think, wait a minute, I've taken the wrong path in life. I could have been the world <laughs> I heavyweight. Don't, I don't think I could. When are you, when have you suddenly decided that you can, you, you can suddenly be a bit street tough? I don't understand why this has suddenly come about in Well, I'm not in putting out life. a shout, am I, to fight people? It's not, I'm not, it's not like Noel but Gallagher you've got to find and Robbie Williams. But you've got to find someone else, presumably, to fight with. Yeah, but it'd probably be a businessman who wants a fight. Right. Do you know there's something really weird about that? Don't you think that sound- have you- just listen to yourself, I want to fight another bi- I want to fight a businessman. <laughs> no, Please may I fight a businessman. I don't want to fight a businessman! <laughs> you just, you just I wa- said! I want to fight someone who wants to fight- you know, I mean, it's not- I want to fight them though! <laughs> I want to fight somebody! <laughs> Since you were like, it sounds a bit mad, Bring yeah. them on, I want to fight people! No, but it's more the- it's more the effort and the training and the commitment to it, like climbing a mountain. I mean, I think climbing a mountain and doing a marathon is ridiculously macho. It's not the fact that you can no, do it No, that's not go, macho, compared with macho, isn't it? Climbing, there's no reason to climb a mountain, there's no reason to do a marathon. If you can run a mile, that's all you need. The fact that you train is whether you can do it yourself and achieve something. And this is more <coughs> like the training and the learning uh, skill and then seeing if it works. I, I don't want to get in there to- But I aren't you concerned about you might get beaten? Or you might get beaten up, I should say. No! What's the worst that can happen? Uh, it was You'll a, get black eyes, bruises and you- we bruises- bruises- <laughs> Jamie, let me just remind you of the what? time we were working in your flat, <laughs> right? <laughs> and you immediately- <laughs> Right, I think, I don't know to this day what happened, but you started choking, you clasped your chest, you were breathing, wheezing, right, I leapt over to you, I remember screaming, I don't know the Heimlich manoeuvre, yeah. if you've swallowed something I can't help, yeah. you gained your breath, you gained your composure, yeah, I said, yeah. what happened, did you eat something, did you go down the wrong way, you said, no, I swallowed some dust. I swallowed some dust. You breathed some dust in that was in the air, there was some dust in the air, you breathed that in, it knocked you out for two days. Rick, you're in bed for two yeah. days. I love that. I don't I, think you- I don't I think you're the man for the job. And that's some dust. What do you think this businessman's gonna do? Exactly. He'll be permanent. Hide your appointment. Yeah. He'll hurt your appointment. You found a lump, didn't you, on your <laughs> testicle once? We sat <laughs> in a uh, doctor's waiting room, I remember, for about 45 minutes. You got- minutes. I haven't checked out. It was fine. I think I went twice, didn't my I? Point, yeah, I point. said to the doctor at one point, I said, did you check round the back? Yeah. I was thinking he hadn't checked it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dear. My, just because I hadn't found anything. My point is this. Oh. You're something of hypochondriac. You know <laughs> you're something of hypochondriac. <laughs> you know that already. So. Uh, why do you think this is going to be any different? Wow. If you take a- when you take the first blow to the head, you take the punch, you'll immediately think that you've got some kind of, you know, brain disorder. No, I've always- and you'll be I've always wanted to do it, but I just thought- I just- talent. I wanted to make sure, I wanted to know that I definitely lost my looks. Right. And, um, I've seen some of the publicity shots, I've got mirrors and mouths, so now- because I've definitely lost my looks now, I've got nothing to lose. Yeah. So I want, you know, maybe a younger, more handsome man, I want to teach him a <laughs> lesson. <laughs> Let me just- I'll end with this. <laughs> right. For people who listen to this show regularly, <laughs> yeah. you already sound like you're punch drunk. <laughs> All right, and that's just your natural way of talking. Please, let's not do the real thing. <laughs> oh, play a record. Oh, I mean, is it going to be televised? Uh, it, well, we could get it on DVD, maybe release All right, it. Now I'm interested. Okay, <laughs> is there money to be made? Yeah, lots of All money. Right, well, maybe we should talk about it. Okay. Pipes. On XFM 104.9. You join us now live at, uh, Shippy Old People's Home, <laughs> where, uh, TV star Ricky Gervais <laughs> is taking on his first, uh, non-professional bout. Uh, um, Ricky, who are you fighting this evening? Uh, a bloke called Pete Smedley. <laughs> okay, Pete Smedley. How old is Pete? He's 72. <laughs> 72 years yeah, old. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you're very excited about the fight, I know. Yeah, he's, yeah, uh, yeah, Pete's yeah. just recovered from a massive coronary, hasn't he? Well, I don't want to get into that. He, he's deemed himself fit, and, okay. uh, that's, that's good enough for me. <laughs> If he, if he wants to fight. Listen, right, someone just called up and said, uh, they'll fight me. He's sounded this is such pretty, a bad idea. pretty tasty. I said, how, how tall are you? He said, five foot eleven. I said, what do you weigh? He said, thirteen stone. I said, how old are you? Twenty-seven. Mm. I explained to him I'm looking for someone a lot older and smaller. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A lot, lot older and smaller than Donna that. Donna Stell. <laughs>
<laughs> if Don and Stel yeah. from, uh, what's it? <laughs> it ain't I'm going to show you now, Steve. Listen, no, yeah. it's just a sport. You know, mm. they go, oh, don't go into badminton, a shuttlecock can hurt your eye. <laughs> it's just a sport. Okay, fair enough. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll I'm sure we'll resume this conversation next week. Yeah. When, of course, we'll also be playing more of uh, Carl's new brilliant game with prizes, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Simon Mayo's What <laughs> Is Carl Thinking? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I I'll leave you with a song for, uh, the ladies, Rick, if I may. Yeah. Uh, this is by, uh, my friend, uh, Harry, you may know, he sends me, tr uh, tracks every so often that I yeah. should listen to, and uh, this is a particular favourite of mine. Pretty please, and it's by Kevin Tahista's Red Terror, I don't know if I've pronounced that right. <laughs> but enjoy that, and we'll, uh, see you next week. Let's get ready to rumble, then. <laughs> Coldplay, and In My Place, on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me, Steve Merchant. Hello, Hello there, there. Hello. Good Good to Carl Pilgrim's in there, pressing the buttons. Great to be here. Yeah. How long can you maintain it? I'm okay, bored already. Yeah, already bored of doing bored that. Bored already. Every week you start it the same way. Yeah. That was not bad though, you actually grammatically made sense. Which is really? uh, impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks so very much. A rare treat indeed from yeah. the base. Um, some of the, uh, listeners have already worked out, uh, got nothing to say at all. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Haven't prepared again. No. We were, we, we did come in half hour early to repair, but instead me and Carl were playing, you had to flick the football into the bin, right. we had five goes each, or the world was gonna end. Okay. And that, that took up- That took up a good twenty-five minutes. Yeah. I liked it when we came back, and then we started just trying to beat each other in the corridor, and I beat him, I scored a goal, he, he was gutted cause he thought he, he fancied himself a football, and I beat him. Um, mm. and I was knackered and sweating. Yeah. Um, and uh, as I walked back to you about five minutes ago, you were looking through the records, you went, and this was lovely, you went, <sighs> Well, we've done the preparation then. Uh, yeah. Like a sarcastic teacher. Yeah. Like a teenager, like an annoyed <laughs> teenager. <laughs> yeah. Whose parents have embarrassed him once again. <laughs> and you beat Carl, did you? Yeah. Because you're not. Yeah. I mean, you're not particularly. I'm not good at football. Well, no. you're not particularly nimble on your feet. Oh, come no, on. No, you're not. Douglas Bardo is um, <laughs> more nimble. I'm all right. I'm you're all not. right. But it, Carl's sort of, I think he's got more skills than me, but he hasn't got the aggression and the sure. weight. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I just yeah. pushed him aside. Yeah, good work. Yeah. Good work. I'm going on holiday. Are you? Yeah, we're not, I'm not here next week. What are you gonna do, Carl? Are you gonna do the best of or something next week, aren't you? Yeah, that's what we've got to sort out. Well, I can't sort it out. I've literally, I've got to go to the airport no, after. No, no, straight after the show you've got to do some links. No, so. I'm not doing any links. I said I wasn't, so... That's we... what we planned. No, we didn't. I said I'd do some during the show, and then you I could... thought you were joking. I, I, I honestly can't do it today, so we do some during the show. What are you gonna do? Just put the shows that we've done in this year? Sorry, guys, uh, I hate to interrupt. This uh, is the sort of stuff we should have been discussing <laughs> when you were playing football. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Play rec. What are you gonna play? Play Let's record. have a bit of Foo Fighters. Okay. Let's just get justice off there. Okay. Foo Fighters there, learning to fly. Steve, I hope the pilot that I get today flying the plane that I'm going on holiday in has already learned to fly. <laughs> oh! <laughs> well done. That is dynamite. That's, so, that's a textbook link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, genius. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah. Where, where are you going? Where, yeah. what, what's the story? Yeah. Where are you off to? Uh, Sorrento. Where's that? Uh, sort of South Italy. Italy? Yeah. What are you like on holiday? Are you a nightmare? Are you the, no. like... No. Well, what you're quite... Nightmare? But you're quite... I mean, obviously, I, you know, I've often said on the radio before that I... I mean, I'm a, spending any length of time with you is, is, is one of the most unbearable <laughs> things I've ever had to do. <laughs> I mean, spending a week with you is nightmarish, and sharing any kind of accommodation is- <laughs> do you know what I mean? No, seriously, I mean, it's like- it's like hell. It's like li a living hell. <laughs> it's like having I'm a teenager- fine. No, I just do- It's like having a sort of teenage kid who can- can't be entertained by anything. Just chill out. Just yeah, chill you out. just chill out, dude. Just Isn't max it? relax. Yeah, max relax. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And do you? And so, if you're in somewhere like Italy, like somewhere like that, because that, obviously a very beautiful city mm. and very mm. cultured and stuff. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, mm. is that something that you enjoy? Do you enjoy the culture of that, the, the beautiful architecture? Let's say a hotel's the same anywhere. <laughs> as long as there's <laughs> right. room service and a nice room and pool, it's, no, it's nice weather. Sure. If it's not, I'm annoyed. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I need yeah. to blame someone. And is it true that you go because you go to Italy most years, don't you? Is that because that's the only food you like? I eating? like I like pasta and pizza. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I've I've been to other places. I went to France once and. That you can't explain to them to cook it prop, just cook <laughs> it properly. I don't want any to cook yeah, it. It's, yeah. There's blood in the middle of that. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, Hungary, there was it was just oh, I went there for a while and I didn't know I couldn't identify the animals right, they were totally killing involved, for me. Yeah. So and yeah. I know quite a lot about natural history. Sure. And I couldn't identify what was on the plate, yeah. so I don't. Can I miss after a couple of days? No, I just got, I got annoyed and I well, I, I went to McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's um, the great thing about McDonald's is they are in most exactly. major cities. No, yeah. but I, you can't I, you can't go wrong with. So if I was with you on holiday and I you know we were we were hanging out or whatever. And I took you to say maybe a, a beautiful cathedral. Is that yeah. something you'd enjoy? I can't quite imagine you actually taking well, the time to. 
Well, as long as it, as long as it's not a very long walk, we don't have to stay there more than a couple of minutes. I'd, lo I'd love to look around <laughs> places. <laughs> right, so you would yeah. you'd look at the cathedral. Yeah, that's taken you know that's that takes people breath you know takes people's breath away. You know, yeah. people travel from around the world to see that. You would, yeah. and how long would you I don't stay? They travel around the world to see it. I think they go somewhere sure. and they go. Well, and we they, might as well is, look at the cathedral. You can't the miss it. They're huge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would you? And um, would you? Uh, would you sort of spend any time looking at that? Would you just sort of soak in the atmosphere for a moment, or you would you? I'd look at it and I'd go, "That's brilliant." And then if there was any sort of soaking in, I can do that. Later, when there's nothing to look at, <laughs> right? What there's less to do. Your memory of it later when you're in the bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, you can sure. you know, right. And would you? Um, so, can, uh, can you be kind of in awe of something like that? Yeah, well, if, that if it it's big, okay. If I, if I go in the cathedral and it's and it's I've seen bigger, I go oh, seen bigger. <laughs> sure. If it's the biggest one I've seen, I go that is huge. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and then lets you off. Yeah, sure. Because you are you're a sort of man who gets bored, and this is true, Carl. You may not be the flu this. Ricky Gervais is a man who gets bored drinking a glass of water. It's boring because it's not flavoursome enough. No, it's, uh, it's I, not I, got enough flavour. It's, it's absolute bore. Uh, the only uh, <laughs> Jane's got me onto fizzy water, which at least got something there. Right. Uh, but I only drink that when I'm sort of dehydrated in the middle of the night. I never. There's no. I never drink a drink of water. No. It's, it is boring. Yeah, yeah. Well, but that's why you've always got headaches and you're always apparently, yeah. moaning and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's part of another, one of the reasons I hate you. Uh, is in it? A, in a, in a, but when I, I don't, when I say hate you, I don't mean I hate you. I didn't mean, Did to, you I, I didn't mean to blur it out that strongly. <laughs> uh, yeah. What I mean is if I'm spending a lot of time with you. <laughs> once right, he said, you. right, we're in the BBC canteen and I was sort of like, and he just put his knife forward and I said, I'm never eating with you again. I said, what's the matter? He said, you annoy me. You, I hate eating with you. It annoys me. You've got, it looks like a child food. It's just you eat chips and sausage. And rubbish. You don't eat. Look at you. Don't touch your vegetables. You don't drink water. He said you. I, he really got well, annoyed because you. You. You've got this like the, this hatred of anything that's good for you. You won't eat any form of salad. You just Why do I eat salad? Because it's good for you. And lettuce you is boring. Lettuce is absolutely boring. Um, uh, cucumber are boring. <laughs> but you know? but yeah. But the thing is, you see, I admit that lettuce and cucumber have not got much flavour. But that's why people will add, say, a in Italy, they'll add a lovely dressing. Yeah. Maybe yeah. some olive oil. Maybe some balsamic vinegar. Well, you embarrass <laughs> yourself because. The good thing about a nice, mature lump of cheddar cheese <laughs> is you don't have to have any dressing. <laughs> Although you add some anyway. I put a little you bit of olive oil in it and maybe some mayonnaise. Maybe but, some uh, you know, and dressing. On a Ritz cracker, you don't need it, it's just extra. Sure, sure. Well, good luck. I notice you're wearing the- is this your travelling gear? You've got the sweatpants and the, yeah. the t-shirt, the free t-shirt. Yeah. Looking to get an upgrade, are you? Or? I'm, I'm going first class, aren't sure. you? Sure. Badly drawn boy. Spitting in the wind on XFM 104.9. Are Mr. you going to be taking in any of what? the uh, culture in Italy? Is yeah. that something you do? Yeah. The well, opera? Uh, I don't know the about opera. the opera. I've never been to the opera. Uh, I do like a, you know, a you bit like of opera. opera. Yeah, not, I wouldn't sit through a whole one, but I mean, I like, I like the songs they take from it for that World Cup one. <laughs> And those two fat birds that they sung in Shawshank Redemption was good. Yes, but um, I think yeah. uh, you know I, I, I haven't gone into it extensively. I haven't studied the <laughs> art, <laughs> the art of opera. Also, it's in foreign, so you don't really know what's happening. It's in foreign. Yeah, yeah. so you don't. Know That's that. annoying for you. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. What about are you? Are you a fan of any of the great English operas, <laughs> like um, the Pirates of Penzance? <laughs> yeah, Gilbert and <laughs> Sullivan. <laughs> to me, Gilbert and Sullivan were like the probably. Their their day equivalent of like Richard Stilgo getting together with Tony Slattery, <laughs> and then a hundred years later people go, it's brilliant. It, it is like they might as well, um, I don't know, make th th any any episode of Whose Line Is It Anyway, right? Yeah, into an opera, and in two hundred years' time we're going, that's genius. Yeah, listen to this one. Look, this is Party Quirks. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Amdram Society staging <laughs> yeah, World yeah. Worst Step. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was, well, I was in oh. the Pirates of Penzance once in an amateur production. You used to like Whose Lines It Anyway. I did. That was Although yeah, I did watch scenes. it when it first came on Channel Four about yeah. fifteen, twenty years ago. But we um, we did the Pirates of Penzance when I was in an amateur dramatic society in Bristol, uh, the Bristol Operatic Society, Light Operatic Society. I don't know why I was involved because I can't sing. My audition. <laughs> I swear, this is how desperate they were for blokes. I swear to God, right? I can't sing. You know, were you? Yeah, well, all right, calm down. And um, <laughs> I, uh, I went in, and they said, so "What are you going to sing?" I went, uh, "Well, I, I just, I don't, I, I want to surprise you." They said, "Do you want a piano accompaniment?" I said, "No, I don't think so." <laughs> I went to the back. I swear to God, I went to the back of the room, and I just sang. Thumbelina, Thumbelina, <laughs> tiny little thing. Thumbelina, dance. Thumbelina, sing. Thumbelina, what's the difference if you're very small? Cause when your heart is full of love, you're six feet tall. I just did that. 
and they just <laughs> looked at me like I was the weirdest <laughs> freak uh, they'd ever had. Uh, Immediately put me in the chorus, because they, that uh, was how desperate they were for blokes. We yeah. stayed, we rehearsed it. I couldn't remember the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank God you were doing Thumbelina. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but they dear. Couldn't, I couldn't, um, I, you know, I couldn't remember the lyrics. What was it for? It was it Gilbert and Sullivan? It was, it was the Pirates of Penzance. Oh. There weren't enough blokes, right, so that we had to double up. So some of the pirates <laughs> had to double up as the policemen who were chasing the pirates. Little bit problematic in the scene when the policemen and the pirates have a fight. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little bit tricky. <laughs> and the worst thing, so there's this sequence where like the, the, sort of the daughters of the major general all kind of like, oh beautiful, something like, you know, um, oh beautiful little girls are we, da la 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 la. And the women they had, they must have all been over 40. I mean mm. real kind of oh. toothless crones oh. creeping around in their nighties. Is it the sort of women that buy one of those? sort of porcelain dolls exactly. from the team that go, yeah. look, I've had a baby. It's not a real baby. <laughs> it is a real baby. <laughs> you, I'm gonna stab you. Yeah. One of those. Exactly. It's the sort of women that you'd see maybe on, uh, TV's Bargain Hunt. <laughs> 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 you know, the kind of contestants you get on there. Those women who, who sort of very nam and they, they think they've clung on to their looks, but they've oh. never made it in, in, uh, the guy who was playing the, uh, there's a guy who's supposed to be an eighteen-year-old prince, uh, an eighteen-year-old pirate, uh, the pirate king. He must have been forty <laughs> years <laughs> a day. He also directed the show, though, so he got to prance around in these thigh-high boots. <laughs> Ludicrous. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> it was shameful, really. I'd I love to go to Amdram. Amdram is a whole other world. It's just it's <laughs> such an incredible place. Because there's so much backbiting and envy and- Really? Oh, it's incredible. I mean, it's worse than the real world of theatre and TV. It's unbelievable. Because the same old people get to do it every year because they can hold a note. Can it's we go along? You would absolutely adore it, Javis. It just is a film it, a secret camera. Have you ever done the in a, in a play, Pilk? We know this. Carl, you've, uh, you've performed it. Just at the, uh, the talent show, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, the talent show, yeah. Reminders of the talent and, show. Uh, that's when I did, uh, Walk Like an Egyptian, dressed up as a woman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, did me magic trick. Oh, that's that, is it an egg? The egg one. Yeah. Um. What was the egg one again? When I, uh, actually I've ruined it now, saying the egg one, but I went on stage with like an Anki. Yeah. And I said, uh, at this point I was dressed up as a caretaker in it. <laughs> sure. Don't know why, can't remember. No. I was Art. stood there with this, uh, with this anky over my hand. Yeah. I said, right, you're gonna love this one. Yeah. I said, I'm gonna make a, a bird appear in front of your, in front of your eyes, right? Yeah. And I'm all like, oh god, what's he gonna do? So I'm stood there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they <laughs> yeah. did. Pulled the anky off. It was an egg. Had an egg and I said, oh, it hasn't been born yet. That's brilliant. They loved it. They, yeah. Yeah. Like, wild for it, did they? Round of applause? Yeah. Uh, How old were you? Was that, was that you your, like was, 17? Was that, it? apart from the, apart from your paper round, was that the high point of your life so far? Uh Is that the, what's the no, best? No, I, did, I didn't really Carl, I'd it. like to see you take that on the road. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe at least up to the Edinburgh Festival next year. <laughs> Carl, we're gonna play a song now, right? One of my, f uh, great track, Watch That Man, off one of my favourite albums, A Love Insane by David Bowie. But, during that, can, can you, can you think of a couple of things for me? What's the best thing that's ever happened to you? Can you, can you think about that for three minutes? Me and Steve will leave you alone. Just the best thing that's ever happened to you. Remember and think that is amazing. Yeah, can you do that? Yeah. Play the, yeah. play. Watch that man. David Bowie. Steve's caught unaware there, just wandering around, not quite ready, were you? Well, no, I'm just relaxed, you know, just yeah. laid back, just hanging. Yeah, Carl. Yeah. Best thing that's ever happened to you. Best event, best day in your life. I mean, there's, there's loads of things that happen. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. no, but do you know what I mean? You can go for obvious stuff like, you know, meeting Suzanne, st yeah. sticking with her and well, having take, a nice take, take that, take that as red. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You've got that on your design and that's already yeah. done. Well, uh, And the day you, you know, you got your qualifications through. Yeah, the history. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, probably, I mean, when you asked me then, the first thing that came into my mind, right, that was a real surprise. Right, because it's like, you, you get surprises on your birthday and that, don't you? Mm. But they're not really surprises, because you're hassling your mum and dad for stuff. Yeah. And then they, you know, they might bite you. Yeah, so it's not yeah. really a real surprise, is it? Do yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so I'd say something that was really like, oh yeah, nice one, I've got something here, is the time when <laughs> my dad said, empty the bin, will you? Right? <laughs> I said, oh, do I have to? And I, I was watching something, it was like, why don't you, or something like that on yeah. the telly. Is this right? what started your tea bag and banana skin collection? <laughs> right. So, it was like, do you know in the summer holidays where you'd have dead good telly in the morning, you had like, yeah. uh, the monkeys. Yeah, yeah, banana splits. And it was banana why don't splits. you, banana splits yeah, and all yeah. that, right? And I was like, loving that, I was watching that. I mean, I said, empty the bin. I said, oh, the monkeys are on in a minute. He said, well, just empty the bin. So I emptied it, and I just put it near the door. He said, don't leave it there. He said, stick it near the bins in the garden. I was like, I'll, I'll put it there later. He said, no, do it now. Yeah. Right? 
So I was like, oh, if I miss the beginning of this, I'll be livid, be right? Good. So I picked it up quick, ran out down to the bottom of the garden, slung it in the corner, and sort of went to turn back to go back in and had to look again, because they had like a little AA truck. They you bought me, th it wasn't brand new, but he'd got it from somewhere, a little AA go-kart, do you know one of them like, little things that, I mean I was, I was young. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it was like- go-kart? What kind of, no the plastic ones. Yeah. When you're about, I, I don't know, I must have been like five or six or something. So I don't quite follow, the, 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 had so he sent dad, you out there? My dad sent right me out with a bin bag so yeah. I could see, so like, could what see he'd got thing. me. And yeah. it wasn't my birthday or anything, he just got it from somewhere. You sure you hadn't just nicked it and dumped it out the back? Possibly. Sure. But uh, that, that was a, like a genuine like, oh yeah, smart. Yeah. So I went back in, watched the tally and yeah, that for a bit and went back out. You thought, so did I tell you, did I tell you about my go-kart? Yeah, like you- Yeah. About your dad giving it away. Yeah. What's the story? I, 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 I I've told you something. Have you gone? What? Tell it again. Well, I, 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 I told it on air. I can't remember. Maybe I just told you it. Um, when I was about eight or nine, I had a go-kart and I loved it. It's one of those things you press back and forth. Yes. And I used to come in every day, used to just get changed, run out, and it was, um, behind the shed, and I used to just go up and down the garden. And one day I came running in, and I ran out, and I couldn't see it. And I went to the back door, my mum was washing up, and I went, where's my go-kart? She went, your dad swapped it. Your dad swapped it? Yeah. With his, it was, it was his mate, Jimmy, in the pub. He went, it's just, I said, what's, ah. Oh. She went, yeah, he swapped it for a wheelbarrow. So I went and looked back and there was this wheelbarrow, right, <laughs> that was obviously just came off a building site. Yeah. Covered in concrete. Oh, I couldn't, it was steel, right, ch I could hardly move it. Yeah. And I went back and I went, really? She went, yeah, it's your wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm thinking so, so my dad, my dad lost the wheelbarrow that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I used to, I used to push that up and down, it wasn't the same. And you used then to push the wheelbarrow up yeah, and down? Anything I mean, in there or? No, I just like to try, I was just trying to sort of keep myself amused. Yeah. But anyway, that summer, I went on holiday. And uh, I went to Bargainer with my mum and my nan. Um, <laughs> Another wild holiday. Yeah, yeah. And I was sort of out, out with my caravan and I, I made friends uh, with this this kid and he'd hired a go-kart from the, the caravan, is that right? And I remember him going around it and uh, I was, it, was, it was great. And I said, <laughs> and I said, I've got a go-kart. <laughs> and the caravan window opened and my mum said, don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> You've uh, got a wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> Be truthful. <laughs> <laughs> I went, I had a go-kart. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so tragic. Yeah. What Did you ever really forgive him for that? I'd never forgive him, my dad, if he'd swapped a go-kart for a wheelbarrow. I just thought that's par for the course, Yeah. It? You know what I mean? He's yeah. They're in charge. Sure. Did you used to rush home, change and- <laughs> <into> <laughs> like, yeah. 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 Into that sort of gardener's gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Straight into your hard hat and dungarees. I go, Mum, any bricks need moving. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. dear. Oh, that's so tragic. Yeah. Yeah. Still, that was your happiest day. Yeah. Beautiful car. So that's, that's the one that sprang to mind. Yeah. Yeah, and my, un my unhappiest. Do you see how, how go-karts can be good or bad? <laughs> Does that make you think, Carl, that yeah. the go-kart is, you know, is good and evil? <laughs> yeah. Play a record. Oh, I'm upset. Ads. Huh? So, so oh, ads. brilliant. What ads have you got? <laughs> I've got these. Electric Soft Parade. Same way every day on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Within Steve Merchant. Sure. Rick, I, um, I only had one thing I had to do all week. Okay. What was that? I only had, to, I was all week, I was so excited about getting up Friday morning, phoning, getting Bruce Springsteen oh, tickets. Yeah. The boss is playing in, yeah. uh, in yeah. October. And basically got up too late. Well, not sold out already. You just sold didn't out. Get... It had sold out, but I started calling about 12 30. It sold out. I trawled the net. I trawled, uh, all yeah, the phone but a lines. Lot of, yeah, some of those buys are bulk buys for selling on, aren't they? They're not all this individuals. Is the this they, is the problem. I mean, I don't know how many people they you know, can fit in Wembley Arena, but sold out by 12.30, and that's popular. Wembley Arena? Yeah. It's about 12,000, isn't it? I was so gutted. It was all I had to do. I was so looking forward to it. I phoned up one of those, like, do quite dodgy ticket agencies. Do you know how much he was offering to, you know, they're like, they're 45 quid to buy. Mm -hmm. He said, the starting price is 225 quid. I mean, that to me is like a ticket tout, like a legal ticket tout. Are they allowed tout. to do that? I don't know, it's crazy. I was so they angry. They could make, is that, they, they'd have to say their booking fee was 150 pounds. Yeah, exactly. 
So I, but now I'm just, I'm like desperate, I don't know what to do, I'm just wondering if I can abuse our position on the radio and just try and scrounge them from anyone <laughs> who's listening. No, I mean anyone who's listening who's got the power to get them, you know, or- This is begging, or, isn't it? It's, 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 it's exactly what it is, Rick, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna try and dress it up, yeah. but it's just begging. That I'm just- ticket touts after you as well, for exactly. dissing him. Ricky dot Gervais Don't at- Don't bring me into it. Shut up. Ricky dot Gervais at xfm.co.uk, if there's anything you can do to get me a ticket, I'm willing to pay for it. Um, up to the price oh, of forty-five big. quid. Okay, you know. Yeah. Wow. No the second hand. Yeah, it's second Thirty. Hand. Yeah. You don't. You don't want to throw yeah. your money I'll around. Give Steve. twenty-five quid. Come on. <laughs> don't you know yeah. who I am? Yeah. But um. But that, I mean, do you know what I mean? Cause I'm just, like, I asked Carl if he could sort it out. He's done nothing. He's achieved nothing. I know. So I'm just desperate. I'm in a desperate situation and I don't quite know what to do. I'll tell you this though, Carl. D don't bother doing favours for him cause he's not grateful. He, he, he give him something and he goes, right, does this mean I have to give you something back? And I go, well no. He goes, good. <laughs> well, I got your cure tickets and you did nothing yeah, but whinge about it. that gig. There you go, It then. was rubbish. I went along to that gig, it was a balmy summer's night. The cure, as far as I'm concerned, owed me a balmy summer's night because I wasted it. Hour and a half they played for, they played four hits. I don't want to hear their dirge from like some dodgy album and from like 1984. I'm not interested. Play the hits. Boys don't cry. Love cats, blah, 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 blah. Instead I got nothing. I was so angry. I was, I was just, oh man, I you was You were probably angry. angry at Carl, weren't you? I was angry at Carl for wasting my time getting yeah. me the tickets for free. I mean, if I Carl? paid for it, are you get to, you're getting to see livid. what sort of a bloke Steve Merchant is. Mm -hmm. No, it's not the point. Do you not agree though, if you're gonna go and see a band like The Cure on a summer's night yeah. in Hyde Park, you do not want to hear some obscure, obscure B-sides and album tracks. But that, that's what, that was a great thing about when, when, when I saw Bowie at the BBC. He played- well, you what? He, you know about that. I don't know about this. Yeah, you do. What? When did you see Bowie? At uh, the Jonathan Ross recording. Oh, what, your showbiz friend Jonathan Ross? <laughs> yeah. What yeah. was this? Was that that TV thing he did? Yeah. You went to that? You haven't told me about this. Yes, I have. No, you haven't. But you were away, I think. No, I wasn't. Because I watched it on TV. It was amazing. Well, don't tell me that. It was incredible. Were you seriously there? Yeah. And then, then I went on to a show on the Saturday. Cause did he, you? Yeah. Because I was just around John said, oh, I need someone to come in, yeah. And I went on to the radio show. So TV you were show. hanging out with Bowie? Yeah. And yes. <laughs> Go on. Who else was there? Well, the weird thing Shall was- Shall I go through my favourite artists and you just name <laughs> them and see if, if they were there, just let me know. <laughs> no, but it was amazing, right? Cause he started, he played, um, uh, just doing low, cause it was that, cause it was that, um, it was the meltdown thing. And he did, uh, Be My Wife, which was great. Then he started doing Fame. Right, and they'd been talking about Ziggy in the, um, the interview. He was going, oh, everyone goes on Ziggy, will you just stop it, right? And it was sort of like, got to a point where he was going, oh, and it was really funny and, uh, uh but Jonathan's got a favourite phase with that, right? And then he started playing, um, Fame and it was really good and he just went, stop this, stop this. This isn't, uh, this, uh, let's do Ziggy. And oh. a sp uh, my spine tingled. I was worried. And he did Ziggy Stardust, and I'll tell you what, it sounded like the album version. And he's got an amazing band, and it was, and I love it when they do that. They know, I hate it when they, just because they've been going for 25 years, they start changing Sorry, it. Sorry, I can't believe that you went to this, that you knew you were going to this, and you never asked me, you never asked Jonathan if you could get me in. I mean, seriously, I, w I mean, you know how much that would have meant. Yeah, to but me. it was very tight. Apparently, I, I, I know, but it was very, very, it was very sort of. Apparently, Richard uh, Branson couldn't get in as a queue, so I was like, especially it was. There was me, me and Jane went. Um, uh, D David Badil and uh, Frank Skinner. Oh, what? Some new showbiz <laughs> friends of yours? Aren't no, they? no. I mean, that we, that, I'm rubbing it in, Steve. I, I can't. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> but you might not have liked it. You might have complained like Carl got the you... cure, and you 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 turned that it back. That was rubbish, on it. though. That was rubbish. Well, you might not have liked what David did. You know, I'll I'll tell you this, seriously, if, if I find out that you do, the, that you've gone to some secret gig or something in the future, and I find out you've been, seriously, that's it. There's no more office, there's no more, no, no I'm not joking, I'm not mucking around, because that to me is like, that's what friendship is, that's like a textbook example of friendship. What do you think, Carl? Uh, no, I just think that's no, really off. No, you I just think away. that's really you were, you, you were No, I wasn't away. Yeah, you were, yeah. I wasn't away, don't try and fool me. Yeah. I wouldn't have been away, if I was away, I wouldn't have been away you if were you told asleep. me that was happening. You were asleep. I'm, I, I'm, seriously, I'm, you can, we can joke about it, but I'm really angry about this. What do you think, Carl? <laughs> there's a secret, right? There's a, apparently there's a secret Bruce Springsteen gig that's been planned. I'm going. It's all, are you? I, if you, seriously, <laughs> if you, <laughs> but seriously, if you, if, if I find out you're at that, oh, I will, I mean. Oh, dear. To play a record so I can shout expletives and we can give us. Oh, I, I tell you what, lovely bit of electronic. Oh. Just to cook, cook, uh, calm and, and soothe me. I'm just, seriously, I'm not joking, that really winds me up. That yes. really winds me up. The cure was good. 
electronic, getting away with it. Nice to hear that again, Rick. Yeah, lovely. Love all that. Love all that. Someone's we, just, uh, You've had a bit of result, haven't you? Well, no, there's a guy who's phoned out who said he might be able to sort me out with the Springsteen tickets, so <laughs> deeply excited about that. But, yeah. you know, people don't, uh, don't get, don't get for complacent. <laughs> don't he might not be Steve, able to. Steve demands a lot of hard work. Well, yeah. he, he might not be able to sort it out. You know, he's gonna make some calls, but, uh, if he can't, then, you know, keep calling or emailing, uh, uh Ricky Dot You'll be taking XFM, me, won't you? Because I was, you know. after that rant about me not taking you. Well, you're welcome to go. I mean, if- well, if you told me that before, I probably could have blagged some using your name. <laughs> if you let me do that, I could have phoned out the promoter. Uh, That's fine, calling on behalf uh, of Ricky Gervais, back oh the winner. Oh, dear. He'd have probably, uh, uh sorted me right out. But yeah, no, I mean, you know, uh, we, we- joking aside, mm. it is quite serious. And, um, and as I said, I don't- I don't want to pay through the nose for him. you know, I'm willing to go up to sort of forty-seven <laughs> pounds. <laughs> they cost forty-five face Like, like, values, like so. that- that Steve trying to impress a girl in a queue. Yeah. Offered the bouncer two quid for himself if yeah. he could go to the front. Oh man, that was so embarrassing. <laughs> two quid. I tried to bribe. I told you that car. I tried to bribe the uh, bouncer. He was coming out. He was just. He thought he was really. He thought he was in total. He was. He was like the the bouncer of the Met Club, or the, the Met Bar or something. Ten in. He was choosing. No, it wasn't. He was picking people off. Right. I, yeah. That was it. He was picking people off, and he was going, "You, you can come in. You can come in." I got chained to a couple of girls. I thought, oh, "I'm in. I'm in here. I'm sorry, dear." Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I thought, I'll, I'll, "I'll act flash. I'll try and bribe my way into the club." I, the guy was walking past. I cornered him. I went, "Wee, how much is it to go in?" He said, uh, "Fiver." I went, "I'll give you seven. <laughs> <laughs> and two pounds. I thought, because the problem I had was I didn't want to go straight to like a tenner. No. Because if he accepted seven, I didn't want to be that, you know, no. I didn't want to waste no, the money. Right, so I thought, Steve. I thought right, we Steve. could at least haggle. It was the term, is that frugal? What is the term for that? Thrifty? I know, um. No, I, but I'm resenting this because you are trying to create this kind of, this lies, this myth that I'm somehow, you know, like that I'm somehow cheating Careful. my money yeah. or that I'm not a great lover. <laughs> You know what I mean? And that's sort of, I'm like, it's annoying me. Uh, frankly. Oh so, uh, dear. Um, Carl, you went to, uh, Habitat this week, didn't you? You're not gonna believe this, Steve. Go on. He told me Is this it a morning. No. Yeah. Do you know I told you about those, um, <laughs> those lads at school with big heads? Sure, yeah, the big head lads, yeah. Right. <laughs> and the um, web feet. Yeah, we webbed hands. Webbed hands, was it? Um. They weren't um, there, were they? They weren't there, but do you know, like, Ricky was always saying, oh, they don't exist, they only went to your school, you yeah. know, la la la. It was in Habitat, there was only one, one sat on a sofa. <laughs> Not one of the lads, but one of the- one A big headed lad. A big headed lad. <laughs> is that like, I when you say a big headed lad, is he like Frank Sidebottom? <laughs> big head? I mean, is it like- What, well, I don't it? know what it- this is why, you know, it, it'd is be nice to- You think it's maybe a medical- Well, it'd be nice to, if there's a doctor listening, sure. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. A doctor <laughs> listening to X-Men thinking, I must phone up and fuel Carl's obsession with yeah. the deformed. Yeah. No, but it's not really deformed. But it how was just big is the head? Probably, you see, it's weird how it's always kids who I see with it, so I'm wondering whether- they, they have grow a full into their size head, head right, and yeah. then the, when they get older, <laughs> it works out all right. Like jumpers. My mum used to get me, but jumpers are size too big, yeah. so it'd last a year. So I'm just wondering if it's the same. So, so how old are these generally? Are they not like adults? <laughs> They're like kids. Well, when I was at school, there I was probably about seven, and this kid on. And do they have to wear Sunday. any kind of apparatus to sort of keep their head from kind of you know uh, not tipping them over or sort of staying well, upright? Like right? I mean, is, is, well, I'm just worried that the head's kind of too heavy for their body or something in there. No, it's, I mean it's not that big. Right. It's. Uh, it's just not right. You kind of go, you, you sort of do a bit of a double take. Yeah. yeah. Um, like the fringe isn't sort of, you know, just above their eyes, it's quite high up. Sure. Um, yeah. That sickens you, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and is it something that repulses you slightly? Do you get No, 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 that's, that'd be cruel. No, sure. But, yeah. uh, but, you know. But it's not cruel to discuss it on the radio. Well, it happens, sure. Sure. it? Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, and I, I'd just like to know what it is. If it's yeah. like a, like a, a water on the head type A thing. water on the head type thing. Like water on the knee, yeah. but <laughs> on the head. on the head. But, uh, yeah, if anyone knows what it is. Yeah. People uh, with big heads. Yeah, it'd be, uh. And it's, yeah, okay. It'd be good. Good information. So, what time are we doing? Are you sure it wasn't perspective? Are you sure he wasn't sort of, um, sort of leaning forward and he was really tall? So yeah. the top of his- the, the head looked quite big but then it went to a little body but really his body was a lot further no, away. No, big head. Yeah. Yeah. Just a big head. Uh, the rest of his body, fine. Face okay, everything's normal. You if weren't you looking at him in a kettle. If you wore a hat, <laughs> it'd be alright, but- What yeah. do you mean if you wore a hat, he'd be alright? You'd probably just think, oh, it's a big hat or something. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, what sort of hat? So you'd well, wear like a ten-gallon hat. Yeah, with a, with, that would go down onto his shoulders with two eyes cut in yeah. it. Yeah, like something like, like the Ant Hill mold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Michael Benteen's potty time. Oh, yeah. How would a hat help him? Yeah. Are you, you sure this wasn't a Diddy man? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not being mean. I just want to no. know what it is. No. Okay. Right. Well, if you are a doctor listening and you, and you, you know, you want to use your kind of free Saturday Not the doctor waste. who phoned the bloke in America and said, where do I get blood from? Sure. Not that doctor. Because yeah. I assume he's been struck off now, given- Sure. Give us a call and, and sort out the, the whole big head conundrum. What's the number? Uh, oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. That's also the number to call if you have Bruce Springsteen tickets available. Uh, I will pay up to forty seven. Don't pounds. do it. Go yourself. Don't give them to Steve for cost price. Make a little profit. Oh, come I mean, on, don't say to Mickey. Don't me. You know what I feel. You've already ruined the I mean, I, thing. Don't ruin but, some more of my dreams. But I tell you what, if you do get Steve. Um, a ticket. He'll be so grateful that he will spend a bit of money on you. I imagine exactly. you'll buy a ticket and you know give him something pretty special because you're earning now and you know. Yeah. So yeah, let me discuss that with them. <laughs> I mean, let's not make any promises. Yeah, you're in the middle of a phone call there, aren't you? Is no. that still, is that poor bloke still on the line? Probably not. No, he's he's gone. Oh, is he? Yeah, oh, he's in the middle white, of something. White stripes. Though. Yeah. Dead leaves and the dirty ground. Steve, what are you doing? Sorry, mate, I'm just, uh, sort of preoccupied with other stuff. I've got the whole Springsteen thing I'm worried about. I've got that playing on my mind. I've never seen Steve so worried. Like, it, usually he just he sits there I'm with his head. Rick, I've made promises to people I can't keep. <laughs> 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 I promised about three different people I'm getting them tickets. So, um, <laughs> well, it serves you right. some calls, Rick, that's all. <laughs> I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Are we doing the game in this hour or what? Oh, we could do. Should we do that? Your game? Well, what was that thing you told me the, the other day as well, of talking about it? People have been phoning up about this. I don't think we should talk about conditions of the mind and brain. Well, that woman has put you right. Yeah, shown us it's uh, hydrocephalus it could be, and uh, all it is is that it's, it, it's totally curable and it, it, normal life. What they do is it's a baby born with sort of water on the brain and it comes out, must hurt a bit in childbirth, and then they just uh, drain it off. It's just full of water. i tell you what. What? Just reminded me. What? Weird stuff going on in the but world. But it was a baby, was it? This was a- maybe it was a baby. Maybe it was- or oh, maybe it was a baby, but it had water on the everything. Well, listen, right, I don't- admit, this was a kid with a big head, as far as I'm concerned. He wasn't a baby. Go but on. we know what he's got, everything's sorted. <laughs> but other things, right, <laughs> that are weird in the world- Yeah, Do you know on, you're Carl. always like, um, Yeah. You're going on about, uh, there's no ghosts and stuff. Yeah. Right? How do you answer this one? Someone here who I work with, yep. right? I'm not going to say the because it doesn't matter. <laughs> but they were eating uh, space cake, right? What do you mean by that, Carl? Explain. What's for, a space cake for people who? It's some it's some sort of druggy cake, isn't it? Yeah. Right. A dope brownie or whatever. Yeah. Right. So 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 with cannabis in it. Is that what you're saying? I think it's something stronger than that, isn't it? I don't know. But Fine. anyway, he was having this space cake. And I, you, you better give me the name now, Carl, because I've got to report him. <laughs> no, listen. <laughs> it's listen only, no, 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 no. It really it is doesn't still, matter. No. Is it Sturgis? <laughs> was it Claire Sturgis? Yeah, she wouldn't bother with she, She's gone on the hardest. She doesn't bother with those. She doesn't do anything to Straight her now. Straight to the vein, yeah. <laughs> so listen, yeah. right? So he's at a party, right, yeah. with his mates, mm. and they're listening to, um, the, uh, Star Sailor album. Uh -huh. Right? Right. And, uh, he's sat there, and he's had some of this cake. Yeah. Right. And, uh, Listen to the album, and his mate sat across the way talking to someone else. Hmm. Right? That's weird. The album's on, mm. and he thinks to himself, This track's going on a bit. Yeah. yeah. And his mate across the way, who's talking to someone else, heard him say it. Heard him say it, and he goes, Yeah. He goes, Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. So he goes, Oh. Right. And he goes, so you use it at this point, I say had this bloke taken drugs, but you started the story <laughs> yeah. with this bloke no, 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 no. had done some drugs. Since, right, Rick. No, he, if he if he was here now, yeah. right, he would say, Yeah, I know, I think it sounds I know it sounds mental. Yeah. But it happened. And yeah. it wasn't just the one question, it wasn't just like, Oh, this track's a bit long, in it? Yeah, it is. He had a it whole was conversation. A whole conversation sure. with the guy. And yeah. what, and but sorry, I I just want to clarify, you mean he had the whole conversation telepathically? Yeah. Right. And he didn't just shout across the room. And they've recently yeah. met up and like, they've sat there and, and tried to like, work out mm. what happened. Mm. And it's Without not about they don't have to talk at all anymore. <laughs> yeah. Why did they meet up? Couldn't they just done it like, <laughs> 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 they were at home? <laughs> just stay at do home, they, do they? have to have that cake before they yeah, start before having a conversation? Hold on, wait a minute, lads. Why are we using our lips? Yeah. This is using way too many for- oh, take them. There you go. Mm. <laughs> my, my only question with that is, uh, being skeptics like Ricky and I, whenever we hear a story like that about the paranormal, the first thing we always look for is maybe some, maybe some other explanation. Yeah. Maybe one vague lying. idea. Lying? Could be lying. Uh, Chinese or, whisper. Uh, as, 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 as I think you pointed out there, are drugs. It's often, uh, <laughs> drugs. often an issue as Madness, well. Madness. Yeah. Fear. Delusion. Mm. Mm. Sleep. 
Yeah. You know, there, 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 there are there are so many things you go through. I'm going to go with the drugs <laughs> before your dead grandmother <laughs> exactly. pops into the equation. I'm going to go with the acid. Right, tell the other story that you totally you totally believe this as a true story, don't you? The fellow with the the um, being killed. Right. Do you know how the other week we were talking about some fella who had <laughs> his head cut off, and he said, uh, "When my head goes into, into the basket, I'm going to blink a lot. See how many times I can blink." But if you remember. When Carl first told me that, it was, uh, um, I think it was Simon or, um, uh, Nick that had to point it out. He goes, no, that's not quite right, Carl. Carl told me it, that he had his head cut off, and when his head was in the basket, it looked up and said, count how many times I'd blink. <laughs> yeah, but sure. he believed that as well. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, he was yeah, happy, yeah. he was happy with that. Sure. Do you know Sorry, what I mean? Sorry, so, so, yeah, you, a couple of weeks ago, there was a guy, he had his head cut off, and before he had it off, he'd said, I'm gonna blink to show yeah. that there's life after and death, he, and he, he did, done he it. did 32 blinks, yeah, right? Sure. So, you two were sort of pointing that down the other yeah, week. Yeah, we were skeptical. So, I looked again. On the internet? At some other website. Mm. Yeah. And there's a guy... Sorry, it's the website, just to clarify, the website is the place where you bought that property on the moon, didn't you? Because it was a bargain. <laughs> right. So, um, <laughs> this guy... Finger zumped. Look, we'll see who's been gazumped when th when this world ends. Yeah. I've got somewhere to go, yeah. right? And I know you'll be calling me up, saying, "Oh, can I come with you?" I've got, got no, like two square foot. foot. <laughs> no, I've got eight. You're gonna have to stand <laughs> deadly still <laughs> on the moon in your two square foot. I've got about There's no acres. place for Suzanne. It'll just yeah. be you. Twelve it's off, it, love. It's well. all it's all those people with big heads and web feet that've been buying it all these years. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, right. right. Go on. Anyway, play a record. Tell us a story after it. We've been chatting for so Sorry, Carl. No, let's play a record. Play a tune. We'll come back with this. What's this? Another ghost story? No, oh, oh, let's play my, one of my favourite songs of all time, because I'm going on holiday and getting into a lovely, serene move. Serene Sorrento is probably from that. Uh, it's Neil Young, after the gold rush. Beautiful. Still to come, that competition as well. Look forward to that. Carl's quiz. Yeah. What an amazing track Beautiful that is. Tune, yeah. Neil Young, Dynamite. after the gold rush. So go on, Carl. Sorry. Go on, Carl. So let's take us back a few steps, Carl. What, what's, what's the story? Right, so I did some research. Right. <laughs> Let, let's just recap again. The guy, there was a guy you read about who had his head chopped off, he was guillotined. Yeah. He had said to the people around him, Count I am blinks. going to blink once I've had my head cut off to so show the brain can still, or the brain yeah. can continue to work after, yeah. after yeah. death. Okay, so yeah, we queried that. So y you weren't having any of it? Well no, possibly for a few seconds till the, the oxygen stops being fed to the cells because the blood has drained away. But you know, no nothing spectacular. So right, go on. Well, along the similar sort of lines, right? This is quite a few years ago. Um, this fella sort of upset the royal family doing something, right? Uh -huh. So they said that this isn't good. It wasn't been out under that jubilee thing, was I it? Can't, I can't remember what it was. And they said, right, <laughs> that was terrible. We're yeah. gonna uh, we're gonna cut your head off. Um, you know, oh. you gotta you gotta show people that you can't be doing what you've been doing. What was this? No, the nineteen seventies? When you say a couple of years ago, you mean maybe sort of? Was it the olden days when ages the phones weren't very good? Ages ago. Yeah. Ages ago, sure. So, um, so, so yeah, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. So <laughs> very philosophical. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. Yeah. When you watch news coverage, right this yeah, was enough. literally ages ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, go Simon on. Sharma's history of Britain. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so and even before that, which is young <laughs> yeah. before when it was all mental and different. <laughs> so Sorry, Carl. Go on. So he's having his head cough, and he's but no, he's resigned to it's it. It's a day before. He's kind of got it into his head now that I'm not going to have my head uh, much longer. Sure. So he said, let's let's make use of this. Yeah. <laughs> He said, uh, <laughs> I wonder how long, like, the body can stay alive yeah. without me head on it, <laughs> right? So they were like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh. Hoover. So. The jailers? Whoever he was the asking. Rats. These jailers with one eye. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Get that thug. So he said, no, look, wait a minute, I've got an interesting scientific experiment, jailer. Well, yeah. fair enough. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he said, what I want to do, right? He said, um, you know, surely it's, it's my last right. You know, I'm gonna mm. be I'm gonna be dead tomorrow. Sure. So um, let's he do a test. He didn't draw it out this long, did he? Yeah. He said, let, let's 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 test this out. You know, he yeah, said, do yeah. us a favour. He said, you know, it's my last day. Um, what I want you to do is, you're gonna cut me head off. Let's put a white line on the floor. Right. And see if you know, because there's no point asking how far he can sort of walk without an head if there isn't a line because you, you don't know what to count, do you know what I mean? If it's just, if he loses his head and he's running around all over the place, you can't yeah, really count that's that. not impressive enough, yeah. So, so they said, let's make a white line. Sure. Yeah. Who said this? He did or they did? I think they started to join in with him and saying, well, let's make yeah. this a- Sure. Yeah. You're <laughs> guessing, go on. So, uh, <laughs> so they got Norris McWhirter down. <laughs> <laughs> the Guinness people. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So they said, Let's get this white line. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Dedication's all he needs. We'll, we'll do this, we'll do this tomorrow. And he said, all right, I'll yeah. see you in the morning. Yeah. So <laughs> see you in the morning! I 
I'll see you in the morning. Night night, sleep tight. <laughs> bye bye. Uh, I love the fact that Carl knows exactly what was said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. He doesn't know the story yeah. or what order it is in yeah. or when but it he was. He knows exactly what was said. Says what, but he knows the intricacies. <laughs> All right then, see you in the morning. Mm, bye. Little kissy kissy kissy. <laughs> oh, I'm not, I'm not like that. Oh, you joker. Oh, don't let the bed bugs bite. Yeah. Anyway. So uh, he gets up. Do you want a paper yeah. tomorrow? No, I'm all right. Go on. He gets up mm. and they say, right, you know, today's the day and that. And he said, well, you know, I've got, <laughs> got used to the idea. So yeah. here's, here's a white line for you. Got <laughs> used to the idea. <laughs> go on. So, uh, so they go, right, are you ready then? And he said, I go on. And they cut his head off and the body walked 32 steps without <laughs> a head. Wow. 32 steps. Incredible. And that's, that's, that's the lesson, really. Did it get as far as the white, it walked along the white line, did it? Yeah, it stayed along the white line, did 32 steps and then started to stumble a bit and it just fell over. Yeah, yeah. But, it you know, it was a test that your body can still keep alive for a little bit. Yeah. When, when you've lost your head. Absolute twaddle. <laughs> Absolute twaddle. <laughs> what, what do you reckon you can do then without an head? Uh, how, how many steps? Nothing. There'd be muscular spasm, right? Yeah. It, it would twitch uh, a bit. It would, yeah. You could not distinctly take 32 steps. Mm -hmm. The body could, well don't- Yeah. yeah. Oh, is yeah. the doctor still on the line? Yeah. The fellow that bought six parrots? Yeah. And uh, you know, you could have got 32 steps. Right, so you don't believe that- doing a bit of line dancing. Right, you don't believe that for <laughs> something that you do believe that a cockroach can live a week without an head. It can. Hmm. Slightly different. Slightly different kettle of fish there. Why? Well, mm, insect to- uh, human <laughs> is is the, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, that difference. There's not that much difference in well, some insects. Do you know that a snake has a heart and lungs and kidneys and stuff? Go on. No, well I'm just saying. So you're making out as if like they're a totally different like species. species. <laughs> I am. I am making that. I mean, call me old-fashioned. Do you know what you're talking about? Mate? I don't <laughs> want you embarrassing yourself, Rick. <laughs> yeah, I am suggesting they're totally different beings. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Um, now, Carl, uh, the, the the cockroach is is a very different thing. The interesting there is that it lives. It lives by its head because a lot of it's on. Uh, 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 there's some of them are phototropic, chemotropic. Some of them just literally have uh, irritation and muscle memory. I mean, they do have a central nervous system, but it, it, it's it's very different. So if you lose the head, it bypasses a lot of that anyway. All this is running around. The reason it dies is because it can't take on water. But it's very different to a man, <laughs> right, having consciousness and then losing that, and the body's still going. Now I remember. I think I remember what I was going to do here. Yeah, so I'm going to carefully walk. Like 32 steps along this white line. I imagine you just go looking out going, oh, missed a bit. Yeah. Um, maybe the head was in the corner going, left! <laughs> yeah. Left, you <laughs> left! Oh, he's not. Ooh. Well, let's just put it out. I mean, if, if, if anyone listening has, uh, has maybe had a relative <laughs> beheaded, <laughs> maybe in a hor horrendous car accident, <laughs> but they got up, maybe they, they went for a walk, uh, they, you know, they, they, they had a little chat. Before oh, they passed dear on. Carl. Get in touch. You oh, know, you, Carl, you, 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 you are my favourite being. You are my favourite species. Now, you, Carl, may not be particularly different genetically <laughs> from a cockroach. <laughs> you are, generally speaking. Why can cockroaches speaking. do that? Why whoever made them went- Let's play a record. Do, do you know what, when, when I told him this fact, I send him little facts on text messages just to inflame his, you know, interest. I just sent him a cockroach can live nine days without its head. Mm. He texted back, what's the point of that? Yeah. What's the point of They're that? They're not doing experiments, these cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, a, it's a boring last week to have. <laughs> And he went, and on top of all that, you're thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it's the worst week of your life, isn't it? That week without your head. Play a record. Play a record, Carl. Competition time next. Oh. oh. He's a call. Look at his little face. Oh, Look at his little face. If you've not heard Carl's competition. <laughs> oh, he could live without an head. Eminem. Bit late there, weren't you, Carl? Put your little headphones on. Cleaning out my closet. What are you doing? I've got to stuff her face with, um, toilet paper. Oh. Do the, do the competition. Yeah. Do you know, we, when we were writing the, sh the TV show, um, I was filming it just for our own amusement, just to sort of, uh, I suppose more as a document, really, so that if there was ever, a, you know, a court of, court of law that needed, uh, evidence of Ricky Gervais's, I don't know what it is, really, sickness, <laughs> annoyance. He did this for about two hours. He's, you see what he's doing now? He's and stuffing his face with toilet roll. Yeah. Um. And pushing the lips out so I can just show him the teeth. Yeah. You know, that actually makes me want to be sick. I know. <laughs> yeah, actually, he gag a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. Good. Well, while Ricky does that, Carl, it's time for your quiz. See, this is like, yeah, this is on telly. Right. An example. You have to be quiet or you've got to take that toilet paper out of your okay. mouth. I'm really serious because it's right. really annoying. Okay. You're gonna be quiet? Yeah. 
Right, an example of the game, just in case people didn't hear the launch of it last week. Um, it's, it's a song title, um, I Tell a Little Story, and that song, and that little story is a, a, a song, innit? Yeah. Right, so, um, say for example, um... What did we do last week? What did we do last oh, week? Oh, the, the woman who, uh... Oh yeah, a woman who really wants to, um, like, have a bath because she stinks. Yeah. But she can't because if she had a bath or a shower or a wash or whatever, she'd end up killing herself. Yes. No, right. he didn't say that. He didn't what? say she'd end up killing herself. Well, anyway, as an example, that would be one of the stories. Yeah, she's the electric. Answer, yeah. The answer there is she's, she's electric. Yeah, can't she end. couldn't have a shower because she would have ended up killing herself. Yeah. yeah. Right? So this week's then, and don't say it if you know it because the idea is that people can go right. right? Um, there's this bloke and he, he, he buys a new house, mm -hmm. right? And he's well happy with it. His, his girlfriend moves in with him and stuff. And she says, right, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's, let's clean it up a bit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, straight away it'll be worth more money. Uh -huh, good mm. idea. So she, he says, right, you do the kitchen and I'll do upstairs and that. And she's stripping the kitchen down and, uh, he goes upstairs and he's in the bedroom and notices, uh, little, little hole to the attic. Oh, right, brilliant. Right. So he goes, oh, I wonder how much room's up there, you know, yeah. I've never weighed it up. So he goes up there and it's all like dusty and a mess. And he goes, this could make a good bedroom, this. Yeah, yeah. So he's, he starts cleaning it all out, puts all the rubbish, like, bins the rubbish straight away and there's little boxes with bits in that oh. don't belong to him. So I wonder what's in here, yeah. right? So he opens one of the boxes, there's like a little lamp. Oh, right. right. And he goes, this might be worth a few quid, yeah. right? And he rubs it. Magic lamp. And all like, all the room goes all sparkly and stuff. And he goes, oh, what's going on? And then this fella appears, right, in a nice sort of, uh, <coughs> in a nice sort of, uh, pair of 501s. Right. And he says, what do you want? I know it already. So all the, all the first bit is irrelevant. Yeah, but it's about building the story, isn't it? So don't say anything. Do you think you know it? Steve, yeah. do you know it? I don't. So I just right. quickly recap the end there. I, I almost missed the end. Oh so God. there he, you go. He's in, he's in the attic, right? Yeah. His missus is still downstairs. She's not up there. Okay. Right? He's on his own. And he cleans this lamp, right? Yeah. And this, this fella appears out of all this smoke and he's wearing a nice pair of 501s and he's wearing a shirt and, uh, there you go. What's, what's, what's the song? What song are you thinking of? The lines are going mental. Because it's going so live. easy. Let's let's play a record, Carl. We'll come back and we'll and we'll find out if anyone's got that right. That's a great one, Carl. Really. All right. Did you just come up with that? Literally in the last ten yeah. minutes. Genius. <laughs> this is genius. Definitely. I mean, it, if those calls aren't from major TV companies, <laughs> I don't know. It's. It, I mean, dynamite stuff. A lot of them are. What's his name's lawyer? Simon yeah, Mayer. Simon Mayer. That's my favourite thing I've done for years. Yeah, not bad, not bad. That's great. Back to form there. So, uh, yeah, okay, line. The, the lines are going mental just because it's easy. Go on then. So I first think one to get it. The first one to get it, but... Well, it's not that though, Rick. I mean, uh, Carl has, has just decided to revise the actual rules of the competition. Yeah. So that, we've decided, is very easy. So that's now a qualifier. And so then they have to answer one live. Exactly. So whoever gets that one right can, can play it for a quick big money. one as well? Because some people will lose the will to live. Yeah. Just get, cut to the chase. And, uh, because um, they've got a qualify now, we're throwing an office DVD that I'm yeah, ready you'll sign yet. that, won't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> that increases its value yeah. by 42 <laughs> pence. <laughs> right, so we'll, go on. We'll, we'll just go live, yeah? Hello, XFM. Yeah, hi, how's it going? I'm not too bad. Oh. Not too bad. Listen, um... A very, very quick recap, Carl, if you will, please, for the, uh, for the, for the people listening. Very quick. Right, um... A man ends up in a loft. Man's, after moving into this house and yeah. that, yeah. uh, he's in the loft. And he's tidying up, his missus is downstairs doing the kitchen because that needed doing. He's up there, he's cleaning up, emptying the boxes, he finds a little, like, a little... He rubs a lamp, a fella comes out wearing 501s. What's the song? What, what's the song, mate? Are you talking to me? Yeah, yeah. sorry, yeah. Well, look, look, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm sitting in this bar, right, I'm not ringing up relating to anything that's going on right now. I'm after one of these armbands to go and meet Bowie on Monday. Can you help me out? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Piss off. <laughs> you can't say that to our public. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> People, I, what I can't bear is, is people begging, Rick, on the radio. <laughs> you know what I can't bear it. Is that the Australian people bloke? He's got the British Springsteen tickets. tickets. Hello, XFM. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Are you phoning up for an arm band? No, Gene no. Okay, Genie. great. Gene Genie, of course it is. Gene, well done. Well done. Right, what, what's so your name? So, uh, everyone else can, uh, uh, ring off now, because, uh, this, this, uh... Well, she uh, might not take the challenge. <laughs> what, what's your name? <laughs> Which will. Hello? What's your name? Christina. Christina. Right, do you want to take on the challenge? 
Yeah. Yeah? Oh, right, well, so this is for, yeah. she's already won a couple of CDs, this is for the Office DVD. Right. Okay. okay. Signed by Ricky Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So this, this is the same game again, but mm -hmm. we're doing it live. Right? Okay. So Good this luck. is a song title. Right, there's this, um, there's this insect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it already. Right? <laughs> yeah. And it's, uh, it's in its, it's in its little, like, nest. Mm-hmm. And all the other insects, all its mates and that, are really, like, working, they're grafting hard, they're tidying up. Some of them are going out getting the food. Some of them have even got heads, they're still working. Some of them are, like, you know, rushing around, but there's this one insect who's just mm. sat there with its feet up. And it's like, you know, just doing nothing. It's annoying all the other ones, but it's sat the there. The Ricky Gervais bug. And it's, it's <laughs> sat there doing nothing, having a little, like, fag and that. What's the song? I don't know. Oh, it's my not. God, I'm brainless. Um, hold on, I don't know this either. So, obviously it's a type of insect, that's why you've avoided saying what it is. So it's, so it's something like lazy ant, lazy bee. Well, um, then we shall throw it back up and, uh, to the oh, public. No, and I hope this, I hope this poor woman has <coughs> called in and now got a stupid one. But Christina's lost it now, she's hasn't she? No, she's blown it, Rick. Oh, oh sorry. You it's only because cool. you changed oh, the rules halfway through. Anyway. She, she hasn't got a DVD player, so she's not bothered. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> right. Cheers, Cheers Christina. Then, Christina. Bye. Bye. See you later. So, so we can so throw that back out then, can we? Well, yeah. I don't know. Is there anyone on the phone? Yeah, uh, go on. Take the next person. So what was it? There was some bugs. There was a bug, and one of them wasn't doing any work. It's it. Oh, loads of them are working really hard. Sure. This one's just sat there doing oh, nothing, annoying them all. So XFM. Hello. Hello. I'm clear to say, it's in Carl Perkinson's mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like him. Yeah. I like him. I like him. Hello? Hello. Hello. Oh yeah, is it um, Animal Nitro by Slade? No, it's not. Good you answer. Good answer. Is it a good answer? That doesn't well. make any sense, does it? <laughs> <laughs> it does, it? I know, like yeah. Carl does. Yeah. Hello, yeah. XFM. Hello. Hello. Is it Ichiku Park? No. No. Itchy Coo Park. Bugs are itchy, aren't they? Yeah, sure. I think they're stabbing oh, in the dark. They're, they're, starting to, they're starting to think like Carl, which <laughs> yeah, I like. Go on, next one. I like XFM. Uh, is it Scratch Pervert? No, it's not. Scratch Pervert. Oh, She's come out of nowhere there. It's good. It's Definitely. something to do with Lazy Bug or Lazy Ant or Hello, Lazy XFM. Bee. Hello. Hello. Hi, is it Beetlebum? Excellent. Oh. Beetlebum, of course. Beetlebum by Blair. Sat around doing nothing. It's right, bum. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I don't win anything now. Well done. No, you don't. Yes, no. she does. She wins the office DVD. Take her name and address. <laughs> she doesn't, because she didn't do the qualifier. She knew it was Jean Genie. Oh, Carl, let someone win some. It's lads, painful lads, enough lads. listening to you for ten minutes. Lads, can we Give just come down from things? Moment? Lads, can we just come down for a moment? Once God. again, well, I just draw you to my point at the top of the show. When you were pissing about outside in the office, <laughs> we could have been working through this. Yeah. We could have been figuring out the rules. What's her name? We could have had maybe some music, that? some jingles. Who's that? Who's that. What's, your, what's your name again? Yeah. Can we do this off air? Let's play a record. Yeah, no, he's not gonna give her an address out. We're rubbish. <laughs> this is we? so rubbish. We are really so, so rubbish. rubbish. So what's your name? D. 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 Right, right, okay, well, right. play a record and we'll get yeah. your address, D, and we'll send you some stuff. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. You should right. come right. in an hour early. We should sort this stuff out. <laughs> this is what I've been saying all along. I've been saying we should come in and do a bit of preparation. I've got things to do. Simon I... Mayo used to come in early. That was why he He didn't have to sleep and eat breakfast. Come back around by feeder on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and our producer there. I say producer, um, Carl Pilkington. All right. All right. Yeah, we got oh, we got to slicken up this thing. If we're going to be as good as Mayo, we've got to we've got to come in early and do the work. Yeah. Let's get in at ten to one next week. <laughs> <laughs> we're not in it next week, are we? Uh, no, no, well, so no, I mean, we would be, if it weren't for the fact so that what you, you need a holiday already. You've done three weeks, but yeah, you need a little rest. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it wasn't on holiday last time. I was working. Sure. Um, so what are you just gonna do a best of, are ya? Yeah, just dig out some bits. And what are you gonna do? Just lump them together? Just, like, pick some, some favourite bits. Yeah. Right. And, uh, That'll fill up ten minutes. Well, I'll tell you what, do this then. Do the, do the, do the links then. So, well, why don't so we do some sort of stock links now then? Okay then. <laughs> do you remember that, Steve? <laughs> oh, that was a great moment. Yeah, uh, great moment. I, I'll tell you what though, I love the bit when he, well, just play well, it. Just play it. Right, so, so you there's play one. There. Oh, there's can one. you do, do a proper intro so it's like, you know, one of Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, uh, uh, what, you know what song we're gonna come out of? Just say, just say generic, like, that's a good song. Well, let's, well, no, no, let's, uh, let's work out what it okay, might be. Okay, okay, well, should, um, what do you want to start off with next week then? Well, well let's give them a few options. Okay. Give them a couple of oh, options. Uh, that was a great track by Oasis. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. 
Oasis there. Um, well, we're not actually here today, Steve. We recorded these last week. Uh, I'm on holiday. Um, what are you, you're just, you're just probably I'm chilling probably out. with a lady. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, oh, um, leave me alone. Stop phoning, ladies. This is like the, the best of, um, the best of, uh, last year. And we're gonna kick off with a, with a classic clip. Who can forget this? <laughs> All right. So, really? like so that? just yeah. yeah, then just weave that in. Yeah, and then come out of that, come into a record or something. So I come out of another record. Just yeah. just one more, just in case I need it. Okay. Um. Uh. Oh, I don't know. Um. That was Bob the Builder there. <laughs> shouldn't, shouldn't really be playing that on XFM, but stupid car, stupid. <laughs> don't know what you're <laughs> thinking, mate. You buffoon. Yeah, you're uh, an imbecile. Oh, okay. I don't know. Ah, oh, great track. I love that. Yeah, beautiful. Um. Wow. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. with it. Yeah, no, come on, uh, let's get these right. He needs to use these uh, next okay. week. Okay. Um, another great track. Can we just do this what? later? We got, I've got to go. I've got to run away. to the airport. Yeah. Yeah, but this isn't gonna work. It's a mess. Well, just- it, Oh, yeah, well, like that. Well, that'll be fine, then, for this show. <laughs> <laughs> it can slot right in, Carl. Yeah. I'm talking uh, of a mess, mate. Your competition. Yeah. It was a shambles today. I mean, last week we gave it the benefit of the doubt because it was the first time we'd done it, but you've got to think it through, mate. You can't be making it up on the spot like that and changing the rules. Yeah. I'm sorry, mate. I mean, I know you did it with the best intentions, but it was- it I'm was so worried that people think we get at Carl and everything. Yeah. But, but that was a appalling. Yeah, it was I mean, terrible. It was, and it was interminable. Like, he gets, I think you've got to compress those stories. You've got to tighten them right He up. gets paid to be like 30 quid extra oh. for this as well. So, I mean, it's, he's getting good money well, yeah. well, for well, it. Listen, right? You say what? that you've got to compress it, right? I, the way I look at that competition, it's like Columbo, right? <laughs> the murder bit at the end is done in like three minutes, but you drag it out for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> so you sort of make it exciting and like, oh, I wonder where he's going with this. Sure. And it yeah. worked. You know, D, D Hudson, she's walking away with the DVD. She's <laughs> laughing. <laughs> Yeah, but Dee's fine. She's the only one who's gained. Everyone else has had a miserable time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, yeah, of course she's happy. She's won something. But what about the listeners? There's yeah. no entertainment. Like, I there. mean, they're loving it now because me and Steve are on, and this is scintillating stuff. Yeah, this is dynamite you know, stuff. this is amazing stuff. Talking about we're not going to be here next week and doing next week's links. Yeah, because I can't be bothered to come in early. Um, okay, there. Uh, wow, excellent. Um, well, it's uh, that's quarter to two, Steve, on mm. XFM. I've enjoyed this nine. wonderful collection of <laughs> our greatest moments. Yeah, there's still more to come. You'll be next back. Well, next week, won't you? Yeah. I'll be, I'll be back next week. Okay, I'll do the last one. Well, I hope you enjoyed, um, some of the best of moments there with, uh... I'm not gonna use these. Why not? Well, they're a mess. Forget it. Forget it. Well, forget it. <laughs> we'll do them in a bit when you're done. I'm We've not. Tell me. I cannot do it. When's your plane? It doesn't matter when the plane is. I've we can do it in a bit. I'm definitely not I'm doing not, it. I'm not wasting my time going through that. Well, I'm not doing it then. So we'll waste our time. Right, right. Forget it My favourite suede song there. Stay together. Bye, suede. Stay together. Well done. Well yeah. done. That's what you're being paid for. Well, no, because it could have been a suede song sung by Atomic Kitten. Sure. And like I said, that's my favourite suede song by Atomic Kitten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> you know. Thanks for that. Do you think this is the worst show we've ever done? Uh, no, I mean, we've done some god awful shows in the past. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, some real grim ones in the past. Okay. Do, do you think people see through it even before we tell them that we're not really. Cutting the mustard, yes. putting the effort in. We got. We yes. had nothing to say last week. No, I don't think anyone's fooled. I think really I think people, some people are tolerating us because they quite like your TV work. But I mean, other than that, I think they. And know the we play good music. Well, I, we, don't, we, don't skim on the, we don't skim on the tunes. But I, if I was listening to this, I'd be thinking I could do a better job. I'd be leaving if I worked in like some. If I worked in like a bakery or something, <laughs> and I was like, I, I hate this job, and I'm, and I'm listening to us, you know, gibbering about on the radio. I'd be livid. I'd be angry. Really? Yeah. I mean, but if this I'm, was a BBC show, I, I, oh, I'd go mental. Why? No, Why? Well, because I'd be paying a license fee and everything. So oh, okay. Yeah, it, would, it would feel like it was my money being squandered. But we don't have to do it. This is advertisers' money being squandered. Yeah. You know, this is big corporations. Screw them. <laughs> yeah. And people they haven't paid anyway, have they? A lot of them haven't. They probably yeah. paid for the batteries in their radio. Maybe if they're listening. We're yeah, yeah. sorry about that. Yeah. Um, I, well, I feel guilty just for wasting their time, Rick. But next week's going to be a clip show again. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a clip Carl's show. going to do. We decided that Carl's going to just do the links next week yeah. by himself. Or maybe just get a guest, a guest uh, hosting, maybe a, 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 you know, like, what was that good? Dennis Norden? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Norden type. You yeah. know, um, in the Sony Awards, you hand in one show, don't you? Yeah. We could hand in next week's, couldn't we? Because it was broadcast in this year, just that it's a clip show from years ago. Yeah. You, you know, because you, uh, you could hand in I Love 1975, couldn't you? In the BAFTAs or something. Yeah, you could. Yeah. <laughs> so, should we, are you, are you, you're even bored, aren't you? You're bored with this show as well. This is terrible attitude. I'm just. It, I we're thought, allowed to be bored. We're the we're the talent. I right? thought you were going to give us like ten minutes after the show to do them, but I can't. I've got to go. Yeah. Right. 
Do you want to wrap it up, Steve? Because Ricky's taxi might be waiting now. So no, it's listen to this attitude, Ricky. You going to put up with that? Don't I'm you know who you are? I, I just don't believe it. They uh, they should be chomping at the bit to get. They, they should. I can't believe their luck. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Sure. And uh, do I get treated any different? Sorry. No. Yeah. Worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Answers on a postcard if you can figure <laughs> out what that <laughs> sentence meant. <laughs> <laughs> and there'll be a DVD on its way to you. Listen, um, we had a, an email from Glenn and Sharon, and uh, Sharon was rushed into hospital last week, and they uh, wanted us to play something for, uh, uh, her. she's back now and she's okay, but, uh, but anyway, uh, they always listen to the show, they're big fans. They asked for some Nick Drake, I'll play some Nick Drake next time, but, um, but instead I thought we could play a, a classic Dylan track. I know yeah. you're a big fan of Dylan. Yeah. Just Like a Woman, it's just beautiful, and, uh, and that's my song for the ladies. We won't see you next week, Ricky's away, but there should be a hilarious, uh, compilation for our best <laughs> moments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look forward to that. 104.9 XFM. Uh, you alright? This is Carl, uh, producer of, uh, Ricky Gervais and Steve Merchant. They're not about today. Ricky's on holiday. Uh, Steve couldn't be bothered. So, um, I'm left here with all the dats. Uh, that's a digital audio tape. Uh, of all the, uh, of all the shows they've done since they've been here. Over the last, uh, I don't know, year and a half or something. So, uh, we'll play you uh, some of the best bits. Alright, so, uh, here's the first bit. I, I just wish we could maybe tape the bits we're not on air, just because that's when Carl comes into his own. Yeah. He just said to me, I was, I don't know what I was doing, I was sort of like pottering around, dancing around, doing something annoying probably, and he just looked at me, I don't know, and he was looking at me, and I looked back and he went, Have you ever used a Y front properly? Genius. It's a great question because the answer is definitely no. Definitely Has no. Has does anyone use their Wi Fi properly? And by that I mean get your winky out of the little sort of um slot provided, as yeah. opposed to like put it to one side or pull them down or yeah. whatever. Has anyone used a Wi Fi properly? I don't think I've ever done it. I don't think I've ever done it. I've never seen anyone in a toilet doing it, Rick. You should be looking. <laughs> I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> I caught, I caught ya. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> actually how you prove people are gay. <laughs> yeah. You get them into this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, it's a trap. Uh, yeah, it's a trap. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was the trap. Yeah. I'm not gay, by the, the way. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't prove I was gay, I double bluffed you. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I knew the old gay trick. <laughs> I thought it was the old gay lord say no thing. That is another method. Oh, yeah, there's, a, there's innumerable methods of doing it. That's how Oscar Wilde was caught. Yeah. Yeah. What happened there? Well, the judge went to him. Uh, did you see that film last night? Gay lord say no, and he went no, and they went take him away. Yeah. <laughs> take him down to the cells. Yeah, take him to Reading. It is true. Um, is well. It originated in America. Yeah. So many of these things do. It's yeah. a brilliant point, Carl. I'd like to hear from anyone, anyone listening who's- and I mean, uh, well, they'll just lie, wouldn't they, I suppose? Yeah. I don't even use, uh, sort of flies. No? Usually. I sort of, just, sort of, sort of pull my t wi uh, my sort of tracksuit. So yeah. That's why I wear sort of like elasticated waist yeah. brands all the time. Exactly. Just sort Speed. of like- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You gotta get in there with the <laughs> minimum of effort. Yeah. We and out. Sure. Sure. Often, I won't shake. No, oh, no, to my detriment because it <laughs> often leaks out a little bit later, oh. doesn't it? Ever been out on a date with a girl where it's just trickled down your leg <laughs> and you wish it hadn't, and you're thinking, <laughs> "What if she gets my trousers off later? She might smell or see it." What? <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I said there. <laughs> right, uh, Rick. I had for Christmas something which I think might excite you and interest yeah. you because I know you're obsessed and interested by facts. Yeah. Don't fiddle with the microphone. Well, I was just looking at what it was underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a book, uh, it's just facts and trivia. It's edited by Sir Isaac Asimov, who oh, I think's yeah. dead. So I don't know when my parents bought this book. I assume it's sort of from a second hand shop or something. Right. It's quite long, but I got it for Christmas. I keep meaning to bring it in, because there are, generally the facts are quite sensible in here. And I like to think if Isaac's been involved, they're probably substantiated. It's not like, kind of just this nonsense on the web. Or, I think or, that this is probably- Or true. up in Greg's The Bakers that <laughs> Carl exactly. gets most of his facts from. <clears throat> the ancient Egyptians trained baboons to wait on tables. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, fascinated. Brilliant. That's fantastic. But, uh, what's, what, what my point about that is, why did they stop? Yeah. It's genius, a genius idea. Did, Would you not want to go to a restaurant where they had baboons serving? No, I'll but tell you what happened. So it might have been like the Planet of the Apes and they sort of rebelled. <laughs> one of them could talk, one of them could take his order, and one day when it went, um, uh, do you want fries with that? And the bloke got really annoyed and said, answering back, and then there was a, some sort of rebellion. Right, 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 yeah. right. The Planet of the Apes isn't true, is it? It's, it's not, it's not, it's, it's not a documentary. Right, okay. I wonder, cause what I like the idea of having baboons is the fact that I reckon they're 
like I have tr tr difficulty, and I'm sure you do, Carl. Like uh, working out that sort of ten percent, <laughs> you know, on a bill. Yeah. I reckon baboons would find that particularly hard. I reckon you could get away with under tipping them all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Just not leaving enough and just legging it. <laughs> exactly. They go away and you go sucker. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I'd love to see yeah. some baboon <laughs> restaurants. If there's yeah. any restaurateurs out there, so tell us comment on someone. If you do go, go to a restaurant and you wait on us, please don't order the banana daiquiri because it comes half eaten. They can't help their little selves. They really can't. They're okay with like you know beef and steak and chips and all that. But you know, there's a little bag. I go. Do you? Bag? Can you imagine that the baboons serving at waiting tables? It's genius. Just stop to think about that. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's absolutely dynamite. Yeah. That's See, a good zoos fact. would be a lot more popular if there was like the canteen. And you could go. If in they were serving tickets to two. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. one child row. Okay, go through there. Okay. I think they should do other things, like in, you know, in the Flintstones, they used to mix cement in that bird's kind of- Pelican, beam. yeah, yeah. Just, we should start doing that again. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's- that also happened in ancient times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. According to the Flintstones. Be yeah, before they had proper cement mixers, that's what <laughs> that they did. Was, that was how they it, did it. Definitely, just, yeah. Just, uh, animal facts. I remembered one in the week. Um, Go on. There <laughs> was- do you know them two gay American men who have- have tigers? Okay, the two gay ones, oh, yeah, go on. Two possibly gay ones. Yeah, let, let's not worry about libel law um, anymore, then. Or, yeah, if you on. shave a tiger's head... <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Right, okay. You've got to treat that sentence with a lot more reverence than you did. <laughs> Think what you're saying. If you shave a tiger's head... Not just its head, its whole body. If oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, yeah. Sorry, I thought, you, I thought you were getting weird. Go on, then, go yeah, on. if you shave a tiger, yeah, go on. It's still stripy underneath. The yeah. skin, the skin's... Is it like rock? <laughs> it goes all, it the, like way all the way through. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's amazing. Where did you hear that one? That's I remembered that. Like, I was, was that a drunk just shouting it in the street? <laughs> 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 I shaved a tiger and it's still striving. <laughs> Get out of here! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know a polar bear. Polar bear's um, skin is actually um, black, and its fur is transparent, not white, and it gives the illusion. So it uh, gets all the radiation possible from the sun, but it's still camouflaged. I didn't understand that, Rick. Sorry, you lost me. If it's skin's black, a polar bear skin's and black, its fur is translucent, and its fur is translucent. So why is it white when we? Well, it's just because the the light hits it and the sun reflects. Off yeah, it. and it makes it look white. Yeah, so if you look at each individual hair, it's actually translucent. So at night, hair. it would be black. <laughs> well, everything is. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, not bright stuff, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> You've embarrassed yourself. Play a record. XFM 104.9. Lovely that one. Now. Again, I broke the rules in the week. I met up with Carl. Oh, I had lunch with him. And, uh, we were chatting and having a, having a cup of tea. And it got onto one of Carl's favourite programmes was The Tales of the Unexpected. Ah, oh, of course. And all I can think is that he's probably the only person in Britain where they were unexpected. <laughs> 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 I mean, to him, when that, that twist came in, he'd go, gee, I can't. Yeah. Oh God! Can't believe so it was the tree that did it. <laughs> I mean, he was probably the only. And, I, and we were telling all these stories of horror, and he liked horror stories. And I, and I told him this story, and, uh, and I don't know if this had come across the way, but I told him this story. Um, it was a, it was a short. It was a horror short. This was a, a film you saw, was it? Yeah, yeah. And um, what it was, it started off just had been a car crash. You see, it's a horrendous wreck, and you saw it from the point of view of the person in the car, and he was calling for his mate, and he was going, Dave. And he sort of, he sort of looked over and saw a body without a head that had been thrown at He goes, oh no, Dave, Dave. And then into the field of view came Dave, his mate, and looked at him with a look of horror and then it sort of went black and you realised that he was just a head and it had been his body. Oh wow. Right? Yeah. And I said, then, then it came up at the end, um, uh, at the, uh, uh, executions in the French Revolution, um, people experienced consciousness for, you know, and he went, he went, oh. No, he said, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be for that long. And then he went, if it was a chicken, it would work. <laughs> Imagine remaking <laughs> that film, but it's two <laughs> chickens <laughs> in horrendous car crash. <laughs> it Their would, own fault for driving me. <laughs> 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 it would work. Uh, no. No, he wasn't having that. Yeah. No, it was too long. I think he said, how long was this film? Went, oh, no, five minutes. He went, no. <laughs> it would work if it was a chicken. I like the way that Carly was something like, when you t relate an incident like that, he's appalled and offended and annoyed by the people that made it, even though he's yeah. never seen it. Oh, he's, he's, get, he's annoyed, yeah. Do you have a favourite uh, Tales of the Unexpected, one that you remember particularly that shook you up? Yeah, we were talking about the one on, um, where, uh, there's some woman in prison. Have you seen that one? No, I can't remember them all. Right? This woman's in prison. Yeah. And, uh, she gets a bit friendly with the guy who takes the dead bodies out. Right. And, uh, he said, I can get you out of here. So what you've got to do, right? You've got to, uh, I don't know, at midnight, 
Creepy. When you, well, when you hear the bell toll, you know, that means there's, a, there's been a, yeah, a uh, dead body. Yeah, yeah, there's been a dead body. So what you've got to do is go into like the uh, place where all the dead bodies are, get on the get in the first coffin on the right, and then I'll come along and carry you out, and you can run away and escape. Yeah. Right. So she goes, yeah, all right. Then so she hears the bell go. I'll, no, I'll, I'll I'll bury you, right, and then I'll come I'll come back later and dig you up. Right. Yeah, but that's that, the that point. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Trust me, Carl. It right, really matters. Okay. Listen. I, I don't right. know if I'm going to ruin this for people at home. Yeah. Can I just skip to the f end? I would imagine that she gets buried and he doesn't come back and she has to get no, buried alive. Be better than yeah. that. So she gets in the coffin and uh, she's lying there for ages. She's and buried. She can feel a bit of movement going on, so she's obviously, you know, being carried somewhere, so she's thinking this is it and getting out. And, uh, I mean, she's lying there for ages and thinking, why isn't someone coming and lifting the lid off this? Do you know what I mean? Letting me get out. So she's really bored. She gets a lighter out, right? Lights it. To have a look at who she's lying on. It's only the fella who said she'd it help escape. Oh, how bad is that? That is <laughs> how bad is that? <laughs> <laughs> so it is quite important that she's buried alive, then, isn't it? In retrospect, you realise that the jeopardy is that she's buried alive yeah. and can't get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It makes it so much worse, doesn't it, than just like lying in the morgue and going, "Actually, I'm getting out of here." Yeah, this isn't going to work. Look at Carl's face. Having told yeah. that, he's so pleased. His face is lit up. He's beaming like yeah. a child. Is Have that, you seen any? Is that your favourite horror thing ever? What was that one you told me about with the uh, with the porn? That was a good one. Oh, this was fantastic. Right, <laughs> right. There was this. There was this. Uh, Sorry, can I just check now? We're just remembering classic episodes of the Tales. No, this is now, this we? is this is important. Well, I saw one <laughs> right. I saw one um, on Tales and Expect, right, and it was um. Uh, this, these two gents, um, uh, what they used to do, they look, look down the obituaries and they'd blackmail, um, the, the wife or the son of a, a dead eminent person, like might be a priest or a doctor or something like, and they'd go and they'd say, he bought some, um, erotic, uh, um, stuff from us, um, before he died and he owes, a uh, hundred guineas and all this sort of stuff. And, uh, and they'd pay up because it'd be so embarrassing, they just didn't want them to say, just pay him, yeah. right? And this one bloke said, um, who are these people? I'll meet with them. And he goes round there, and he goes round, and, uh, they go, your father, he goes, my father could not have bought any erotic material from you. And he did, he goes, he couldn't have, he's blind. <laughs> right, and that was the twist. And Carl went, so it was magazines, not videos then. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> now think about it, Steve, is that so stupid? Well, presumably it was set in olden times because yeah. people- Oh, professional right. pornographers don't tend to call it, you know, <laughs> erotic material. Yeah. They tend to call it, you know, juicy jugs or whatever. <laughs> but, <laughs> more than that, I don't understand how a video is gonna be any use to a blind person either. I know that you can hear the sound, yeah. Carl. <laughs> yeah. I can hear him nodding like yeah. he's caught me out. Yeah, what sound were you here? Do, 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 oh, do, do, uh, do, do. Your meter mm. needs looking at? Yes. Cut. What's then? What's that? Then it's just noises, isn't Occasional it? groans. Yeah. Right. You okay. could listen through the wall at your neighbours. <laughs> he does. <laughs> I mean, that's why I save a lot of money. <laughs> but I thought you were going to point out, Carl, that they could have had a braille porno. Now, have yeah. you thought of that? Look, feel, feel the lumps on that. <laughs> exactly. Think about it, Carl. Can think about it. You're excited now. Yeah. yeah. Your girlfriend's away, Carl. Yeah, the cheese grate is only under the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> now, she's a good looking lady. Yeah. <laughs> 104.9 XFM, hello, uh, I'm Carl, Ricky and, uh, Ricky Gervais and Steve aren't here, so we're, uh, we're playing through some of the best bits, I say the best bits, uh, it's the bits I came across first, I mean I'm not, I'm not wasting my time, I'm, I'm a busy man, you know what I mean? So, um, here's, here's another bit. What do you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh. Are you worried about do this? You, do you know, what did they do? What? Let me see what it says here. It well, says, isn't it uh, just choosing, it, ju choosing the, you know, eye colour? Well, this or, is the, or this is the, this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide, uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what, how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so, it means that, you know, wh where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot. What will us three look like in the future I mean, if listen. they're being, you know, genetically modified beautiful people? What will be, we be like? How will we be considered in That's society? Fine, yeah. But we've talked about this before, haven't we? About, uh, the cloning thing. Yeah. That's a bit weird. Yeah. But, um, I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right, you might look like some other kid 
but it's the way you've brought that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are, you know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no, but listen, right, because I remember when w when we, you know, I was growing up on this estate. This is gonna be good. Go on. No, no, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go so, on. So we don't need to worry, sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So growing up on this estate, and there was a there was this woman about four houses down, right? It's a bit rough. <laughs> all right. Didn't fancy her. Oh God, no. Right, but she had a Why? baby. Why? Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. Why was she? It was a very. So, like, being a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. And I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What does she look like? But anyone can Tattoos? clean up. Tattoos. Look like they, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which, even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try what, and make the place look nice. Yeah. Right. But she didn't, and a kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 oh, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 Eddie, whoa, 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 Eddie. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? Where did they get a right? horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Must have Has you seen a horse <laughs> in it? No. <laughs> what, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it just tied up with a bit of um, oh, that's great. I'd been Big out. Jake come <laughs> and looking <laughs> for it. I, I, I'd been out. <laughs> oh. No, so let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or after. <laughs> Where did he get a horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? He's going to say, where'd you get that from? I bought it. All right then. But we'll keep it out of the kitchen. <laughs> I don't want you going Catelyn rustling. <laughs> oh, where did he get a horse from, Carl? Just... And how long did he have it for? Until... Was he leading it or riding it? <laughs> Mum, open the door! I can't stop! I can't stop it! <laughs> open the patio door as well! I'll be... Looks like we got us a runaway! <laughs> what <laughs> do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is, they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think- He had to... a horse? Yeah, right, so- That's I... why the family didn't have any money, they'd spend it on the horse! No, exactly. I don't think, that's what I'm saying, I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway- Yeah, it's so... to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and They could not, be in the room next door. It's not buying it, it's keeping it as well. Oh, what? So, what? I, so I was like in the car with my dad, coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round. And, yeah. uh, and you know, sort of go back to uh, to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, okay. And, uh, the horse was in the lounge. <laughs> <laughs> Reading a paper. Just, just like walking around. <laughs> oh, God! This is what? And when I, when I was doing, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in, in plastic cups. What? This like, is genius! Went, <laughs> it just keeps coming! What do you mean you're trying to flog little flowers? What do you mean? <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's play a record, story. let's play a record and come back to this, because the story's gonna just wait. unravel and unravel. This is yeah, not yeah. for hours. Let's it play a track, Carl. It's deeper and deeper, it's yeah, like an onion, isn't it? We've created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse. Just walking around the land. I mean, I, I just, come from the West Country, I've never just, heard anything like that. I just think of a big sort of like orange carpet and a, 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 a rediffusion telly and this horse yeah. going, I'm fed up in here. Exactly. This is really I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. Right, play a record. Let's have uh, Velvet Underground. We've got that line. Oh, yeah, God. the classic from the first album. Uh, I'm waiting flowers. for the man. Let's come back to the horse in a second. Little flowers in pots. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh. From that classic first album, Velvet Underground and Nico, which apparently peaked at a disappointing 171 in the US charts. Think of that. And that's obviously Louis the Velvet Underground and uh, Waiting for the Man. Yeah, great track. So we were talking. Uh, we were doing White Van Man, and uh, we got onto uh, um, we got onto genetically, genetically modified babies. But and somehow then Carl we... started to a story about someone with a horse, and then he got onto. He was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers. Briefly. Well, hang on. I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was because you lived on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, the yeah. mother, the mother was a right pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's so relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but you. But well, what on. I'm trying to do is like make a picture for you, so you understand. What, so what a picture like? it is. Who did she look like? Um, bit of a, and no disrespect to her, bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, yeah. <laughs> All right? Okay. I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah. I knew it was gonna be Pauline. Did she have any tats? I've never got that close to it. Okay, alright. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse? Yeah, from, I don't know where, there was a, I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they, they kept the horse in the house with them. They kept it in the house. Did but they, they didn't have caught? it for long. No. So, and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse no, in No, what there. happened was, I was, um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? For some local charity. And they said you can do anything to, to raise money and they came out with all these ideas and I thought, that's good. What was the charity? Well, forget, well, I don't know, I thought, forget the charity. 
Yeah, that's I'm just a, a good way of making those votes. So, <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked me mum for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings off them? And, uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups. And, uh, got some soil out of the garden. Planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about 25 plants on it. Selling yeah. them for 25 pence each. Excellent. Did you sell any? Yeah, so loads. Did, they, did you just cut, you didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil? Yeah, they want to survive. <sighs> but I think people sort of thought, well, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs, because I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. So it's a bit rough. So as I went- The horse went, thank God for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> so they've been, they've been feeding me kitty cat. <laughs> so I got up to the door, and they opened the door, and it was one of them houses where no carpet, <laughs> yeah. A yeah. horse in the living room. <laughs> you know. We've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. I looked quite happy and everything because I always say that about animals. That beauty right? was on. <laughs> <laughs> well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay or in like a house with a central you know, heating? Three piece suite and sure. a telly and that. Telly and that! No, but I was saying this the other day. <laughs> and an Atari. Right? <laughs> I was walking through London. Coming on 64, yeah. rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And do you know how like homeless people always have dogs? And yeah. she said, oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it. And I said, they've got, that dog is happier than most dogs. Right. Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open. It's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat, I mean? but other than that. <laughs> no, it does eat, though. They're always all right. So that's what I was saying. I think this horse. Was was doing all right for yeah. itself. Do you know what I mean? Well, not many horses have got their own house. Exactly. For a start, yeah. But anyway, that's that's what, that's what by the by. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, this family, who's a bit, what were we talking about? It was about cloning. genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right now, what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right, Steve, you could have a baby, mm -hmm. right? And Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. It could happen, Rick. <laughs> So Come on, work with him. So you take it to the doctors, and I don't know what they do, they, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah. And, uh, get a little baby, and there it is, it looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate, you both go off and do your own things. Yep. Yeah. Right? Now, you look at Steve, Stephen, this is, you look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well, you give it good food and I'm that. a good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Yeah. Mm. Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right? So then it changes its looks, it goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right? This, this, um, this, this, this family who had a horse in the, in, you know, in, the, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying like abusing it, but it used to run around, it used to play out till like 10 at night. Yeah. Uh, it used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit. <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. No. <laughs> Chase cars! Right? What sort of chases cars? <laughs> oh, God. No. Was it called Rover? The Did it catch sticks? It's Liam, it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, and all that, like, not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. <laughs> it's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> 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 and chasing cars and that, and it became <laughs> an ugly kid. It's definitely Liam Gallagher. <laughs> And uh, that's, that's what I'm saying, right? You can uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you brought up. Brilliant. Wow. Wow. Whoa. Life. Wow. That was a hell of a point. Oh, God. God. But am I right? Uh, you're always right, Carl. All right. This is Carl, the uh, producer of Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant on XFM 104.9. We're playing out some of the best bits. Hope you're enjoying it. Here's another one. And now it's Carl's bit. It's Carl's. It's the re-education of Carl. He's like Liza Doolittle. And now he's, uh, he's coming through. Or Lawnmower Man, if you've seen that film. More like Lawnmower Man, if you've seen the film. You'll know what I mean. Um, uh, and, uh, his homework was to just study quotes, really, on, on happiness and stuff and general well-being. He's not a big happiness, uh, quote fan, are you, Carl? Not really. So what have you done? You've, you've come up with something, haven't you? Right, yeah, I told you, right? Because... A lot of these are just things you say every day. They're nothing special. Um, so what I'm doing- Well, you say them every day. <laughs> well, the sort of things you come out with and you don't even think about it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, in, they're on the TV all the time, people on the radio are saying these sort of little quotes. Sure. And, um, what I've done is, remember that programme on Channel 4, Faking It? Yeah. Where they got some, like, posh kid to be on a door and all that? 
what I've done, <laughs> I've, um... <laughs> Imagine if that was the pitch <laughs> for the show. <laughs> Dear Channel 4. <laughs> just gonna get yeah, a posture on the door or something? Yeah, yeah, come in, Carl. come in. Yeah, TV yeah. producer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, go on. So, what I've done, <laughs> this little book of quotes, uh, happiness quotes, I've, um, I've picked two that are real. Okay. And I've made one up. Right. <laughs> and we've got a guess. And you've got a guess. Okay, then. Go on. Well, I'll okay. tell you what, Rick, why don't we, when we've heard them, we won't confer. No. You'll write down yours, yeah. A, B, or C, and I'll yeah. write down mine and we'll sure. see how okay, it Okay, Carl, off you go. Right, and just because I'm, I'm looking at this book, it doesn't mean I'm actually reading. No, I know, don't no, worry, no. We're, we're clever. No, no, no we, we know, we know, we can't see, uh, yeah. like, call my bluff. Yeah, go on then. Nothing is worth more than this day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The way I see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God! My head's gonna burst. No, hang on. My head's gonna burst. No, hang, hang no, on. this might not be Carl's. Oh, it might not be. How do you know I haven't tweaked them a little bit? Yeah, good okay, point. Good enough. point. No, good point. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you got to put with the rain. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. Come on. Cat food. <laughs> Cat food, come on. It stinks a bit. But, if you don't put up with the smell, the little kitten will die. <laughs> Steve! Steve! I don't know what to say! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say! Imagine this in faking it! Imagine their faces when he says that! And they're going, oh my god. Oh. Carl, play a song, mate. <laughs> oh, we'll have to confer on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Go on in. Right. Uh, first one. Nothing is worth more than this day. Excellent. Next one. What does that mean? Well, cherish, cherish yep. now, cherish your yep. time. Okay. Because you, you, uh, you can't get it back and, yep. you know, I swear um, I saw it. carpe diem, whatever it is, seize the day and all that. Okay. If you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. Yeah, of course. Yeah, rough with the smooth. You know, it's not all plain sailing, but... You know, rainbow's beautiful, but it comes because of the rain, which you might not like, so yep. make the most of everything and, yeah, yep. good. <laughs> Cat food doesn't smell good, <laughs> but if you don't put up with it, then the little kitten will die. <laughs> right, now, Carl, that is a good effort. Now, that one's yours. I mean, obviously, right? Right. Right, no, no, but it's a good effort, right? I mean, it slipped seamlessly into the others. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it didn't. No, but it's, it's good. I mean, we knew it, we knew it was that one, but... Um, what I will say is, it's good, but what you don't know, maybe subconsciously, is, I mean, it, it, it's n very similar to, uh, the putting up with the rain and the rainbow, but what, that's good. Why do you think that? Well. What, what does mine mean? Well, uh, ev well, even though it smells bad, it's good for something. Right, so see, I, I didn't look at it like that. What, what do you look at? Uh, I, I kind of thought... Was yours more specifically about cat food, <laughs> generally? Because <laughs> <Right? laughs> you know normally they like, it's an analogy. Yeah, or a metaphor for something, you know, much well, bigger. Well, no, the way I... I mean, Do it. Dolly Parton, who I think did the rainbow, rain thing, she wasn't specifically concerned about weather conditions. No. It was a sort of general idea. Yeah, it was all about yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's what I've done. Go on. Okay. I've what, used what, an everyday thing. Yeah. And put it with today's problems, right? Go on. So, like, um... My girlfriend, yeah, um, she might like to go shopping for clothes. I hate it. Right. But because of, because I love her, I put up with it. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah? Yeah. So, you, you love that little curtain. You can't stand the smell of the stuff you gotta feed it. But because you love it, you go, well, you know, I'll put up with this just for a few minutes and then I can, like, squeeze its head later and give it a little- <laughs> <laughs> Squeeze its little head. No, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, well that's just the thing that I do with cats. <laughs> Put it in a bag and drown it in a lake. <laughs> <laughs> I can feed it and then I can throw it against <laughs> yeah, the exactly. wall. So you, yeah. didn't, you didn't see it like that, did you? No, that's very good. So it's about love, is it? It's about putting up with the bad things yep. for, for, for something you love. Yeah. Well, that's nice. But, but, that's but Carl, good. you seem now to be convinced and rather smug that you've tricked us and that you've fooled us and that we didn't understand it. Well, well I say that's your fault, not ours. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, though. I mean, look, that man in Forrest Gump, he was a bit of a nutter. <laughs> And he, he came up with the life is a box of chocolates thing. Yeah. Now, if that was in this book, you say, oh yeah, brilliant, you know, a good bit of work. But if he was sat here doing the show with you, yeah. you'd be taking the mickey out of him. Sometimes I feel he is. 
<laughs> no, but, Carl, I could, I could, in fact, if people are out there, we're too lazy, could you write down everything Carl's ever said? Because I think we could publish that. Yeah. He said one today, he saw my, um, uh, salamander, it's not a euphemism, <laughs> he saw my salamander and it's just sitting there in the tank. Your exotic pet. Yeah, and he's worried about there's not being a lid on, and he said, I went, what were we worried about? He said, he said, well, he said it sits there for 24 hours a day, Obviously, planning to get out. <laughs> well, he's got nothing else on its mind, and it's <laughs> the, the daft thing is, he has actually got the like the lid ripped up a little bit. <laughs> and he'll be looking up there. Yeah, it's going to get out. But what's the worst that could happen? What's Carl? it thinking? What do you think it's thinking, this salamander? It's got its eye on the DVD player. <laughs> 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 like an AV and be down the market. <laughs> class, class. <laughs> Rock the I love the fact you had at least three minutes to get that right. To I know. prepare and get that right. I know, but my mouth was full of, uh, Maryland cookies. Mm. Yeah. You know, last week, mm. th this would, oh, this would blow your mind. He came in, do you know what he'd bought for himself at uh, about ten? Penguins. Mm. Who buys penguins still? I know. Or wagon wheels. Oh, I've never liked wagon wheels. <laughs> not being a fan? No, no, but I'm oh, sorry about that. It's the clash and rock the casbah. Mm -hmm. Um, talking about records, have I told you that time my brother-in-law, um, uh, he was moving out of his place, and I think moving in with my sister. And I was about like, um, I don't know, 13. Um, and so he was about, I don't know, 30. And I moved in, and uh, he brought round all, um, uh, his records when he was storage to, to leave him at our house. Mm -hmm. Right, and he had all these old sort of records, 50s and 60s records, no, I was right. And, uh, um, and, uh, they, uh, put them upstairs. And I was looking through them, and, uh, it's just all like Elvis stuff and Beatles stuff. And there was a mate of mine who loved Elvis, okay? Mm. And he had, um, well, uh. loads of chemicals. <laughs> yeah, he had loads of chemicals, and I was into chemistry. And, uh, he said, let's swap me some chemicals for them. So I sort of nicked about five Elvis singles, and I got all these chemicals. And, uh, and then the guilt just, hit me, I just thought, well, he's gonna notice that. And I just, I, one night, I just came downstairs and I confessed to my mum. And she went, all right, well, I won't tell him, but you've got to be good. And it's sort of like, I was just really, really good for a year. <laughs> and then I remember, um, when I was about 18, uh, my brother was talking about it and he said, did you ever, um, uh, play those records I left for you? <laughs> Brilliant. He told my mum, he said, these are for Ricky. She just didn't tell she me. She was sharp, wasn't oh. she? She, she used opportunism there. Oh, that's genius. And, uh, that was it. That's, that's but, why I was good. <laughs> but you've <laughs> never, you've never stolen anything since, have you? No, I don't, I don't, I don't Except know. that spate of, uh, of shoplifting after that to teach your mum a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I went round, uh, and, uh, arson. Mm. Uh, no, no, I did, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. I, I just, oh, that's it was terrible. I, I remember, um, and I think all kids go through a phase of shoplifting. Well. Um, and, I, I, when I was going through it, mm. um, I used to just, just little things, just like magic markers and, uh, magazines, Mars bars, that sort of thing. Yeah. And one day, right, uh, that me, me mate, Anthony, his mum called up my mum and said, I've got to, uh, I've got to meet up with you. I've got to have a word with you. And, uh, she said, what about? She said, I don't want to talk about it over the phone. So she goes, oh, right. Well, yeah, come round tonight then. So anyway. My mum sees me, she, she don't want to be in an awkward position and like, be a bit embarrassed and what have you. So she sees me and she goes, right, Anthony's mum's coming round, what have you been doing? Yeah. So I go, oh God, I said, I've, I've been nicking stuff. So she goes like, what? So oh, not, not big stuff, I've, I've had a few calculators and uh, Mars bars and stuff. How many? I just work it out. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Works out at 7.2 per day. So, um... <laughs> How so many calculators do you need? So, anyway, <laughs> so it was when that phase... You failed maths, didn't you? <laughs> everyone wanted a calculator. It was like a trendy thing, wasn't it? Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. In Manchester a couple of years ago, yeah. So, um... <laughs> so, anyway, so I told her all this and I confessed to, like... Computers will make it there, one not <laughs> Confessed to... There's magic in the back. <laughs> yeah. Of battery. <laughs> Go on. Confessed to nicking all this stuff. She comes round. She only wanted to borrow some money. Brilliant. <laughs> she Brilliant. Said, oh, I, I don't like asking. I was a bit embarrassed to ask you over the phone, but can I borrow 20 quid? Oh, that's fantastic. And there's me. <laughs> that's great. And it's the oh. sort of thing to yours. And did you- And he went, hold on, I'm let you work out the interest on that. <laughs> uh, I bank 10%. She'll owe you four yeah. pounds 40. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and did you, so, so your mum was a loan shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and uh, I, did 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 uh, did she mention she that went, you I just, I stuff just with your, with that other? Because yeah, what I'm saying is, presumably you've got no, your no, mate no, in trouble. No, 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 no. Right, you know, that's, that's great. Anyway, should we have some more music? Yeah, we've been waiting for. What, what are you going to play, Carl? 
We've got the Cooper Temple Claws. Oh, window. brilliant. <laughs> Cooper Temple Claws. Who needs enemies? Good question, lads. Nobody. <laughs> Six <laughs> FM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Oh, they you? should print a little book of those. <laughs> 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 They're great. <laughs> oh, how you can relate any song or artist <laughs> to anything else. <laughs> easy. Joyful. Easy. Well, yeah, so, uh, m me and, uh, me and Carl went out, uh, for a beer, and it was, uh, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, I enjoyed Start myself. We started yeah, off, good. and you met my mate, Robin, didn't you? Yeah. And, uh, um, some of the stories. Do you want to tell Steve some things about Robin? That Robin. You learned? Do you know him well? Yes. Well, um, do you know about his, his worm problem as a kid? Go on. Right. He, uh... What I can remember is he, he had worms as a kid. Not sure how you get him, he never answered me, he was getting a bit touchy about it. Right. I, I, this is like the second time I met him. I think he was a bit annoyed that Ricky told me about his problem. What, yes. now, what, uh, now straight away, you not being there, instinctively, what do you think went on with this story about worms? My suspicion yeah. is rather like when you told a group of people that Robin had once suckled milk from a cow's udder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I told I, that. Yeah, did he mention that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my suspicion is that, uh, like the cow story, the worm story is not true. But and why, Robin why would he get so sort of uppity about it? Well, imagine because it's if, not true. imagine if he, that wasn't the first time he'd done it. Imagine if he did that every single time <laughs> he was with somebody for the first time and Robin was, uh, just met them. He tells that, he will tell that story to anyone. But they do say there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> I also, I, I also told him that the way Robin cured these worms yep. was because the doctor told his mother, right, to hold a piece of ham or cheese near Robin's anus so the worms would come out for the food, and he believed it. I I'll said tell to, you why, though. I said to Robin used to sit on spam to try and get the worms out, and he believed it. But well, Steve, right, do you remember that story about th three or four years ago where there was some bloke in the army he went away to somewhere, Vietnam or whatever. He was messing about in the woods. Um... Messing <laughs> about in the woods? Shouldn't he have been fighting? <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Right, and he, he walked through some lake, and I think he'd cut his toe or something <laughs> on, on something, and some worm of some sort crawled in the, in the gash. Yeah. And, um, it, it was in his body, and the doctor said, we've got to get this out of your body. So, what they did was, they said, right, the, the thinnest part of something, of your body that things can crawl through, is on the top of your head. So they wrap some Where the skull is. So they wrap some bacon. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't. They did. Ah, that's all right. Everyone... So he's gone in by the toe. Uh, so what we do is, I'll tell you what, that worm's probably heading straight for the head. We put a bit of bacon on it. The thinnest part of the body is the the, the skull. Of course, it's not the thinnest part of the body. It's the, where your brain case is, isn't it? It's the hard. The skull. There was there was a reason for it. And it was like they, they, um, stuck some bacon on his head. And <laughs> As ever, the vital piece of information, uh, <laughs> i.e. the reason, Carl seems to have forgotten. It, because the worm was in, in his body and they said every, you know, everyone likes the smell of bacon. Including even worms. a worm, even a, even a Vietnamese lake worm. They, <laughs> they, 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 oh, they love bacon. Remember last week, remember last week when I said about the little fella with the bone with no brain and you were proved wrong? No. Please. No, 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 We were saying it wasn't a little fella. We were saying it was a stillborn child. It wasn't no, a little you're fella. You're changing it now. You weren't having any of it last right, week. Right, hang on a minute. Let's just, I'm getting confused. There was a Vietnamese... There wasn't a Vietnamese, there was a Vietnamese snake that went inside of no, a soldier. Worm. A little like maggot or some sort <laughs> that you have to get out of your body because it causes problems. Yes. <laughs> and so in order <laughs> to get it out of the body, they strapped bacon to his head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is great. This doctor. And did that work? I think so. They had a picture of him smiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, what, the worm or the bloke? The bloke. Oh, <laughs> dear. Honest, honestly, I, I hope someone knows a story and um, right. just, it was about three years ago, I reckon. Okay. And, um, yeah, it did work. G.I. So, G.I. Bacon. So this is why <laughs> I, I, when- And so when what the worm, the worm burrowed out of his head to get the bacon? Get to the bacon. Right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So I this is, that. this is why when Robin was telling his story, I, I was a little bit disappointed if it wasn't true. Right. Because in a way- You know Robin's never been to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what, I, I would do really think that Robin, well, as Robin said at the time, Carl, why would I sit on ham, then tell Ricky Gervais? <laughs> it's <laughs> a very good point. Because if he was a kid, you, d you do daft things like that as a kid. <laughs> right. See, it is I mean? the telling Ricky Gervais, though. Yeah. And then, yeah. oh, bless him. Okay. And, and then anyway, then, uh, Robin left and, uh, I tried to chase him but he got away <laughs> and he knows that we, uh, yeah. Um, and then we had a few pints and then, uh, 
Carl embarked on some of the greatest stories ever told. Have you- can you tell the story about your dad? Let me run it- I haven't spoke to him all week, so let me run it by him. Okay, play record. Cause, uh, you know. What we got? We've got, uh, one of Steve's Yeah, tunes. well, bizarrely enough, this comes from the, uh, Teachers 2 soundtrack, oh. the soundtrack to the, uh, the current TV series. There's a slight whiff of nepotism in the air. Yeah. Rick, would you like to explain why? Well, that's why you're doing it. No, my girlfriend, uh, worked on it. But, yeah. um, you were gonna play this anyway, weren't you? Well, I was, actually. Bizarrely enough, I was gonna play some I Am Clute, and, uh, this is from, as I say, the, uh, the Teachers soundtrack, this is called To You. It's a good track. That's I Am Clute, and a track called To You from the, uh, Teachers soundtrack. That's also got, uh, I know it's the Electric Soft Parade, The Hives, Star Sailor, Feeder. Uh, Turin Break, Smoky Rev on there. It's a good little collection. Lovely. Carl, uh, has just had confirmation. He's looking smug, cos someone phoned up and went, it is true, it's a Lao Gai Chi worm, and you wrap bacon around your head. That's all the bloke knew as well. Yeah. And his name was Gary. Yeah. So I'm not having it. No. And he said, he said, see, that's why the Robin thing isn't so weird. He said, but when you said he tried it with cheese, he said I was having none of it. <laughs> He's got standards. Explain. Strokes. Hard to explain. Like Carl, really? Yes. Yes. So, Carl, concentrate. Yeah, go on. So, we'll, um, we'll, we'll leave the worm with the bacon wrapped round the head, shall we? Well, if you're ever caught in the jungle... Yeah. Always carry some... Bit of Danish. <laughs> <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> Lovely. So, would you like to start on your, uh, to Steve, because I've heard all these, um, uh... Well, we won't do them all. Well, um, we'll, st we'll start off with the, uh, the Mr. Freeze. Tell Steve the story of Mr. Freeze. This is the first time he nearly died. This, this is the most serious of the lot, really. So, um, what it was, do you know, like, um, I don't know if your mum and dad did the same thing, but, like, they do the weekly shopping on, on like a Friday. Yeah. So when, when you got to Thursday, <coughs> there won't be much stuff left in the cupboard. It'd just be like, you know, your Jacob's crackers and stuff mm. like that. So when they'd, when they'd been to the supermarket and they came back, I was like, uh, you know, What's that saying? Like a pig in, you know? I, I loved it. It was like loads of food coming in, loads of biscuits. He nearly said, what is that saying? He nearly said pig in shit. <laughs> right. Is that the saying? <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, so yeah, all this food comes in. Thank God like... he didn't. <laughs> 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 Otherwise, he'd have been in trouble. That's true enough. Because he's he's culpable for our actions. Cause he's exactly. The producer. <laughs> so technically, oh. that twat's in charge. Go yep. on. Right. So anyway, so there's loads of food, and I'm like, oh yeah, look at this, some chocolate biscuits, and uh, you know. Penguins and stuff. Bacon. So, and um, bacon. Just in case, you never know. <laughs> so, um, so, anyway, my mum and dad's putting the food away. Me and our kid are like, he's already grabbed something, gone back upstairs. <laughs> it's like feral children. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like a quest for fire. <laughs> <laughs> and then they run upstairs. <laughs> what well, did they just sit under the bed, gnawing at some sort of pig's trotter? <laughs> so, so I saw, um, do you remember Mr. Freeze Pops? I do, yeah. So, right. Well, they're kind of like popsicles, icicles. Yeah, they? but really long, like yeah, a foot yeah, long, yeah. right? Yeah. So I thought, I'll have one of them, so I grabbed it. Went for the nutritious stuff first. Absolutely. And, uh, and like my mum and dad are putting the stuff away and what have you. And I, I rip it open and knock it back, right? Straight away, just right back like Swallow that. Swallow it right straight away. But it, it went down the wrong way, right? <laughs> what, so I was like, your shirt? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was like, oh God, I can't breathe. And my mum and dad didn't, uh, didn't even know what I'd ate. Do you know what I mean? It went, it, I ate it so, f f so quick. Yeah. And, uh, I'm sort of, Tapping me mum on the back, going, uh, uh, she's going, oh God, you know, he's, he's choking again because I was always choking. <laughs> if it was one thing, I don't ever got like a small throat. <laughs> but, but I mean, even Ricky knows I can't drink that much, can I? Yeah. Do you know, or I'm eat pebbles. A, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a, a quick drink drinker. I'd always, um, I think I'm scared of like swallowing stuff. Yeah. And uh, it was like bottle tops and mint imperials and stuff. <laughs> I was always, God. I was always choking on stuff. <laughs> oh, so, so anyway, she's going, oh God, what's he picked up on it now? <laughs> Drop it! Drop it! So, and she hit, his, hit his nose with a stick. <laughs> so I was going, oh, I'm choking. At this point, my dad had like, I think he'd put his his share away, you know, his food away, and he'd gone. His to share, the, I yeah. love it. Yeah. He'd, he'd gone to watch like winner takes all or whatever <laughs> in a lounge, and I, I was in the kitchen, and I was starting to like just, I didn't care anymore. Do you know what I mean? I hadn't, I, I just got to that point where I wasn't struggling anymore. You just thought I'm done I just for. Just like falling to the ground. And my mum's going, you know, get in here, I think it's serious. And um, my dad comes in and sort of starts shouting at me, saying that's what you get for being greedy. He didn't even know what I'd eaten. Well, it was, it was the moment to teach you a lesson, certainly. So, he's there like that, and my mum's going, oh, look at him, and my lips were going purple, and my eyes were rolling into the back of my head. You look like Marilyn Manson. And, uh, so anyway, she grabbed me from behind and did that, that fireman thing. The Heimlich manoeuvre. Yeah. And, uh, you know, winded me. 
and it came up and I was alright. What, the whole right. popsicle came flying back out? I don't, I don't, I, you see, that's what I don't understand. Cause there no, was just nothing it, there. No, I mean, just, just a little there. bit, no, it swells up, doesn't it? Cause it irritated it, so it went down your, just sort of like, your epiglottis, it went down the wrong way, like it went into your air canal instead so of your throat. And it, it sort of, it, it sort of spasms, and that's the that's the fear. You just got to calm it down and relax. So that in time, I would have known. Yeah, right anyway. you don't. Um, well, no, yeah. you might have. So that's so so so, so, so that's hang on. One. So, but, but, so no, no, no. But the weird thing is, like for like three days after that, I felt like a sort of a special person. <laughs> I was I went to school. I did that saying nothing. I, I did full days. <laughs> <laughs> a special needs person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I went. I went to school the next three days after that. I didn't like wag it or anything. I did full days. I love that. Three days, turn everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. After yeah. three days, you thought, screw it. Yeah, well, did, did the quick oh, history yeah. exam. <laughs> mm. Right, next that one. Weird. That's popsicle. That's popsicle hell, we we'll call that. Right, next one. Uh, which one's the next one? Oh, what about your paper round? Right, the paper round one. Uh, paper round, I'd still say it's the best job I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really oh. enjoyed it. It's like, you oh. know, you, you, <laughs> you don't have to work with anyone else, right? Uh. So you make your own rules. <laughs> Just think of that. Um, yep. you know, um, you sort of You're around. spreading information well, yeah, to people. Yeah, Vital information. giving a service. Yeah. And no one else is around, you know, you can just do what you want and think about stuff whilst you're cycling around on your bike. It's really good. Yeah. So, um. So anyway, imagine the stuff he's thinking about <laughs> when he's driving around. <laughs> I, know, I can't. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> getting in the head of a salamander. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I, I loved it, and even though I only got like fifty p a day, right? No matter what the weather was like and stuff, I used to get up at half past four and uh, go and do the round. And um, why did you get up at half past four? Because I wanted to watch the Pink Panther at five thirty, so <laughs> I wanted to get me paper round done. I said, "Why didn't you watch the Pink Panther?" And then, and then he, went, he went, oh, I can't sit there thinking I've got my paper round to do. <laughs> He'll ruin it for him. Yeah. So is it a good job or not? Go so 4.30 four I was up, up and about. And this morning it was like winter, really bad winter, bad snow, you know, freezing cold, really windy and all that. And my mum said to me before I went to bed, she said, don't be getting up tomorrow. I'll give you the 50p. I said, it's not about the 50p. <laughs> so, you know, people want the papers and stuff. <laughs> so, um... Conscientious. <laughs> so, anyway, I went to bed thinking, you know, that's it. I'm, I'm, I've told her I'm still going, so, you know, whatever. Go to sleep, get up in the morning, and, uh, put all my kit on. And I, I used to have layers of clothing on, cos it was really cold. They had, like, a big anorak on with the fur on. I had, like, waterproof pants. And I got my paper round bag. And, uh, I went downstairs to get out. And tried to open the door and it was locked. Oh, God. So she'd locked it so I couldn't go out. So I'm searching around the house looking for the keys. She must have hid them somewhere. I thought, oh, God, you know, I've, I've got the papers to do. So I thought, how can I get out? So I went upstairs, climbed out of the bathroom window. God. Right, and to try and jump out of the bed bathroom window onto the porch. But the problem was, I had so much gear on, I was like the Michelin man. <laughs> so I could hardly, I could hardly move as it is. Yeah. And I'm trying to get out the window, and I, I, I'm like, Try to stretch down like that, get me foot on the on the porch. And my bag got caught on like the hook of do you know like how you have a hook so you can put the window open? Right, yeah. Like the yeah, little yeah, arm goes yeah. on. My bag had got caught on that. I was holding on to the like the, the wall and my foot on the thing so I couldn't sort of pull it pull it away in case I pulled it away and then fell on my head. Yeah. So I'm stuck there. Dangling. Dangling. My dad comes back from working nights. Yeah. He thinks I'm a burglar. <laughs> Gets out his gun. So <laughs> <laughs> so he's shouting and stuff, going mad and going, Dad, it's me. And he had to give us a hand using a- <laughs> He's heard that wily trick in Manchester before. <laughs> <laughs> he had to help me using a washing prop thing, a big stick. What did he do? Well, he said, just that hold on for your dear life, and I I'll sort of push the paper bag off the hook. Why and didn't he go upstairs and sort it out? It was at that point where I was in the middle, there was nothing you could do, do you know what I mean? Mm, it's at that point where you've just got to make a decision. Yeah. And by the time he got upstairs, who knows what might have happened. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You've got to act there and then, don't <laughs> listen around. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so- And you could hear downstairs, now here he is, the Pink Panther. <laughs> yeah. Dad! Pink Panther. Hurry up! Panther. Ever so pink! <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that, that was close to death, cause I, I must have been about 30 foot in the air. So he's, uh, uh, I'll just cut a long story short, he gave me about four or five near death experiences, and he went, and the whole point of this, he went, so that's why I think I'm gonna die of something horrible, like cancer. And I went, why? He went, Right, you ready for this? Yeah. He said, well, I don't check my balls. <laughs> right? <laughs> he said, I don't like the feel. <laughs> <laughs>
Carl, Carl, always <laughs> check your balls. Do you I check your like feel? Why don't you like the feel of your own balls? They just. I mean, you know that I don't like bodies anyway. Right. Do you know what I mean? It worries me a bit that you've got all that going on in your body, right? And your skin's keeping it all in place. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, 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 stop. We're going down a whole other avenue of discussion. Let's play a track. Let's come back to it. All right. This is Carl, the, uh, producer of Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant on XFM 104.9. We're playing out some of the best bits. Hope you're enjoying it. Here's another one. Oh. His homework was to come up with those stupid lateral thinking problems. Uh, we might, we maybe should give an, a, an example of the, uh, Oh, um, genre. Romeo and Juliet, right, Romeo's asleep on the bed, Juliet's on the floor, covered in water and broken glass, what happened? And you ask all these stupid questions, and it's, Romeo's a cat and Juliet's a goldfish. Again, Awful. what am I thinking? Yeah. Right. Yeah, come on then, Carl. Right, um, yeah. There's a bloke lying on the floor, right, he's cut his head, blood's coming out of his head, <laughs> and all his mates come running up. And they're all stood round him. Yeah. And, uh, they don't take their hats off to, as a mark of respect. So that why, is outrageous. Why didn't they take their hats off? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm uh, laughing, but it's probably as good as the oh, real absolutely. ones. absolutely. A bloke's fallen with his... Yeah. He's lying on the floor. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah. His mates come running he's, up he's, and he's, like, wasn't oh. it impo Was it important that his head was cut? Um... I don't know. I mean, would, it, would, it, would it have been okay if he'd have been wearing a hat? He wouldn't have been dead if he was wearing a hat. Well, what's your answer? No, you're meant to answer questions. You don't just go, what's your answer? You say, where's the turn? So you go, no, and I have to guess. It's obviously like sort of motorcycle stunt team or a parachute Why, why didn't they take their hats off? Because they're probably still on the motorbikes or something, or... Well, yeah, but if you mark, mark a respect to someone, you could take your helmet off. <laughs> <laughs> Angry. What? They're parachutists. <laughs> why, can they, why can't they take their helmets off? Because they're still they're coming down from the sky. Still... But he's on the floor dead. Well, yeah, they... but they can look down and see him on the floor. Are they on the floor, Carl? They're on the floor as they're well. They're walking, aren't they? Yeah, well, they sort of stood there looking at him. They're stood there. Yeah. They're stood on the floor looking they're at him. They're soldiers. Why? But why? If they're Because it might be in a battle zone. They might have their zone. helmets on. And he's been right. shot in the head. No. They're... Well, that does work. <laughs> you see, this is my point. That one works. <laughs> That one works. Unless you've given us a piece of information where that doesn't work, what, yeah. what, what's the difference? Why, why is yours different to he's been shot in the head in the trenches and they're looking at him and they keep their helmets on? I just don't, don't <laughs> think it matters as much. If they're in the trench, they're already <laughs> guarded a little bit. So th they could take their hats off. It's the best mate, for God's sake. <laughs> I said he's dwelling on this. Are they normal hats? What kind no, of hats are they? The answer. No! Don't get ratty! What right. kind of hats are they? Baseball well, hats? If I told you what sort of hats they are, you'd have the answer. Wow! Okay, I've got to guess what sort of a hat it is then, have I? Right. Uh, um, is it a trilby? No. Is it a bowler? I know what it is. What? They're spacemen. No. Oh, that's a good that one. That one works as well. That's, yeah. This is my point. I like that one a lot. It works. He's fallen on the moon, and there are oh, not that the moon happened, it was set yeah, up, wasn't it, in the studio, thing. we know that, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, Carl, what's your answer? Builders on a building site. <laughs> Why is that different to soldiers? <laughs> because bricks don't fall in wars. <laughs> <laughs> but bullets fly! <laughs> right. Let's play a record and we'll come back to it, Carl, oh. while you think about what you've done. Oh, yeah. Uh, you've uh, embarrassed Let's yourself. play some classic suede. Yeah, and this is for David and Kieran, I think, who wanted a yeah. bit of, bit of butler. XFM 104.9, I'm Richard Bayes with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, Steve. <laughs> well, we were talking about the news just now, and, uh, there was a story I heard in the week, I think, it was on the radio, and I don't know all the details, but what I heard was that a number of, I think it was Falkland, uh, maybe Gulf War, war veterans, were, I think, suing or complaining to the government because they wanted compensation for post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but it seems to me that if you're in the army and you're a soldier, a certain degree of trauma is kind of inevitable. I mean, after all, if you're any good at your job, you are going to see people getting killed. So I don't understand what the ins and outs of it are. I don't <laughs> know why. No, he's probably, he's probably came back and Tony Blair met him and go, all right, well, not really, no. Go on, what's the matter? Well, if you, there was people shooting at us and everything, it was all muddy. Well, calm down, don't cry. Well, I will cry. 
There was a drill sergeant just kept shouting, saying, look at you, stupid boy, where's this gun's not clean? And I just cleaned the gun and it was fine, and now he's telling me to clean it again. Yeah, the boots, they were, they were shiny. Well, he's got to do that, it's more His neck was as big as his head. Well, yeah, but you don't know what they, you know. I don't know what the ins and outs of it are, but, um. What you got to do is make sure you know what you're going into. That's what I do. You got to check the small print. So if I was, you know, going over to like the Falklands or, you know, the golf I'd put my hand up and go, will, will it be horrible? I go, you at the back, yes? Will it be horrible? <laughs> it, it will be horrible, <laughs> yes. It will be horrible. There will be shooting and lots of death and everything. I, I go, right, I'm not gonna go. And they go, <laughs> exactly. okay then. Okay. That should be fine, yeah. should be fine, yeah. Just like that. It, is anyone else scared about this? Uh, pretty much all of us. Okay, then well, we won't send anyone <laughs> <Yeah>. then. <laughs> my, um, brother, my brother went into the army, right, cos, um, cos he couldn't get a normal job. And my dad said, you know, if you don't get a job by such a date, that's it, son, you're going in the army. <laughs> And then, oh. so when, when was the Falklands? Was it about 80 81. Something? Right. And he joined <laughs> back in like 81 or something. And, uh, he, 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 I don't know, he was an older shot or something. Oh, yeah. And, uh, he wrote back to me mum saying, uh, you know, a bad time to join, bad time in this. So she wrote. <laughs> what well, bad time to join? That's so sweet, Carl, isn't it? That's like, dear dad. Yeah, well done. Um, <laughs> don't know if you've noticed. Yeah. Uh, I was on the doll, that, that's for sure. Uh, thank you for joining, uh, a month before the Belgrano. Anyway. Go on. My mum called up, spoke to the sergeant, and said, can you leave him out of this one? Can you leave him out of this one? What, he, the Falkland War? He's only just joined and she called him Chuck, which he got done for. Like, she, she's one of them, it's, I think it's a northern thing, like, saying, how are you, Chuck? Yeah. And she called the sergeant Chuck, and he, he, he the sergeant said to my, my brother, uh, your mum, you know, she's called up and asked if you can not go. Which, uh, of course, you know, I mean, it, it, w we'll see how it goes. But can what? You tell what do you mean? Why did the sergeant even entertain this? Well, Pilkington, come here. Your mum's been giving me a bit of earache. Now listen, tell her I've told you, but can you call her, because she was really, she called me Chuck and everything. Can you call her and say you don't mind? Well, not really. Oh, please, because I've promised her, uh, say you want to go. No, please, say you want to go. Why was he entertaining this phone call? Because he was new to the army, I suppose. Who? No, I mean the sergeant. Uh, I don't know, maybe so, they do that. So what happened? Did he didn't go in the end? So he didn't go, no. You can't do it! But you that's ludicrous! Uh, I love it though. Oh, uh, we went over the top. Pilton, no, I've got a note. Yeah. Is this, is this really your mum? Yeah. Okay, no, this seems to be you in order. They, you, it, cos I notice it says, um, uh, I do not want to go into the army, I don't want to go, go and fight, and it's crossed out and it's good, my mum says don't yeah. go. Now you didn't write this yourself. No, no, my mum wrote this. Okay, you definitely wrote this yourself. You're, you're gonna have to just, um, fill envelopes. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> sure if, if he was needed he would have had to go, but I think they made a bit of a special effort. They sort of said, oh. Well, it wasn't conscription anyway. Oh no, I was saying, where the, the other army, soldiers going around yeah. just going, wah! <laughs> Bilkington! <laughs> no, he ended Did up being a mechanic in there, and he got kicked out for, um, going for a packet of fags in a tank. What? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you mean he nipped down the shops yeah. in a tank? Yeah. I don't okay. believe that, Carl. You've oh, made Mr. that God. Up. That, and he went off with the sergeant's wife. So that didn't help and he ended up getting kicked out. Sorry, your, your brother's a genius. I love this, I love this. First of all, um, he gets a call from his mum, go and let him up and goes, oh God. Then he goes, uh, uh, where is, where's Pilkington? His mum's on the phone. He's, where is he? Um, he's near your house, Sarge. Near my house? Well, why is... No, no reason. Uh, well, when he comes back, when he's finished, tell him his mum called. And can he get me a packet of fags? <laughs> tell him to walk this time. Wow. This is ludicrous. The, the, so the sergeant phoned out that he was sleeping yeah, I, with his wife? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, did, I was Did your mum phone up and say, let him off? <laughs> 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 so let him off this time. Him. Can he... T yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. But he misses it. I mean, I haven't seen him for about 11 years. But ever since he came out, he's just kept getting into trouble and that. And the army, you know, people slag it off. But I think if you're a certain type of person, it's it's good for it you. It didn't straight him either. How did <laughs> it? No. He was going down the shops in a tank. He was shagging someone. No, but he was, it's yeah. really weird. It's like back then he was like a proper adult and he had a house and he collected crystal with his wife and that. <laughs> and now he hasn't got any of that. Has he got the wife? No. Has he got the crystal? Don't think he has. And he I, I, I house. seriously haven't seen him for about 11 or 12 years. Oh, so, so I haven't even spoken to him. Uh, Carl's stories always start off nice and funny, and then they just leave me empty and slightly yeah. depressed. I don't know whether to hug him or shoot him, but him <laughs> out of his misery. Can we take Carl to the- uh, phone in if you think I should take Carl to the vet and have him put down. Cos it's just too stressful. <laughs> <laughs>
This is what I'd like to leave you, uh, with a song for the ladies. Darkness on the Edge of Town from the amazing album of the same name, Springsteen. See you next week. Bye. Feeder, come back around on XFM 104.9. You're listening to Ricky Gervais. Yeah, I'm with him as well, Steve Merchant. I was thinking of dropping that. What? I was thinking of dropping that, just going, because it's just too, that's all that. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkerton too. I mean, get to the music, so it's, hi, I'm Ricky Gervais, this is XFM. Sure. Here's Radiohead. Yeah. Some like, come out, that was Radio and XFM, I'm Ricky Gervais. Tony Blair, what's he all about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That sort of- Snap, that, yeah. Fast, because I quite, on a serious note, and you've always been saying it, um, I listened to an old show, because when Carl was compiling those things, I listened to an old show, and I listened to me, and I'm- I'm really concentrating now, because I sounded like the most inarticulate, brain-damaged old drunk <laughs> I have ever heard given a show. Yeah. I mean, I was shocked. Not finishing sentences, leaving out words, slurring, just doing noises yeah. that you understand because you know me. Yeah. So I'm really gonna make an effort for the listener. Yeah. It's not gonna happen, is it? You're gonna but, give up after about but three But I thought reference. you were joking. And I thought it was like, mm -hmm. oh, he's t t taken it there. Did it yeah. then, you see? Again, I don't quite know what that sentence meant. No, but- well, of course, I've got also your body language and your facial yeah. gestures, but obviously the listeners have got nothing else. Got they've just got the in. voice. They've yeah. just got the voice for it. That's all they've got. That's all they can rely on. Yeah. And, uh, and when Carl Pilkinson is the man holding the show together- When he's the that's most That's quite damning. Articulate. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. How, how did I come across? You came across as lovely. I mean, I, I did an interview yesterday, right, and I was trying to describe you to this journalist, and I was going, it's like a cat can talk. Because the things you say, I just want to know what your world is. You know when a cat comes in, you go, where have you been? And it looks as you're like, you know, you could, it can nearly understand you. And you're like, I wonder, I'd love to know what that cat thinks. And with you, it's almost like we've got one. Yeah. Yeah. Did you like that? No, you can also lick your own testicles, I think, can you? <laughs> so, yeah. Do you play the doves? Doves. Caught by the river on XFM 104.9. You're listening to Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Welcome. I hope you're having a lovely Saturday. <laughs> Were you asked to appear on Celebrity Fat Club? No, I, I uh, no. Was there I wasn't. any? Was there? Was there? Seriously, did an invite? Come no, in? I don't. I don't think they did. I, I, I knew about it, and I was waiting for the call, and I was yeah. going to be insulted, but it didn't come. It didn't come. It didn't. How come. much are you looking forward to it? <laughs> I'm quite excited about it. I, I, I really am. excited to it. Yeah. I don't yeah, know if people know. Are you aware of this, Carl? This is this Celebrity Fat Club. It's a new uh, one of those reality shows. It's ten celebrities, I think. They're all overweight, uh, and they've got to lose weight over the course of the series. And they're um, and they're celebrities. And they're celebrities. That's why I've called it that. Celebrity Fat Club. So yeah. who's the got? Well, I'm very excited because one of them is, you know that guy who was in Pop Idol but didn't win in the end, that really big fat guy, Rick, Rick. Waller, Fats Waller as I call him. And uh, I was reading about him on the, in the, uh, on the web earlier, um, it says, uh, he's been told to lose 17 stone because they reckon he might be dead by the age of 40 if he doesn't lose weight. Seriously. How old is he now? I don't know how old he is, he's only in his 20s, isn't he? Well, that's still a good but 20 it says, years it says, of it, it says, uh, he was shocked to find he weighed 31 stone when he stepped on the scales at the start of the show. 31 stone? 31 stone. But I love that's the fact- That's really big. I like the fact it says he was shocked to find he weighed it. Yeah. I had no inclination. I'd got, I'd got, I'd got, I'd got, I kept my eye off the ball. <laughs> exactly. That must be all those breakfasts. I haven't stood on the scales for years and I didn't know how much I weighed, Rick told the son. 31 stone, right, that is having, that is, that is having a man on your back and carrying a man in your just yeah. basically two men are going everywhere. It is obscene because he looks. Have you seen him? He looks like one of those people who's wearing one of those inflatable sumo outfits. Yeah, he's just a little head and like a sort of. Oh, we're not. We're not having a go at um, fat people. I'm having a go at him, really. No, because it might be glandular. It's not. It's greed. <laughs> exactly. Do you know what? I, this is true. I, when I did, I did that room 101, and I did one. They cut out completely. I don't think I'd cut it out on taste. I think it was just too long. Um, and, I, and one of the ones I put in was fat people who say it's glandular, right? And they'd done the research and. 2% of obese people can claim it's glandular. The rest, they just eat too yeah. much. But right? the thing about Waller is he was going on there, gone on the telly, going, it's good, what a wonderful role model I am for people who don't conform to the usual pop star sort of stereotype. No, you're not a role model for anyone. You are a fat pig of a man. I'm All sorry, right. but you are, no, right. Rick, but it's be honest with you, it is obscene. It's not his weight that d disturbs me more, it's his gums. Well. They're all, oh, they've been through a lot. <laughs> Yeah. Haven't they? <laughs> they have been The weight does consume me slightly. Did you- do you remember when he did his version of I Will Always Love You? 
Yeah, but the, the I sun- thought he was just singing about like a buffet or <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, outside the chip shop. <laughs> yeah, go away, Mister Waller. Yeah, D- people- no, just just let me watch the uh, kebab rotate <laughs> once more. No, can I lick the fat off the floor? No, <laughs> you can't. I just imagine those people who run all you can eat buffets when they hear him coming, they shut yeah. the door. We it's close. like a, it's one of those late twenty speakeasy. The front changes <laughs> into like a laundrette. <laughs> Just move on, fats. It's not. <laughs> let's see, I can smell chip fat. No, 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 no. Move but, on. On you but, go. But um, I mean, we're not Olympic fat Brits. They are some fat. Like, Thirty-one stone is sort of you know quite big. But the American, that one. Did you see that one? Seriously, we talked about it before. That one on Jerry Springer, and he was seventy-five stone. Did you see seventy-five? He was in his bed. Honestly, it looked like a. It looked like a. Um, uh, I don't know, sort of molten lava in yeah. his bed, and it was re- it was actually sad, and I was really sad because he was, you know, he was in tears and he was going, "This is it, I'm going to do it." And Jerry Springer took the wall down, and they got him that to get him in a special ambulance and everything. But my point is this, right? When he got to say fifty stones, didn't he go? That's a lot, isn't it? I gotta be careful for a human, exactly. You know, for for <laughs> yeah. someone that lives on land, yeah. That yeah, is, exactly. that is. I tell you, what the, I mean. The fact is they have to have special weighing equipment, so wasn't that a clue? That must have been. The fact they had to get in someone from next door to lift up a bit to tell him yeah. how much he weighed. Yeah, the fact that he featured on the Ordnance Survey map <laughs> should have been a clue <laughs> that We've given it's you time. your own mess. Yeah, you are, yeah. Stop eating. eating. Oh, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Always amazing to hear that, isn't it, Rich? It's Sugar. fantastic. It's such I can't a change great your mind. tune. I was listening to Copper Blue, the album from which yeah. I was taken again. It's just fantastic. Old it really moldy. Was. Old moldy. Moldy old dough, yeah. as I call oh, him. exactly. Bob. You've got a real problem with Rick Waller, haven't you? I just- I, he, he turns a, my stomach. I know, but don't- Because he's arrogant that. as well, though. Exactly. I That's the problem. Don't, don't, don't explain to people that- No, he know, is a bit it's arrogant. His, it's his, it's whole thing that you- it's the whole package, so to speak, that you don't like. Well, there's another thing in this quote, because, uh, he's- It's not just the fact that he eats too much. He, uh, he's- he tried, apparently, to lose some weight, and, uh, it says- he said, the first month I lost eleven pounds, the next I lost a stone, but in the third my body did somersaults and I put on nine pounds. I had a slip up. Yeah. I can't say when, why or how, but it just sneaked up on me. Yeah. I don't believe it. Yeah. Don't That's believe it just sneaked that, up on that him. That body's never done a somersault no. in its life. No. It just uh, sneaked, sneaked up, up on him. me, yeah. I, that's, I, that's it was that. the cakes again. Yeah. <laughs> it was the same old cakes as before. It was exactly the same Sleep, sleep eating. Yeah. It's called. It was the KFC bucket again. Oh, it was the family sized KFC bucket oh, for breakfast. Dear. Poor man. The other thing is that the, I don't think that's a very good shock tactic for a doctor to tell a twenty-something. Well, to be honest, you've got twenty years to live. Yeah, that's not. You know, and when 20. I was twenty, the thought of dying at forty was fine. Yeah. I didn't want to live to forty. Yeah. I just thought, oh, what can you do when you're forty? Yeah. Just laying around <laughs> doing nothing, eating, eating cheese. cheese. And then you got there, <laughs> and you discovered. <laughs> no, but someone said the dream came it, um, true. Sophie here sent me something, and she said, "I, I realise you're not Graham Norton, but I had to send you this." And she sent me the top of a little cream cheesy thing. And it's it's the brand name is Gervais. How oh, god, that is! Have you been? They've named a cheese after I you. Think it, I think it's a big French company, and this is from the Czech Republic. It's all over Europe, and so it that would be a dream come true, wouldn't it? If they named a cheese after no, you. No, I think it's. I think it's uh, probably you know ancestors, and so I've cheeses in my blood. Sure, quite. It literally, literally is. Yeah. yeah. It, Another it, heavy Friday it, night, was it? It, 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 it comes out of pores like those play doh things. Yeah. I can squeeze out different shapes. Jane, bring the Stilton in. <laughs> it's Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this isn't nice. fried. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, so, um, we can't really have a go at Rick Waller. I, 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 I eat too much, but, but I, you, I, Yeah, I, but I you're not big. I mean, one of the other contestants on that, on the, uh, Fat Club, Celebrity oh, yeah, Fat Club, it? is, uh, another one is Jono. Jono Coleman. Oh, we love Jono. Now, Jono, he's, he, I don't know, you know Jono, he's oh. that guy that's, um, he used to be on TV and I think he does a breakfast show on a rival station, doesn't he? He's happy, isn't he? He's, he's so trivial. And he's a really nice bloke, Jono, but- It's funny, cos he does a breakfast show on Heart, which is, is wrecking his own. There's a bit of irony. Oh, <laughs> I love Carl. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Do you know I, what I mean? Yeah, I no, love you. I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, that's good. But we've met John yeah. a couple of times. We saw him at a couple of, not wishing to say not uh, to show off, but a couple of awards dues. Yeah. And like that's showing off. But like people would have seen dead there. Well, yeah, but yeah. we, <laughs> we went to one where everyone was in like tuxedos oh, or suits yeah. and ties. Not John O. <laughs> Jono was wearing a pair of Bermuda shorts. Big Bermuda and a shorts, knee length Bermuda shirt. shorts with just these little. But I saw him again another feet. time and he had shorts on at yeah. a similar event. And I've seen him since in the street and he's all. I don't think. I'm wondering if he can wear trousers. I don't think he can actually wear trousers. I don't know if there's a medical reason for that. Whether he's just. His no, legs th- are too fat. I think the material is a waste of money. I think it's just yeah. that you can get shorts that big and they're comfortable and, uh. You know, why do you, I mean, to be quite honest, well, why, I don't want to squeeze into a tuxedo anyway. Mm. So, uh, if you can go, I'd love to turn up those things in Bermuda shorts. Well, of course. Flip flops. 
But do you think he started off by wearing, maybe he just had the upper half as a tuxedo with the tie and, and then the shorts for And comfort. the shorts underneath and he would just have to come in to kind of sneak behind, you know, a, a sideboard. Potted plant. Or a potted plant. Or his kids, bring his kids ahead of him. Yeah. You know, and you are wearing clothes, aren't you? You yeah, are yeah, wearing trousers. Of course I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. In yeah, you yeah. go, in you go. Kids move a bit. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 exactly. Uh, of course I'm wearing trousers. Why <laughs> would I? wearing trousers. And then you just thought, like, this isn't fooling yeah. anyone. So uh, now I'm gonna make a wacky effort to sort of, you know, The next zone it. is, I've heard he's going in a grass skirt and a mm. garland around his, and he's, yeah. gonna, he's gonna come in limboing. But you, you did ask if you could go to the BAFTAs in a dressing game, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> just so for ease. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Right, is this, talking about diets and stuff, right? Go on. They've come up with a drug that, um, they, they tested it out on a mouse, right? <laughs> they, said, they said, you know, it's a problem that weight, weight is a big issue in the world and, you know, a lot of people are depressed and that, probably like Rick Waller. Well, right? I'm depressed looking at Rick Waller. Well, you know. Oh. I mean, you could, you could sort out Rick by, you know, Jono is an old man, he's got loads of money. He's not old. No, but he's getting on a bit, right? He's about No, but hang on a minute, what I mean is he does his own shopping, right? So, I bet it's Sorry. hard. Sorry, what do you mean? Because he's like, uh, how old is he? Thirty-five. Right? Probably he's got loads mean. of money, he does his own shopping, so when he yeah. goes to the supermarket and he passes, you know, the, the sponge cake section, it must be tough when you've got loads of money to burn that you go, oh, just one more. Yeah. One more. Uh, no, uh, so just, uh, we are getting close to libel here, I think. No, 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 <laughs> but I'm saying how it is, cos I've, right. I've tried, like, losing a little bit of weight. Have you? And it is difficult when you, you know, you're in Waitrose and you see a little chocolate muffin and think, well, <laughs> one more and I'll do without- Do you like a little chocolate muffin now and well, again? Yeah, right. Is that your favourite thing? So the a, thing a chocolate is, and muffin? let him finish his point. So the thing <laughs> is, right, now with Rick, he lives at home with his mum, so why doesn't his mum just say, I'm gonna buy less this week, and if you eat it all, you're not getting any more? Yeah. <laughs> that, that sort that Does out. he live a short, with his mum? Sharp, sharp. I, I bet he does. I bet he does. <laughs> so he you, you don't actually know if this <laughs> is true or not? No, but, but anyway, right? So this, this drug they've come up with. <laughs> It's they've tested uh, this on mics, haven't they? They've tested <laughs> it. No, I'm just, I'm worried if they haven't tested it on mics. Yeah, thank God for that. It's definitely been tested on mics. Definitely. They, they fed a mouse a load of cake. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> and it went a little bit chubby and he said, right, stop a minute. <laughs> and then they gave it this drug yeah. that makes you lose weight. Yeah. <gasps> and it, its weight went down, but the only bad so side effect was its eyes were popping out. <laughs> That seems to be fine then. <laughs> let's give it to Jono. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be any problem. Oh, let's, ah, let's, uh, uh, yeah, Rick should get some I of that. Love. Eh, yes, truth, Doc, look at these. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, Jono, your eyes are popping out. That happened to the mice. Mm. Sorry? That happened to the mice. Mm. But what, what you do, do you mean? That's the option. But, like what do you mean that's the option? So, so, I love the fact that your choice is either being like a fat, happy man who has the odd sponge cake, or a stick man with eyes on stalks. I mean, Steve's <laughs> chosen that. All right, calm down. Oh, sorry, I thought we were slagging off Rick Waller sorry, and fat mate. people. Sorry, Let's mate. have a go I... at the fat people before yeah, we start on me, really. Yeah, no, I didn't. I forgot. Yeah, I mean, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I got some issues and body issues. You I know, know. But I mean, Rick Waller is grotesque, you know. Yeah, sorry about I'm that. I'm just a little bit weird. I mean, do you know what I mean? Yeah, should we play a song? And well, I'm just of... a little bit offended. Isn't it? That's upsetting. That's upsetting. Vines out of the way on XFM 104.9. You're listening to the Ricky Gervais show with Steve Merchant. And we can't, we've got to try and get on though, because there's not enough. That. No, not enough time. Let's, let's let's bang on. Let's do some observations, some <laughs> yeah. satirical. Take a sideways look at the week's news. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who's the uh, fattest person you know, Carl? Is um, it an issue for you? Are you are you concerned about fat people? Only if I'm travelling somewhere and there's one sat next to you. That'd yeah, be a bit annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Ricky pointed out a few months ago when I when I went away, we were talking about plane journeys, and you were saying how it's a bit out of order. Uh, when you go on holiday, right, you take your suitcase with you. Mm. I'm a this is all Was right. I saying this on air, though, is this my question? Because there's, there's a reason I don't say things No, 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 sometimes. but I think you've got <laughs> a good point. It made me think. Oh, no, it's w I know what it was, yeah. Yeah? It's sort of like, if, if you're not allowed to carry a handbag on because you're a few pounds overweight, but there's a bloke behind you who weighs ten stone more than you, yeah. surely the whole package should be weighed. Yeah. Like, you and your baggage Absolutely. can you be should have, you should have a carrier bag. And so, I can, so I can take on uh, a Labrador and a wheelbarrow. <laughs> yeah. He can take on um, a towelette. Yeah. Yeah. To wipe absolutely. his brow. Yeah. His sweaty, fatty brow. Yeah. yeah. No, I absolutely, absolutely right. So, yeah. uh, And that does yeah. wind you up, does it? But I don't, that's the only time. I mean, people can't help it. We don't want to, like, come across as if we're just having a go at people who've got... But they can help it. This is what we're saying. 
No, but that's, no, that, but that's a little bit. But I'm talking about obesity. I'm not talking about people who are overweight or have got a problem with, with eating and so on. I'm talking about people who are obese because that seems to me to be an indulgence. I mean, no, I read no, no, some no, statistics. I've got, if we're getting serious, it, it is a problem, isn't it? Because it, it's an eating disorder. So, what, what, what's, what's terrible is, is laziness and killing yourself, but the people who have, have genuinely got a problem. But it's, it's a genuine a concern for apparently, or... for the future of our children, apparently. It genuinely is. Yeah. Apparently it costs, I was reading some statistic that it costs something like, uh, America, it costs them like 119 billion pound dollars a year or something. But that's in, not uh, what people are starving, because fat people are eating all the food. I'm not saying people left. are starving because of fat people. Oh, you mean- I'm you mean... saying that it's a, no, I'm saying it's a concern- Oh, do we mean we we'll soon have kids and they're hungry because next door they all the food. No, I just <laughs> mean that, it, that apparently because exercise now, people aren't taking up exercise, kids right. aren't taking up exercise, that we will all be obese in years to come. Not all obese, but yeah. there'll be a, a big obesity. Well, that's the natural state for the mammals, we crave fat. We literally fat, crave fat for, for hard times, but now, but now there are no well, you're all saying time. offices typing but away. But, but our body haven't evo hasn't evolved yeah. to, to take our social uh, input in. Yeah. So we still act like mammals mm. and we, we eat and we crave it and we like to store fat. Yeah. That's why we have to go jogging because we don't, we don't hunt, we don't do anything. So it, it, it's not really their fault. You've, it's, it, it, I mean, it is about willpower and, and sort of like, you know, self- Hate but in years that, to come, we'll have just pictures, like kids will just have pictures of, they won't have NSYNC on the wall, it'd be uh, like sumo wrestlers. Mm. Oh, or, God, um, oh, oh, you know sumo wrestlers, I saw this thing about sumo wrestlers, um, cause the, the, they, they're athletes, they go into the, this thing cause it's a big honour to be a, a sumo, it's absolutely really? true, right? Yeah, absolutely true. Yeah. So, you'd go along and you'd be nine stone, and you, they, they have doctors there, so you have to eat to get big. Right. right. And this doctor was interviewed, so his doctor was going, you know, it, it is against, you'd think it's against the Hippocratic Oath, um, but, um, whereas they do it anyway, I do it healthily, so he sells them, he gives them diets of like, uh, you know, ten pounds of rice, wow. nine pounds of fish and things like that, and they get up, but now, because it's such an honour, it's almost a spiritual thing to be a great sumo and all that, um, they have apprentices willing to, now you know like when you're an apprentice, say, um, uh, runner or something, you have to make the coffee and you know, or when you're working an apprentice in the studio, you have to clean the floor and stuff. Do you know what apprentice sumo's job is? An apprentice sumo? Go on. They wipe mm. the sumo wrestler's ass because they can't reach, they literally can't reach. Rubbish. Uh, right, uh, can, what, we'll give Who's out the Who's taking now. that up as a profession? I know. I imagine that. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd love to be a sumo wrestler, it's a great honour and I'd love to work under you. Sure. Uh, so, uh, sure. So, uh, what will I do? Start press ups first? There'll be uh, some press ups, yeah. Okay, there yeah. Will be well, some press -ups. Get into the gym now and, uh. No, uh, I, I don't before you rush go off. Go on, go on. You I'm will... starving. No, I can understand that. Go do on. You d would you mind wiping my arms? Right. Because I've just. You can't reach? No. Got, no, I can't get the arms back there. Can't okay. get them down there. So, uh, and I'll tell, but, but I'll be honest with you, a lot of this oriental food, it doesn't sit well with me. So it goes straight through me, to be honest. So it's quite messy. It's quite messy down there. It's right. quite runny. Okay. Okay. So be careful. Okay. Um, you no, it's wear a some great gloves. Honor. If you want to wear gloves, wear gloves. I don't want to wear gloves. I don't want to wear gloves. <laughs> well, it's, it's, a, it's an honor. This apprenticeship is two years, isn't it? You know, you're not going to take my feces and salad, are you? As souvenirs or something? No, no, no. I will be mainly getting fat myself. Sure. Wiping your ass. Yeah. Great honour. <laughs> yeah, no, good. Well, Great no, honour. If someone could call in and verify that, look, Carl, look at Carl looking at us like we just said the worst thing oh. ever. You this is true, like, apparently. Makes your eyes pop out and put in Forrest Gump in a wheelie bin. Don't look How at us like that. This is a. We're talking cultural science here yeah, and, yeah. and wiping asses. Yeah. So. Play a record. <laughs> yeah, it's low brow <laughs> and it's high brow at the same time, Carl. <laughs> That's an incredible picture. Oh, yeah, hey, this is for all you people who, who, uh, who like the odd cake. This is Bowie and Sweet Thing. Do you like that? Nice. Sweet go. Thing. David Bowie. Beautiful. Amazing, off Diamond Dogs. Absolutely. We went to see him in the week, didn't we? We did indeed, yeah. This little exclusive gig that Jonathan Wilson there for us. Hundred people. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, lovely to see him. Yeah, lovely to see him again. <laughs> lovely to see, uh, see Dave um, again. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's looking good. He looks great, doesn't he? He was, yeah. Was he bisexual? <laughs> sorry, I don't what, know why I'm Sorry, at the, at the gig? No, 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 it's just a fact, because I know he's married now, isn't he, with a kid and stuff. Yeah. But there was some, there was some sort of- Oh, I, I think, um, possibly, I don't know, I wouldn't wanna- These pop stars, they dabble with anything, don't they, I suppose? <laughs> <laughs> Try anything once, don't they? These rock and roll stars. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, uh, if anyone knows the, uh, the, the truth behind Yeah, well, how does sumo begin? Because that's what I can't, I've never understood how it began as a, as a, as a sport, because it's, 
Do you know what I mean? Cause you are- they are so huge. Well so I reckon- it's not- I, I reckon it was a fat bloke who was picking on a little skinny bloke and the skinny bloke <laughs> right. knew Kung Fu and Jitsu. He goes, right, let's fight. And the fat bloke was no punching. Yeah, and What yeah. do you mean? He went, it's just leaning against each other. Yeah, And they went, yeah. well you're bound to win. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. they went, right, I've won. He went, yeah. bloke, okay. Yeah. And that's how it started. And the, yeah. the fat bloke- He grabbed went, him. Are you- are you wearing a nappy? Well, I am pretty I'm, big, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm having white. problems. I can't I, wipe my I ass. can't wear a tuxedo. <laughs> yeah, I just can't. <laughs> exactly. I just, you know, that's the next yeah. step for John has been banned wearing a thong in public. <laughs> so. But seriously, if anyone knows how sumo began, I'm genuinely interested. Email maybe ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Uh, just, cause I, I, you know, Carl, what are your thoughts? Where do you think, uh, where do you think it began? Cause it's an, don't you think it's an odd sport? I mean, it is a weird. I've always got nice hair. He seems to care about the hair a bit. Oh, sure. So he's sort of nicely pinned back. Yeah. Are you yeah. ever asked to, when, when people are doing like, you know, uh, um, Sharma's Britain or, you know, people are doing like big <laughs> historical <laughs> they, they, they say, well, well, we'll ask Carl about this. He might, yeah. he might have an opinion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They've got I'd nice like to hair. see you as a pundit. Definitely. Uh, on those kind of, on um, news night. It's yeah. just that it, I think it's a funny one because the whole idea of sport is to keep fit. Yeah. Mm. And that sort of. You know, it's a yeah. bit of an odd one, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Well, it's it's the same as sort of like weightlifting. You have to go through all that all year to see if you can push up, mm. you know, something heavier than someone else. But you have to walk round in a golf buggy to yeah. to you know to that one yeah yeah and take steroids and. But well, I mean, look. I mean, the other day, you know, I, I don't do much sport. I think living in London, there's not that many areas you can go and. Actually, I'm probably wrong there. Well, there's all the gyms and yeah, sports clubs I'm, and stuff. I'm probably yeah, wrong and the on parks and the but, roads. But, but yeah. look how like excited I was going round to your place, Ricky. And yeah. you had a, like a little garden. Yeah. I haven't got a garden. We played and football, was, didn't we? And we had a little. Well, I did. No, you were rubbish. I beat you in penalties, um, five two, and then I beat you on uh, uh, knockout. I think ten no, no, four. No. And he always makes an excuse. He goes, "No, start again. We didn't say that." He, or I'm cracking up. So, you, have you seen Ricky play football? No, I've not really seen either. Right, play it's not football. Y you sort of do it like um, <laughs> it's like when you get a cat and you chuck it some wool, you sort of jump on it <laughs> and lie on top of it so you can't get it, and then sort of kick it with his feet lying <laughs> on the floor. Really? No, what I mean is, he fouled me, and I still, I was on one Are you hand sure up. he didn't just collapse? Yeah, because <laughs> all the stress and the exercise. That's the other thing, that's he the other thing. He just tumbled off the floor <laughs> and <laughs> still and poured out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I was too strong for him. No, yeah. no. I was too strong for you. Yeah, but you didn't last long, did you? It was like, if, if football I matches- I didn't want to last long. Matches they just, they <laughs> just bring me on for the first ten minutes. <laughs> Who suggested that you two play football? Did you suggest this, Rick? Yeah, we went around there, yeah. Well, yeah, we had to go and football in the garden, yeah. Yeah. What else do we do? Uh, I, I look, just had a look at your salamander. <laughs> right, is that you from Israel? Moore? <laughs> Cause I know that when I first went into your house, I, you did, you used to show your genitals to people a lot more than you do now. Oh, you uh, definitely used to do that, you used to think that was hilarious. Yeah. I don't know what it is that you get to a certain age, men of a certain ilk yeah, get to a certain Jonathan age and just start, yeah. Out, didn't he? yeah. Yeah, when Ross came in he did the same. Yeah. It's that weird. Yeah, I suppose. I thought. Oh, you've seen it like now. I thought you've seen it. You know, yeah. you weren't. You weren't impressed the first time <laughs> I to beat Grot on his team. So, uh, yeah. 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 Um, no, it's you know, it's but you know, place. It's always, so, a, always a treat. To see yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you but, make of Ricky's place? What do you what do you make of it? Again, that's not a euphemism. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean that I've got it's like a flat fish. <laughs> yeah. It's, what do, you, it's, <laughs> do you want to see my place? <laughs> yeah, there it is. It's it's all right. I mean, I've I've you've seen better. I've the pictures you've got on the wall. I've I've I'm not. Not keen on the same sort of art as you are. Right. What well, sort of art? Because um, yours is quite sort of modern art. Uh, He's got this big, like, bit of uh, abstract canvas with like just just loads of dark colours on it. Yeah. It looks really miserable. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. It, it sort of brings the place down. <laughs> If, if you're gonna sell it, that woman on Channel Five, the house doctor, if she came round, she'd say, "Take that down. <laughs> and I'll get double for it." <laughs> it's just. Oh. It's, it's, it, I oh. thought it was um, like a. A wall he was Take testing. that down, get that salamander out, and just pop those back in your trousers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like he didn't know what sort of colour to use on the wall, so he's he's like been putting a little bit on. No, that's not good. I'll use like a bit of a darker colour. Yeah, and it's just loads are of you, different. Are you Brian Sewell? Because you're <laughs> just saying. So, what some... kind of art do you like? I'm intrigued. Yeah, I, I like uh, Athena. I like Lowry. <laughs> <laughs> Lowry, the worst painter in the world. The most no, overrated. No, no, no. You see, it depends. You're you're getting excited about Rubbish. your your stuff you've got on. Lowry, right? Yeah. You can look at. He his really is the Brian and Michael. No. Of the, well, but it's real, isn't it? 
right? What do you mean it's real? It's real. You look at his picture and you <sighs> see, like, little disabled people walking about. You see kids <laughs> That's playing, not real, then. playing with, like, footballs. You've got your, your, your dad coming home from work, working in the factory. Got yeah. a little dog barking. It's, it's life, <laughs> right? And you can look at it for, like, ten minutes, <laughs> go away, go and watch telly or something for a bit, yeah. go back to it, and you'll see different things in it. Well, yeah. Really? What, is it like one of those magic sure, eyes? You sure that's not a telly? Yeah. You've you been sure looking it? out the window, Carl. You sure you weren't watching When the Boat Comes In? People <laughs> will agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than your stuff that you buy. <laughs> this show started off slick. Yeah. We had something to say. No, I- we, um, we, What are you we, talking we, about? We're now discussing we art. Were, we were taking the big out of, of, of fat people, and yeah. now- it's And now you've taken it all highbrow, Carl. Play a record, we come back to fatties. Badly drawn boy. Something to talk about on XFM 104.9. You're listening to Ricky Gervais. Well, then, there's Steve Mitchell. Well, memory, it, let's oh. just get on with a. And we've already on. had a complaint. Yeah. Someone yeah. saying, Your <laughs> TV show's so good. Why is your radio show so hard work, you useless fat? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. You, can't, you can't please everyone, Carl. It's like Lowry. Some people like Lowry. Some people like that fella who did the dark painting for me. Talking of uh, emails, there was a, some guy. I don't. He doesn't mention Larry's his name, rubbish. or maybe his name's Steve. But he said that he was checking out the uh, the Office DVDs. DVDs going on sale, isn't it? Soon, I think the video <laughs> and the DVD of the Office are going on sale soon. But he was checking out on Amazon, and he said that uh, <laughs> it says on there, and I did check it, double check it, that uh, it includes uh, some special some special frottage. On the, or special frottage. Oh, is that frottage. How it's correctly that's pronounced. Is that mutual? Doing it to each I other. I think it's, or, it's is it the, or is it the rubbing up against each other? Yeah. It's one of those, it's isn't it? Yeah, it's is that what it is? It's where you rub up against I people? I don't know, it's something like that. Yeah. But, so there's some special frottage on there. Yeah. <laughs> <that forwards laughs> I, think they mean, I think they mean footage. I'm imagining I mean, so. uh, If you're buying it for frottage, you <laughs> are going to yeah, be you're disappointed. Gonna be sorely disappointed. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, <laughs> the, 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 we're going to, that first hour then was about eating too much, wasn't it? I think we can. That's essentially what we talked about, yeah. That's probably right. You know, um, Read some interesting. You know, they've banned. I used to get the Guinness Book of Records every year from about the age of ten onwards, and uh, <laughs> it, I went straight went to the section like you know the biggest, fattest, all that. Right? And there used to be gluttony records, and it was like these ridiculously looking Texans, and how many hamburgers they can eat. And of course, they were. It's just so dangerous. They've they've put it down to how many hamburgers you can be eat in a minute now. Yeah. And so they've brought it down to things like seventeen. Yeah. You know, they still yeah. burst their stomach glass ball, but um. Uh, I, I remember I was, um, I was watching the Big Brother when they had to break that record, you know, like eating sweet corn and balancing. I was thinking, who wants to beat that record? Yeah. The, most of the records in the Guinness Book of Records exist because no one wants to contest them. There's one in there, um, a, a bloke there, had his picture taken with a milk bottle on his head, and <laughs> it's the record for having a milk bottle on his head. Yeah. And it's like four days I want to go, <laughs> no one wants to beat that record. Mm. And there was one in there, this is amazing, this is absolutely true, right? Like last year's Guinness Book of Records, it says, um, uh, in, in Thailand in 1980, a, uh, uh, some sort of, um, uh, temple or ceremony, these, uh, incense burners fell over and I think crushed people or burned people to death, seven people died, and it's under the heading, Worst Jostic Disaster Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon oh. they're gonna try and beat that one? Oh, God. There's a, there's a guy up north, right, who's, um, <laughs> he's in the Guinness Book of Records <laughs> for being able to put a, you know, a car, a little mini. Up his no, arse? No, on his head, right, and you think, oh, that's good. But without the engine in. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that he puts this thing that still weigh, weighs like, you know, 50 stones on his head and you're going, boo! Yeah. What do you mean he puts the mini on his head? He, um, he wears a little cap with a little bit of sponge on. <laughs> <laughs> they all do up there. And they've, uh, and he picks up this mini. Cause, yeah, go on. And he takes like two blokes to put it on his head and then he walks around for about 10 seconds showing off. But he doesn't have the engine in it. So, I mean, if you're gonna do it. Yeah. Go the whole hog is yeah. what I'm saying. See, what I think, the reason I think he didn't do it with the engine in is because he couldn't, Carl. Well, yeah. we'll pick, do a motorbike or something. My mate went to see that, what's that circus that came to London? And that was in, uh, the Camden, and it's all like really weird sort of gothic things. Oh, right, yes, I remember. And, uh, there's a, uh, 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 he said at one point this nude woman got into a, a jar. He went, but it was a big jar. Yeah, he yeah. said it was a jar big enough for a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people want to go, boo! <laughs> yeah. But, you know, get into a jam jar. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I'll be applauded. But <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. a big jar. That's a jar shaped like I, you. I will get into a wardrobe. <laughs> what, that big wardrobe? Yeah, well, I can get into that. No, you, I will get into the well, wardrobe. I remember 
I told you about this before, Rick. I was devastated. A couple of years, I think it was a couple of years ago, when I read about that guy that won the world record for staying underground the longest. Like, oh, what yeah. happened, right? He, he got in this box. And, uh, he was buried, like, ten feet underground. It was in a pub car park in Mansfield. Yeah, and the only way he could Nottingham. communicate, the only way he could communicate was through this tube that they had that went up to the surface. And he could talk to people, and I assume that was how he got oxygen. And, um, and it said that while he was down there, right, he began and ended a relationship with yeah. a woman. She right? put She a was a down. passerby, she chatted to him, da da da, they started this relationship and they ended it, right? Now, my point was, right, obviously, you know, my luck with the ladies is, not, not triumphant. And, you know, I haven't got a girlfriend or whatever. You're and not when, Don Juan. Well, yeah, exactly right. And what I'm saying is, when you read that there's a man ten feet underground pulling women through a tube. Yeah. You've got to sit yourself down and ask yourself some very serious questions. Yeah. I yeah. was a little bit, as you can imagine, a little bit upset. From the Midlands. Exactly. Yeah. A little bit devastated. Oh dear. Really upset me. Do, do you still, what is your method now of, do you still throw little rocks at them and go, over here? <laughs> yeah, I, um, there was a kid I remember at our school, Mark Johnson, when we were like ten or something, and we were talking about Guinness Book of Records, and Mark Johnson went, yeah, I'm in the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I'm intrigued, you're a ten year old. <laughs> I said, go on, he went, no, I don't, does this qualify? Does this qualify? He claimed that he was in America once, and he went to see, um, a baseball game, and the, supposedly that game, was the world record for the number of people in an audience for a baseball game. It was like some massive stadium. I, I, I and this was the I, most people I, ever. I tell you what it does count. I and don't he claims it, he was there. I don't reckon it was listed. Well. I don't reckon Mark Johnson got his name <laughs> no, on that list. Exactly. Uh, and exactly. Ross McWork would be going, well that's the whole book. But I think I remember him all. looking it up and going, there it is, I was there. Yeah. Yeah, Does no. that count? I mean, no, I don't. Well, I've done a similar thing. There was an ice hockey game in Manchester. Sure. And they filled it. It was the, uh, the arena. Yeah. They had an ice hockey game. Uh, and I was part of it, but I wouldn't go around bragging. No. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, now you've no. brought it up, I'm telling you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're not gonna boast about it. Nah. You're not gonna the, get a t-shirt made. What's the best thing you've ever done? I don't what? know. I just... Come on. What's the best thing you've ever done that we will go, did you really do that, Carl? You see, it's weird, cos I've been thinking about this quite a bit. Cos, cos, well. cos uh, I'm 30 on Monday. Are you? Are you really? Yeah. Oh, you're just gonna try and get presents, aren't you, from the listener? No. Nah. But- I but, say listener. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but, um, I kind of was thinking, have I had a good 30 years? <laughs> what do you I, think? I don't know. Carl, is this gonna get a bit melancholy now? Yeah. Cause we've been having a few laughs at the expense of fat people. I'm not sure you wanna, we want you to bring it down now. No. We, we, just, we, uh, we've been having a jolly laugh about people who are morbidly obese. It's yeah. always when my girlfriend's working away, I always think about odd things. Do you? Odd times. Doesn't she leave you shiny things or videos in so you don't get- you don't get too depressed, you can- Well, what, la last night, when I sent you that text. That was- Right! Um, right, let's play a record, this sounds right. intriguing, cos I'm right, worried it is Carl's intriguing. Bit... It's incredible. Right, play a record. Right, w <laughs> wait for this text that Carl sent me. Oh, uh, All Along the Watchtower there by Jimi Hendrix. Beautiful. Can right. I just say straight away, Rick, before you carry on, um, we've had some people emailing in, um, about the origins of sumo wrestling. Yeah. But they've sort of cut and pasted a huge ream of information from the web. Thanks very much, but- we need bullet points, or not, not, don't bother. You're wasting our time, frankly, with any kind, any, too uh, many sentences, uh, proper grammar. We're talking about Ricky Gervais here. Yeah. So not that I'd read the bullet points either, you'd read them too. Exactly, me. but exactly, so but your, your concentration would lapse so quickly, <laughs> that it just yeah. needs to be key words, you know, arse, sumo, <laughs> yeah, yeah. things like that. Yes, arse wipe. <laughs> yes, I arse need... wipe, sumo, correct. Yeah, or maybe uh, even a picture of someone wiping an arse with a tip <laughs> next exactly. to it. If you could get yeah. words if you out. Could, if you could, maybe if you could send through the Origins of sumo wrestling in sort of diagram or <laughs> sketch form, yeah, or in a yeah. kind of comic book, or one of those flick books. <laughs> that just, you just maybe draw a quick flick book. Send that in. <laughs> but thank you very much. Well, thanks for thinking of us. Um, I woke up this morning. Yeah, feeling fine. It's not a blues song, and uh, I turned my phone on, and it, it was from Carl, and it went, "Forget it. I've made my mind up." And I thought, "Wow, what is that?" And I forget it. it, I've made my yeah, mind. Yeah, I went, Carl, what is it? He went, oh no, it's about the text I sent you last night. I went, well, what, what was it? I just got this text. He went, ah, uh, oh, I was just wondering, I was, I was thinking last night. He said, supposing you had to have your hands removed. Sure. <laughs> right? <laughs> 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 and the doctor said, 
Well, you can either have them stay like that with stumps, or I can sew feet there. <laughs> what would you have? <laughs> and I was bleary eyed, and I went, the stumps. He went, yeah. <laughs> I went, all right, he went, yeah. And then and what that, was his follow-up text to that? And then I got the text, it was obviously before it, and it went, and it was like quite serious, what, what would you do, if Sergeant Louis Brown's, would you have stumps or the feet, right? Now the way, uh, when I said, he's made his mind up, and I went, the stumps, he went, yeah. I think secretly he decided on the feet, <laughs> but was too embarrassed to tell me. <laughs> There's a little, little bit of what would you do. Cause it's, it, but why night, did you think of this? Why did you think of this? Girlfriend's away, right? Yeah, no, that's not why you start thinking bizarre I'll, surgery I'll you devices. Now, right? I'll let you into my little mind, right? Last night, I um, <laughs> I had some beans on toast, right? <laughs> she, was, she was away. It's good already. Right? She was away. She had some beans on toast. Right? She went yeah. wild. Yeah. Right. Now I was stood up. I live on like a on a high street, right? So um, I'm washing up. I'm looking out the window. First thing that had me attention is I can I can look into other people's flats, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it was weird how all these different lives were going on. I was watching them, and everybody had the telly on and was watching Volcano, right? Which was on last night. Right. right. And I thought, oh, that, that's weird, right? I can see them all watching it. And it was like a little Chinese lad who was dancing around in some underpants. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a little old woman who lives downstairs <laughs> who was reading a book. And she's always reading a book every night. And it's like, I have a better life than her. And then there's a, there's like some sort of bouncer who's always getting ready to go out late at night yeah. with all the black on. He looks like a bouncer. So I was watching all this life yeah. going on. I thought, did you witness a murder while you were doing this? <laughs> yeah. It was like, it was like that sort of sliver film where that bloke had loads of tellies watching yeah, people's sure. lives. So that was going on in my mind. And then I was washing up and I picked up the plate and I thought, oh, it's amazing, isn't it? The, the human body. The way you can just sort of, you know, I want to pick that up. And you do. Yes. And the way your hands work, right? Yeah, You've yeah. got five little digits, but it's, it's <laughs> just the right amount to do what you've <laughs> Yeah. To do what you've got to do, right? <laughs> so... So I'm, I'm washing, I'm cleaning the plate. <laughs> Sorry, Carl! Stop! It's just the right amount. Might be one of the most genius things I've ever heard said. I would love David Attenborough to phone you up and say, Carl, how do I word this about the evolution of the mammalian front, uh, limb? Just go, we'll just say it's the right amount. Huh? But it is. It one, is. One of extra would is. get in the way. Yeah. And one less would just make it a little bit more tricky when picking up a, a bit of a slippery dish. Sure, or, <laughs> buy, or buying gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> a slippery dish. So then, I, I was thinking, oh. uh, imagine like going to the doctors and they're saying, yeah, everything's all right, your heart's good and everything, but... <laughs> your heart's good? What, your Larry's or...? Yeah, your heart, your heart, yeah. you're, you're in good form and what sure. have you. It's good news, you know, I had Jono in earlier, he's not looking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I had Swallow. But yeah. you're, you're all right, but your hands need to come off. <laughs> right. <laughs> Blimey. But, That's bad, like, I'd get a second opinion initially. <laughs> But a bit of good news, I've got a nice pair of feet I can sure. sort you out with. Yeah. And he puts them on, and then I was thinking, right, first of all, <laughs> washing up, what would that be like? <laughs> but, Steve! <laughs> I, I, that'd be tricky. Really, yeah. And then the second thing was, it'd probably ruin the, the, sort of the shape of your jumper. Because <laughs> you had to keep putting the feet through there. Yeah. And then I thought, but I could still <laughs> cycle in. Okay. To work. You could run in. Well, that's the thing. You'd was, be like, you'd be really yeah. fast. For... Well, that's what I was thinking. I thought I could still cycle because I could balance. And then I thought, but the only thing is, I probably couldn't pull the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Because of the little short things. Yeah, yeah. And then, like you, I thought, but then again, you'd run in in half the time. So that's what was going on in last night. Right. That's what I was thinking about. Did sure. you? Did you? How ever... long did this take? <laughs> Well, how long does it take to wash up? Right. Because I imagine you just being there for, like, all night. <laughs> Probably 25 minutes. How long did the little Chinese fella dance for in his pants? He's always doing it. Last night he was at it for, like, 10 minutes. Just, yeah. And his girlfriend never sits in the same room as him. She's always <laughs> sat in the bedroom. She's going, you, you dance in pants again, I go in next yeah. door. Well, she was in the bedroom. She's always in the bedroom, sat on the floor, on the mobile phone. Right. All really? the time, yeah, it's weird how people's lives are just like, it is like that Groundhog Day thing, it's like, you know, he's jumping about in his underpants, the old woman's sat there reading a book. Yeah. And that's what got me thinking about my life. Do you think she ever goes- Are you sure she's not dead? 
<laughs> Every time you look down there, she's just flicking through it. She's just reading this book. The pages never turn. <laughs> she never seems to finish it. Oh, she never moves you, from her chair. Are you sure, are you sure the Chinese her girl's cats going? cats are dead around I, her. I, I'm going into the next door again. That little yeah. round-headed fella's smell. looking in. He's looking in at me. The bouncer goes, don't worry, love. I'll go and beat that's, him up. But he's true. always getting ready. That's true. That they, see, they see you staring at and washing up going, I could have feet here. And they get yeah. scared. The old woman's dead. Oh, Carl, can you tell us roughly which neighbourhood you live in, so so it's, that we know? It's central. Central, is it? Yeah. yeah. Wow, imagine if that little... D was he a Chinese fellow, did you say? Yeah. Imagine <laughs> if he was listening now, I'd love him to call in and explain these actions. Well, he, he might be on some other radio station talking about a lad who's always washing up and <laughs> yeah. looking at his hands in a mysterious way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, do we have this doctor, this doctor that would go, well, all right, Carl, I've got, you can either leave him as stumps, or I've got every little pair of feet. Why, uh, I mean, I t told Jane this, and Jane went, D is that the only choice? Is he, you could say, could I have some dead man's hands? <laughs> have you got any, have, if you, where'd you get the feet from? Where'd you get the feet from? Can I have, can I have, what would you rather have then? Human feet or monkey paws? Well, I mean, that wasn't an option last night. That if the doctors no. said. No, it wasn't an option last night, but don't forget, it's in your head, Carl. <laughs> this didn't happen. No, this but I'm just saying at the time, that's all the doctor had to offer. But you know, it's your head, you can go anywhere. No, 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 it wasn't a real doctor to offer. It's in your head, you can go anywhere. Y you're not trapped. Yeah, but if you can do anything, then you'd say we'll sort us out some other hands. <laughs> Fair point, the third <laughs> so, record. So. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta come back to this. Strokes, someday, XFM, 104.9, Ricky Gervais. Lads, can I just stop you there straight right, away? Because the record finished before we'd finished chatting about what we're gonna do well, next. We're gonna do, we're gonna do Carl's stupid competition again. We're just trying to get the- I think- I think that you- What you are the rules? Just, right, I Cause think last week it was a shambles, week. I know, it was too easy, that's no, why. The week before, I should no, say. No, I think- I think people should phone up now and be held in the queue, and then he should have the clue. Otherwise, because people are just phone up whether when they know the answer or not. But how is that entertaining to the listener? It's <laughs> not, That's what I'm gonna I throw think, back at you straight away. I don't think this is entertaining at all. I just think people might want to talk to Carl for us just right. a split second. The way we'll do it, right? Yeah. Right? This is me role here, right? This is- this is the way we're gonna do it. Right. right. We're gonna say, if you want to win the office on VHS, right? Yeah. You can call don't it say it like that. Like yeah, it's a rubbish it like prize. There is some- if you get the DVD, there's some special frottage. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, <laughs> it's impressive. Right, so they call up now on 08, 08, 700, 800, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Yeah. We like bung on a bit of Elton John in a bit, right? Mm. We line up two callers- Look forward to that, it's a beautiful track. Yeah, we line up two callers, Yeah. right? And then we have them on the air and we say, right, I'm gonna tell you the little story, you've gotta tell me what song it is. And they're playing against each other. Well, right. can they be? Could they be up at the same time then, so I can speak yeah. at the same yeah, time? Yeah, of course. Yeah. But how can they play against each other? Because they haven't got buzzers. It's or the first one. They'll, they can say the name. They can shout out the name. And and it's organised. And they got as many goes as they want. No, I think no, they no, should no. have one go at a time, and then the other person can have a go, and then they can have another go. Yeah. It's like dueling. It's and, like dueling. And if they don't win, no one wins this week. We're not giving away prizes willy nilly. Sure. You know, <laughs> we can give one away next week again. Because you know, like Maybe the office is not costing us anything. Because we were like involved, know, we can get I, as many I, copies as you want of that. I like Seriously. it. I like it when like we got them coming out of our. Do you, do, do, do you think the listeners are usually in on sort of board meetings like this? <laughs> or do you? you know, I usually... said this before, guys. I said before <laughs> I we know. should do this off air, but you, you <laughs> refused to try. Imagine Chris Talent going, "Hold on, what? They they can they can what do they, they do? can they, phone they, a friend? They, they, yeah, they just phone a friend. Look, come down. To, right, okay. Look, we haven't got this. We've got this sorted. Phone up now. Phone up. We'll have to. We'll play some adverts. Phone up now. Yeah. Right, so so that's the plan then. Okay, right. we're gonna have a beautiful track here. Continuing our wait, whoa, 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 Steve, 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 Steve. Go on. Right, I've said your name five times now. I don't need to mention you at all next week. Right, um, we're gonna play uh, Out and John. Continuing our sort of thing of don't don't diss them just because they're old and bald now. Yeah, they used to be good. This is a beautiful track. I dissed him, didn't I? Yeah. Um, called Tiny Dance. So we gonna enjoy that. Yeah. Enjoy that. Enjoy listener. that. And then, if, if not the now, show. Steve, what were you going to say? <laughs> Thanks for asking. I was just going to say, <laughs> what should the audience be doing now? If they're listening at home, they want to play the game. What should they be doing, Carl? Should they be phoning say you? Say the now? phone number they, again. They should be ringing 08700 800 1234. 08700 800 1234. And two lucky contestants get to play um, your game. Yeah, what's the song? What's the song that Carl's thinking? Could I give you a clue when you call up? You've got more chance of playing if you don't sound like a mentalist. <laughs> exactly. Most of the people that phone sound a bit like Carl. We're not interested. We don't want those <laughs> no. sort of people. Yeah. We want people who can, you know, who are maybe eloquent. Why are you watch me in my pants? <laughs> <laughs> Out and John, Tiny Dancer. What Beautiful. a great track. Oh, that's that magnificent. Is. Well, we've got. <laughs>
<laughs> Di uh, well, despite Carl's actions, you should have seen Carl. It was like squiddly diddly. <laughs> His arms and legs there, he'd have been better with feet. <laughs> I'll tell you. He didn't know what he was doing. We were getting angry. At one point, he went, oh, we get a man and a woman. And the, uh, <laughs> bloke phones up. He goes, are you a bloke? <laughs> bloke goes, yeah. He goes, hold on. <laughs> and then, another bloke goes, he goes, oh, you're a bloke. Oh, we wanted a woman. <laughs> and said, oh, he, goes, he goes, put the woman on. She came on, he went, are you the woman? <laughs> it's the way he speaks oh, to people. So, have we got on the line? Here's the woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's the woman. Hello. Hello. Hi, uh, what's your name? Sarah. Sarah, okay. Right, Steve, you, you, you want to be rooting for this? Well, I think we should, uh, it seems to me because you may need some help because obviously Carl's mind is, uh, is a, a viper's nest. Yeah. It's a jungle in there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you want to call anyone at any point, maybe you've got some questions you want to just consult or con confer, then I'll be on I your side. To. You're then like, you're, it's just like, you're like her phone a friend. Exactly, I'm the phone a friend. And I'm the, uh, ask the audience. Who's and the bloke? Who's the bloke? It's Owen. Owen, okay, I'll, I'll be um, helping you out. Should you need any help or clues as you know, as insight into Carl's mind, I must tell you though, we don't know what Carl's going to come out with now either. No, we I keep it. We keep it real like this. I should just say for people who've not heard the show before, um, this is where Carl now will tell us a cryptic story, and basically hidden within that will be a clue to the title of a song. I say cryptic. It's it's gobbledygook. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nonsense. So okay then, um, just to find out. Um, uh, who who goes first, my lad or or your girl? Um, I'm going to um, uh, uh, toss a coin in my head. Okay. So who, who can guess? Well, first? ladies first, ladies first. Okay, what was your so name again? Sorry, Sarah. 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 Okay. So, Sarah. Uh, heads or tails? Heads or tails? Tails. No. Right. My lad will go first. Okay. okay so then. so what this means is when he's finished the uh, the cryptic clue. You, Owen, will get to guess first, but if you get it wrong, it goes over to Sarah, and then back and forth until one, hopefully one of you gets it right. Okay. okay. Uh, we could be here for some time. Yeah. Right. And what, what, what are we playing for here? A DVD or video of The Office? Whatever we can whatever find. Whatever you've got, whatever format you've got. Yeah. Okay, yeah. then. Brilliant. Okay, Carl, go. Right, so here we go. So then, it's right. the name of a song we're looking for. Brilliant. Right, this bloke, he's had a, uh, he's had a good night out at the yeah. pub. Right. This is probably all irrelevant. Mm-hmm. Um, Remember that, Owen. This could all be irrelevant. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Right. So he's had a good night out with his mates and that, and uh, he's really enjoyed himself. And he's on his on his way home, and it's just like any any ordinary night, right? Everything's just normal. He's seen the same people leaving leaving the pub, going home, and he's like, "See you, you know, see you tomorrow night. I'll, I'll be out tomorrow, seven thirty and what have you." <laughs> and and they're on the way home, and uh, it's a nice night. Everything's everything's nice, and he's walking home, and he sees. This sort of, sort of smoke coming out of a grid, right? Some smoke coming out of a grid. Yeah, a bit, a bit of like smoke. And he thinks, what's that? Right? And this is what's weird because it's like any other normal night, but this time smoke coming out of the grid. And he goes over to it, and he can hear some moaning. Right? It's like ooh. So he he thinks this isn't right. So he stands over the grid, and he's and he's looking down, it and he can't see anything. So he lifts the grid up. Right. Do you mean a grill? No, a grid. A you grid. You know, like a grid in the street. What? Yeah, he Not means really. a grill. A grill. Okay. All right. And he lifts it off, <laughs> and he's looking in, and like more smoke's coming out, and he can hear the moaning getting louder, and then this little demon pops his head out. Oh. Right. Bloody and, demons. And he goes, "Are you all right?" Yeah. And the little demon goes, "Oh, I'm hurting." And he goes, what do you mean you're hurting? <laughs> he said, oh, it's dead hot down there, you know. <laughs> and, and it's weird, because he works it out that it's, like, come from hell. Right? Yes. And it, it's going, oh, I'm all hot and burning, all his skin sort of r really red raw because of all the flames in hell and stuff. <sighs> so he goes, oh. He said, uh, I tell you what, I I'll take you to the doctors. And the, and the little demon's like, what, y you'll do that for me? And he goes, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And he takes him to the doctors. What's the song? That was, uh, Ricky Gervais on XFM. It's three o'clock now. We're going over to <laughs> Natasha. Thanks very much. See you next week. Bye. Man, a long, right. that, was, that was quite a long story. Ooh. Is Owen and Sarah still there? Yeah. Have you dozed off? <laughs> You're still with us? Okay, Owen. Any clues? No, uh, not yet. I, I, I haven't a got guess. a clue. I haven't got a clue. I've, I, I have <laughs> no idea. Can I think out loud with Owen, do you think? No, I think him? Owen needs to at least okay. have a guess before Go on, have a guess, think. Owen. Uh, smoke on the water. No. Well, it's not, is it? So, okay. Over Sarah, time. what do you think? <laughs> Bat out of hell. Mm. It's a good guess. <laughs> no, not. It's not right. Not right. <laughs> right, Carl, you'd have to give him a little clue. Um, well, think about the little fella. Think about the little demon. Yeah. Okay. That's the clue. Brilliant. 
Thanks for that. Where did I say you came from? Highway to Hell. Mm, on the right- along the right lines, but not the right song. Back Sarah. to Sarah. Stairway <laughs> to Heaven. Mm. <laughs> Carl, if this is rubbish, I'm never working with you again. <laughs> if this doesn't work- What do you mean, if this is right. rubbish? <laughs> Right, <laughs> right, okay. Take it. Take the main bit of the story. What's happening? We don't know what What's the main, the main bit is. What's the main bit of the story? It took thirty minutes. The grid. There's the grid. We got the grid. grid the yeah. smoke. What's it's he got... done? How did the story end? He went, went to the doctor. He went to the doctor. He went to the doctor. Who did he take to the doctor? He went to the little demon, demon fella. Why did he do that, Sarah? Cause cause come he... on, that's a big clue. Right, why did Sarah? Come on, let's think about this. Why would he take a little burnt demon? To... Was he burnt? He well, was burnt, wasn't he? He was- he's from hell. Yeah, all the flames yeah. and that, and all his skin hell. was really raw, and he's like- he was moaning in pain. And oh. the little fella goes, yeah, I am on the way home, my tea's gonna be in the oven and everything, but do you know what? I'm gonna take you to the doctors and sort you out. Sick. Doctors. Doctors. Oh, God. Is there man. anyone you've got there in the house who could maybe help you? <laughs> like a sort of eight-year-old child? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. An alien. Yeah. Um. I've got a three-month-old baby. <laughs> Oh. He probably talks more sense. Yeah. <laughs> Not than you. <laughs> than Carl, we mean. Um. Oh. Right. Right, I'll tell you what, let's play a record. But these let's all have a chat. These poor people have got lives. Sure. They're, they've oh got yeah, like we haven't. No, but I know the Carl, this I is- I got- there's so many things I could be doing instead of this, Rick. I know, but Carl- Carl- We'll play some ads, right? They can't back. stay on the line They've got three minutes- they're, they're playing for a video, eh? <laughs> three, they've got three minutes to think about it. Is that alright with you? <laughs> okay. Yeah, and is that alright, Owen? Yep. Sorted. Right. Please try and guess this, because Carl's threatening to roll it over to next week. Oh. I know. I, d I don't want to live a week trying to think of a little burnt devil in a in a grid, <laughs> as he calls it. Burnt right. devil in a grid. <laughs> devil, in a, devil in a grid. Devil in by a grid. Excess. Smoky, smoky devil, devil. Oh God. Oh, um, burnt devil grid. Sarah, any grid? What's a grid? Any it means idea? a grill. It grill. means the little thing in the in the uh, smoke. Burn. Smoke on the water. Bar smoke. Barbecue to doctor. Burnt. Doctor, doctor. Owen, any any ideas? Uh, devil without a cause by Kid Rock. No. What we're gonna oh, do? Is, is, is the word devil right? Yeah. So devil's a, a key word here. And you're thinking about what the bloke's? What's the bloke done? He's took him to devil, the doctor. Why? Why, why did he do that? Why didn't he just say, "Oh yeah, it looks terrible, but I've got to get off home." He's, he's a good a, Samaritan. He's a good Samaritan. Right. He's, he's a good guy. He's a. Uh, he's a good guy. Saviour. Devil. Saviour. Devil for later. We're really running out. I've of got time. it. I've got it. Have you really, Sarah? Yeah. I tell you this, love. You are. You have got something to entertain yourself with. In about three weeks' time, when we get the, the DVDs and videos through. Cool. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I give you sympathy for the devil. Well done. <laughs> sympathy for the devil. Oh, oh it's man, rubbish, alive! Man. It's, it's not, rubbish. That's not a cryptic clue. It's not rubbish. Sympathy for the devil. You said he wasn't the devil. You said he was a demon. Right. Yeah, but I one. No. Right. Okay. Sympathy for what? What's all that rubbish about him being burnt and taken to the hospital? Sorry, Rick, but I'm noting a little uh, a little whiff yeah. of jealousy there. It's so rubbish. No, so I'm sorry, but Sarah cannot, is happy. It's not allowed to try and make people. Her guess. baby is happy. Sarah, her, her husband, or maybe partner, sorry, maybe they're Owen. not married, maybe they're living in sin. She, he's also happy. Yeah. They're happy. That household is happy. Owen's Owen, Owen, devastated. Yeah. yeah. Owen, do you, what, do you want it on DVD or video? DVD, please. DVD. Mm -hmm. Sarah, okay. thank you very much indeed for playing. Cheers, Owen, Sarah. commiserations. Sorry, Owen. Yeah. Triumphant. Another You're triumph. You're so rubbish, Carl. Carl. You are so rubbish. There you got it right. Oh dear. Rubbish. Well done, Steve. Jealous. Jealous. I love it. I thought it was a great one. It's nice one.